Hello, I'm Bob Ross, and I'd like to welcome you to the 25th Joy of Painting series. If this is your first time with us, allow me to, to extend a personal invitation for you to drag out your brushes and your paints and to paint along with us each show. And if you've been with us before, please allow me to thank you for inviting us back for another series of painting shows. So I tell you what, let's start out today and have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us at home. While they're doing that, let me show you what I've got going up here. This is a wet on wet painting technique, so normally the first thing we do is cover the canvas with one of our mediums. Today I've used liquid white, and the liquid white is designed only to make the canvas wet and slick. It allows us to actually blend color right here on the canvas rather than working ourselves to death on the palette. So with that, I'll tell you what, let's get started and just have a good time today. I thought today is such a fantastic day here that, that we'll just do a painting that's very bright and happy, and I think you'll enjoy it. So let's start with a little bit, tiniest little mount of the cad yellow, just a very, very small amount. Let's go right up here. Once again, the canvas is covered in liquid white, so this color will blend right on there, just like so. And I'm just using little, little crisscross strokes, little X's, and we'll just sort of work it across, like that. There, maybe just a touch more color. And we'll put a little bit right in here. I think we'll have some water in this painting. So let's have all these colors just reflect right into the water. There, just cadmium yellow. Now then, without cleaning the brush, I'm going to go into a small amount of the bright red. Very small amount. It's a very strong color. We only need a little bit. Okay, let's go back up here. And then with that, we'll just put a little pinkish glow in the sky. There. As I say, I thought today we'd make something that's just bright and shiny and beautiful, and it just makes you feel good. But when you're painting your painting, you do it in any color combination that you want. All we want to do here is show you how to make some of these fantastic effects very simply. There we go. I might put just a little bit more in there. Okay, good. And while we have that on the old brush, let's put a little bit down in here. So we'll allow a little of that color to reflect right into the water. That easy. Okay, that worked out pretty good. Shoot, let's keep going here. I'm going to take a little bit of the phthalo blue and a little lizard and crimson. We'll just mix those right on the brush. Shoot, make it easy. Just a little crimson, a little phthalo blue. Let's go back up here. And with that, oh, that's a nice color, sort of a lavender. We'll just, still using little crisscross strokes, we'll just lay in a little of that color. And while I have it on the brush, I'm going to go down to the bottom and do the same basic thing down here. Whatever we do on top, we'll do the same basic thing on the bottom. All right. And let's finish this guy off with a little bit of Prussian blue. Now, Prussian blue is much stronger. It's a very dark blue, beautiful color. We'll add just a little bit of that right on the brush. And let's go up in here, and we'll just fill the sky up. There we go. Already, already we have a, a masterpiece for the Museum of Modern Art right here. <laughs> there we go. There we go. A little bit more of that color, and we'll just add it once again, right down in the bottom. And that's all there is to it. Okay. Now on the bottom, I'm going to put a little bit of black right in the corners. I want it to be a little darker. A little darker. So at each corner, I'll add just a little bit of the midnight black. Now then, the most fun part of this whole painting technique is washing the brush. So let's wash the brush. We do that with odorless paint thinner. And I have a screen in the bottom of this can so we can scrub the bristles against the screen and the, and the solid material sort of settle to the bottom, keeping the paint thinner relatively clean. And we'll shake it off and then <laughs> just beat the devil out of it. As I say, that has to be the most fun part of the whole technique. Now then, let's just begin blending these colors together. Because the canvas is wet with a liquid white, it allows us to actually blend these colors together right on the canvas. Very simple. Still using little crisscross strokes, working from the light area to the dark, because you don't want to carry that dark color back down here into your light area. Okay. Now sometimes you can just beat the brush like that and it'll take the excess paint off without going through the entire cleaning procedure. There. Down here, we'll just do the same basic thing. Okay. 
Now then, I think I'll wash the old brush one more time. I just like to wash this brush. As I say, that might be the most fun of all. I get letters from people who say they don't paint. They just bought a brush and beat it because it makes them feel better. There. <laughs> and it really does. I'd like to have a bright area in this painting. So I'm going to take a little of the titanium white, just pure titanium white. And let's just go right up in here and allow that to mix with the cad yellow and, and the bright red and all the beautiful colors we have. And it won't show much now. But when we begin putting things in there, then it'll come alive. There we go. Now we just go across the entire canvas to sort of take out the brush strokes and blend everything together. And we're ready. Shoot, we're ready. Tell you what let's do. Today, let's build us a little mountain. And for that, I'm gonna take a little bit of the midnight black, a little touch of Prussian blue, get some Van Dyke brown. Maybe even some dark sienna. What the heck? Lizard and crimson? Doesn't matter. There we go. Pull this paint out as flat as you can get it. Take the knife and just cut across. So you get a little roll of paint that lives right on the edge of the knife. So you can see it right on the edge there. Okay, let's go up here. Now then, you have to make your first major decision. In your world, where does your mountain live? And I think it lives right here. Right here. You decide. Wherever you want it. If you've painted with us before, you know that I believe this piece of canvas is your world. And on this piece of canvas, you can create any illusion that you want, any dream that you want. You can put it right here. All you have to do is just learn a few little basics, then devote a little time to practice, and just let your imagination go. It's really all there is to it. We'll have something about like it. We'll grab this old two-inch brush here, and I'm going to take it and pull this. Just pull it. There's not much paint up here. Not much paint. There. See, so just pull it. Let it blend with this nice light color here. Okay, we'll pull this a little bit over in here, whatever way. And that creates a softness down at the base of this mountain. It just happens automatically. Okay. Now we're ready. I'll tell you what, today let's take a little titanium white and we'll reach up here and get some midnight black. Make a nice gray color. Very nice gray color. Maybe I'll even put a little touch of the, yeah, a little dark sienna into it too. Maybe a little touch of bright red. Just sort of let your imagination go. Wherever you think these colors should go, let them go there. All right, once again, cut across. Get our small roll of paint right on the edge of the knife. Maybe our light's coming from the left today. So we'll just take this and let it just sort of barely graze there. No pressure, no pressure at all. We want these little mountains to be far away. I don't want them to be very bright. They're far away, very quiet little mountains. There. And maybe right up in here. See there though? That's all there is to it. Once again, let your imagination take you wherever you want to go there because we all see nature through different eyes and each one of us will have a different interpretation of, of what we see and that's what makes it wonderful. Painting is a very individual thing, very individual. There we go and maybe shoot, who knows, maybe it comes right on over in here, we don't know, wherever you want it. And we can go back and we'll take a little white, a little bit of Prussian blue, I want to make a little shadow color and get a little black. But we have a little blue in there to give the indication of a little reflected light. And we'll put a little Van Dyke in there too. Ooh, like it. Don't overmix the color. Our little roll of paint, as usual. And we can come back in here and just begin putting in a few little indications of some shadows. I don't want a whole lot in here because I want this to look like it's far away. Too much detail will bring it too close to you. Just a little, just a little. There we go, a little right in there. Maybe it comes right on out, wherever you think it should be. It's exactly where it should be. See, we can come back in here and add a little more color. Just let that play right through there. Once again, I want to keep this very subdued. Now then, let's take our old two inch brush and begin tapping. 
just begin tapping. I want to create the illusion of mist. I'm going to grab a clean brush. That one had a little paint on it. I want to keep this as clean as possible because I'm going to I'm going to begin blending that upward. That's the reason I wasn't too worried about detail up here. There, see there? Very soft. We take a little white and begin blending it up. Once again, I want to create the illusion of mist and distance in here. This little mountain lives far, far away. There, now very gently, just blend it. Now see that light color we put in there is showing through. It'll create the illusion of mist at the base of your mountain. And that's what'll make your painting special. There we go. All right. That was a lot of fun. I told you you'd like this. Let's take a let's take a little bit of little Prussian blue, little white. There. Like so, I'm gonna get a little bit of a lizard crimson and put it in there. Maybe a little touch more. Ooh, that's nice. That's a nice. Now yeah, then. Just something about like that. Okay, let me grab an old fan brush. I think I'll use a fan brush today. There we go. And we'll just load some color right into the bristles. Just fill up both sides of it, like that. That's all there is to it. Okay, let's go back up in here. Maybe we have some little, little foothills, little footy hills that live right down at the base of this mountain. And we'll just take the fan brush and just tap downward to do that. Just tap downward. There we go. See there? That's all there is to it. And I'm going to apply less and less pressure so it's not as dark over here because it's, I want it to look like it's farther away from you. There. And we'll bring it, shoot, let's just bring it right on across over here, wherever you want it to be. Something about like that. But all we're doing is just tapping, just tapping. Now we'll take a clean two inch brush and I want to create the illusion of mist down here at the base. There we go. So we're just tapping. And as you can probably hear, I'm tapping very firmly. This is where you take out of your frustrations and hostilities. Right here. This is better than arguing with your spouse or because if you're like me, you always lose anyway. This is where you can really, really take out your hostilities. There. Now very lightly, one hair and some air. Touch and lift upward. See how soft that makes it look? Shoot, I tell you what, while we have that old color, put a little more on the brush, and let's just pull it straight down, and we'll create the illusion of an instant reflection. That easy. When I was a traditional painter, reflections used to drive me crazy. But this is so easy. Just pull it straight down. Because the canvas is wet, you can do this. The paint will move on there. And then very lightly go across just enough to move it a little bit, and it gives it a watery feel. Let's take a little bit of the liquid white, and we'll put it on the palette. I'm gonna add the least little touch of bright red to it, least little touch. Just enough to warm it up. Pull it out very flat and cut across. Okay, let's go up in here. And with that, we'll just add us a little water line right in here. Just a little divider between between the trees and the reflections. A little light between the darks. There we go. That little light area is what will separate and make everything stand out. Just that little light area. Isn't that neat? This is a very, very simple little painting, even if you've never painted before. This is one you could do on your first or second attempt. But when you first start, expect to run into some difficulties because you have to think about things and, and figure out how they work and, and how to load the brush and, and all kinds of little things like this. But very, very quickly, within a half a dozen paintings, you'll be so comfortable with this, <laughs> you won't believe you ever had any difficulty with it. Tell you what, I'll show you a neat little way to make some nice trees. Let's just take all this dark color we had, use some Prussian blue, some black, brown, crimson, some sap green, a little sap green. I tell you what, let's put you some phthalo green. I like the 
phthalo green in trees. There. Probably use more phthalo green in trees sometimes than I do sap green. As long as it's a very bright green, so I usually try to dull it down with, with some of the other colors. Now then, I've got a brush here that's dirty. It's got a little white on it. And I'm going to go into this color. The reason I have that white on there is because I don't want this to be real dark. I don't want it to be black looking. Okay, I'm going to bring this brush to a nice chisel edge. Pull it through the paint, wiggle it. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle like that. And then sharpen it, just like you would a fine knife. Here, you can see how sharp that is. Okay, let's go up in here. Now maybe in our world back in here live some big trees. Now there's a lot of ways to make trees. Here's one of the simplest. Touch the canvas, give it a little push. Just give it a little push. Isn't that easy? That's one side of the tree. We'll come back and we'll put the indication of the other side. And he's got a big brother. Lives right there. See when you're painting, when you're painting, make up little stories about what's happening in your world. Your friends and your relatives may look at you like you're a little strange, but, but that's okay. Painters are expected to be a little different. But make up little stories. It will really help you in, in deciding what you're going to paint. It will give you ideas of, of things to paint. That may be the hardest thing in painting, is not how to paint, but what to paint. And I use this continually to come up with new ideas. In my mind, there. This scene may be, oh, it may be way out in the woods somewhere, and there was an old trapper that lived out here for many years, and this is what he saw every morning when he woke up. There, and somebody's going to say, well, where's the old trapper? Well, maybe, maybe he had a bad day and he fell in the river, or, or maybe he moved back to the city, or wherever you want him to be. There we go. But isn't that a simple, easy way to make the indication of a lot of little trees? Anybody can do this. There. And oils are so forgiving. So forgiving. You can make a million mistakes with oils and change them very simply. With other mediums, that's very difficult. And oils, to me, have a luster that no other medium has ever achieved. There we go. Now that'll give us a few little background trees. Just living we back in there. Something like so. Now then, I'm going to take, I'm going to take the old fan brush again. Let me grab a fan brush. And I want to put some trees that are a little closer to us. So I'm going to go right into the dark color. This has no white in it. It's very dark. Okay, let's go back up in here. Now then, here and there, and there and here, I'm going to add just the indication of a few little evergreens. These are closer to us, so they're a little darker. This is what will help create the illusion of distance in the painting. There. Let me just throw in a few real quick here. And you put in, when you're doing your painting, as many or as few as you want. It's up to you. Once again, I don't want to just teach people to copy when we're doing this. I want to teach people the freedom of painting, the joy of painting. And the joy comes from doing your own thing here. Let's move right over in here and put a couple little ones in here. I don't want to don't want to cover up all those nice distant ones we put in. All right, there they go. <laughs> Do you ever believe you could paint a whole forest that quick? You can. You can. I know you can. There. There we go. Okay, we'll just put one more right here. What the heck? We just take that same old brush, and I'm going to go right into a little cad yellow, and that'll give us an instant green. And here, and there, and there, and here. We'll just put the indication of a little highlight. I don't want a whole lot. A little, little bit of the yellow ochre and Indian yellow, too, just to change the flavor. There. I want to keep this pretty dark, though. There we go. You see how simple it is? These little, these little evergreen trees, they live right in your fan brush. All you got to do is sort of scare them out. Now then, let's take some of that same old color and let's put us a little reflection that lives right underneath that. Just pull that same color straight down. Just straight down. And then go gently across, just like we did before. 
and that'll give us the illusion of instant reflections. While I got that old brush going, maybe there's a few little bushes and trees that live right along the water line here. We'll put in some dark. That'll be our, our background color. Okay. Now then, I'm going to take a little bit of the liquid white, put it on the brush. We'll go right through a little bit of the cad yellow, sap green. Be right back. A little sap green, a little yellow ochre, Indian yellow. Now and then, I'll touch the bright red because bright red is a duller. Now we load a lot of color in the brush. Look at there. A lot of color. Let's go up here. Now with that, giving a gentle push, pushing upward. See there? We can create all kinds of gorgeous little trees and bushes and happy little things that live all along the water here. That easy. That easy. Maybe there's a bigger tree that lives right here. There he is. Okay, we'll give him a little friend. A little touch of the bright red there. Whew, ooh, that's a sparkler. Shoot, let's reflect him right down here in the water. Maybe, maybe, yep, you're right. Another one lives right there. Just wherever you think they should be. Really, let your imagination take you to places that you see only in your mind. And you can do that in painting. You can do anything that you believe you can do. All you gotta do is practice a little. There, see, we're just gonna reflect a few of those nice little things down in the water while we got the old brush dirty. Maybe there's a little, oh, yep, a little bush lives right there. All right, now then, two inch brush, and this is your test for delicacy. Touch, barely touch, just graze it. Pull it downward, like so. And then go gently, gently, gently across. Just enough to sort of disturb it a little bit. But, but that makes those gorgeous mirror reflections in there. Let's take a little Van Dyke Brown. Let's put a little dirt here. <laughs> Need something for it to set on. We don't want our tree to fall off in the water and make a big splash. Just something about like so in white. And a little bit of dark sienna, a little Van Dyke Brown to mix it together. And let's just come right along in here and put a little highlight here and there, just like so. Just like so. Back to our liquid white. And we'll put a little water line in there. There we are. Once again, this little water line will separate your land from your water. There. Something about like so. Wherever you think it should be. A few little ripples here and there. Maybe the wind's just gently caressing this. Take the knife, put in a few little sticks and twigs, all those little things that, that live way back in the woods. There, just a few little bushes that come down on the land area. All right, let's have some fun. If you've painted with me before, you know I like big trees. So let's take some of this dark color that we had on the old, we'll use the old two inch brush here. Okay, let's go right up in here. Maybe in our world lives a big tree that goes right off the canvas. <laughs> As I say, if you've painted with me before, you know I like these big trees. Now, if in your world, when you paint yours, if you don't want a big tree here, just leave it out. The painting will still be gorgeous. But it's a nice, nice way to practice some of these things. Just drop them in. There. Do this with a fan brush, a one inch brush, or as we're doing it here with the old two inch brush. I like the old two inch brush, it's, it's a lot of fun. Shoot, while we got that going, maybe there's a nice little bush that lives right there. And we're just, we're just filling this up with dark color. In order to have light, you first have to have dark. You have to have the dark down here so your light shows. Otherwise, if you put dark against dark, you have nothing. Light against light, you have nothing. I just took that same old dirty brush, went right into a little bit of the yellows, all the yellows. I'm gonna tap a little color in here. And let's go up in here and just put the indication of some beautiful little highlights that live out here. There, don't kill all your darks. This gets working good and it, it gets nice and you just have a tendency sometimes to sort of kill all the darks. Leave some in there. It shows depth and shadows in your tree. 
little place for all the little birds to hide. And you know me, I'm crazy about the little animals that live out here in these woods. There. Okay, back to our one inch brush. I'm gonna dip it in the liquid white. Now the liquid white's there only, only to make the paint thinner. One of our golden rules is that a thin paint will stick to a thick paint. The paint we use is very thick, very dry. It's much, much thicker than traditional oil paints. Without that, you have a difficult time making these layers of paint stick without, well, if you've painted, you know, without becoming a mud mixer. <laughs> and if you've painted, you have discovered a little bit of mud mixing in your life. That happens. All of us who have painted have a little bit of that. There we go. Okay. Maybe there's another little bush lives right here. Just wherever you think they should be. Then we can take a little Van Dyke Brown. Maybe there's a little path. Just goes right in there like so. Take a little brown and white. And just there. That easy. And we need some bushes on this side to sort of push that path down into the painting. There. See there? Something about like that. And we just put in a few little bushes and trees. Take the old knife, scrape in some sticks and twigs. Shoot, that's about all you need. All right. I think we'll call that one finished. Hope you've enjoyed it. Give this one a try because it'll work for you. Until next time, I'd like to wish you happy painting, and God bless, my friend. Hi, welcome back. Glad you could join us today. I thought today we'd just do a painting that's a lot of fun, very simple, and I think you'll enjoy it. So let's start out and have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us at home, and they'll come across right about there. While they're doing that, let me show you what we got going up here. Today, I've taken contact paper, and I've cut an oval out. And I've just taken the contact paper, stuck it on a blank canvas, and then we've taken black gesso, and I've used a sponge, and I've just tapped a little bit of this black gesso all over, so it makes all these little patterns in here. We've allowed that to dry completely, and then on top of that, I'm adding a mixture now of alizarin crimson and sap green. We mix those together in about equal parts to make a gorgeous brown color, which is very transparent. And we're gonna cover the entire canvas with this mixture of alizarin crimson and sap green. Just like so. Oh, I think I forgot to mention, we did put a little bit of liquid clear on the, on the black canvas just to make it nice and slick. It sure makes putting the paint on much, much easier. So we had the black gesso, then a little liquid clear, and then this mixture of crimson and sap green. And all we're looking for is just a nice, thin, even coat. The reason we put the liquid clear on here before we before we put the color on is because it will allow us to put a very thin, almost like a glaze on there, a very thin coat of paint. I don't want a lot of color on the canvas, just a small amount. So that's the only reason. And that easy, we have it all finished. Now then, let me wash the old brush. <laughs> if you've painted with us before, you know this is the fun part of this whole technique. And we wash our brushes with odorless paint thinner. We just shake off the excess. <laughs> and just beat the devil out of it. All right, now that we got a nice clean brush, let's start out today, and I'm gonna take a little bit of titanium white, just a little white, like so. Put some on the two inch brush, be right back. I get a little touch of the, a little touch of the Indian yellow. It's a very transparent yellow. So we have titanium white and Indian yellow. And with that, I'm just gonna quickly dance in a little background back here, and we'll just take it and sort of just begin making little movements with a corner of the brush. Something about like so. You have to make a big decision right off in this painting. This is gonna be the lightest area in the painting. So we start there and we'll continually blend outward from that point. That way, automatically, that'll be the brightest area of the painting. Now the, the titanium white is an opaque color, but even there, you can still see through that and see some of these gorgeous little these little shapes that you made with the sponge and the black gesso. Now I normally, I normally use a natural sponge. It seems to have better shapes. They're, they're more varied than a man-made sponge. So you can pick those up at any art store or if you happen to be in Tarpon Springs, you can stop by and pick one up right off the boats there. But most of us, 
we'll get one at the art store. But a natural sponge, once again, has much, much nicer shapes to it. There. Now then you can do this as many times as you want to achieve a desired lightness in here. I'm gonna wash the brush. Actually, I just like to wash the brush. And I'm gonna do that again. I wanna make it a little bit brighter than it is. <laughs> I just really like to get the cameraman over. He gives me a hard time sometimes. All right. Go right back into what you determined was your light area and start there and work outward. Always start in that light area and work outward. There. Just adding a little more paint to the brush. And I'm just spinning the brush using just the corner to make all kinds of little shapes. There we go. And they don't mean much at this point, but later on they'll come out to be gorgeous little things that are in, in the far distant back part of your painting. This is a very simple painting. This one I would recommend if it's your first or second painting, this is a good one. This is a good one when you're first starting. And this contact paper works very well. Since we've introduced the use of contact paper, it's almost become a standard now in the art industry. We see painters all over the country who are using contact paper to, to make all kinds of shapes, to make little cutouts that they, that they put in their paintings. So give it a try. When I first started, I used to use frisket paper, which airbrush artists use. But it was very expensive and it didn't stick very well. So that's the reason we went to contact paper. It's, it's ready available. You can find it in any grocery store or, or hardware store. <laughs> and it sticks better. All right, today let's have some fun with the old oval brush. I want to take the old oval brush, put a little white on it, and I'm going to go into this mixture of alizarin crimson and sap green. This is the same identical color that we covered the entire back of the canvas with. A little white to it just to make it a little bit lighter. And load this brush by just sort of giving it a little push. This oval brush has oval bristles on the end, sort of like a big filbert brush, only it's, it's one inch across. All right, let's go up in here. Now then, let's begin working on some shapes and designs for some little background trees. This oval brush does just fantastic things for little background trees. There, and all you gotta do is just begin tapping. See there? The brush will do most of the work. That's what's so fantastic about this thing. That's one fantastic. Now then, maybe up in here, you have to make big decisions of where did your little trees live? There. If they don't show up, make them just a little bit darker. But start out as light as you can to get them to show, and then we'll get darker as we work away from the light source. There we go. Just all kinds of little shapes. We're just looking for very basic little tree shapes. Now some of these little things in the black gesso you can see when the camera's up close will show through. And when friends and neighbors look at your painting, they'll say, good gosh, how in the world did you get all that detail back here in the woods? And that's our secret. Shh. It'll happen automatically. All right. Now as we work back a little further, we can begin getting into darker color. Save your darkest color for the far edges. There we go. See little things like that? They just begin happening. There. And then I tell you what, let's take, let me find a little liner brush, a little paint thinner. Let's put a few little indications of some branches and stems and trunks and limbs and all those things that live in the tree. Taking a little paint thinner, and we'll go into that same color, thin this down so it's very thin. Not quite ink consistency, but pretty close. Turn the bristles in there, that'll load very deep. And a liner brush has long bristles on it, so it holds a lot of paint. Okay, let's go up in here. Now then, we can take that, and let's just put the indication here and there, and there and here, of all kinds of little limbs and sticks and stuff that live up here. Just wherever you think they should be. Now, if you have trouble making it flow, then add just a tiny bit more of the paint thinner. There. In fact, I think I'll add a little more to my brush. There, see how much easier it goes now? But I don't want these to be very dark or very distinct. I want them to help create that illusion of distance in the painting, things that are far away. They're almost the same color as the background, just barely can see them. 
there. And you don't have to worry about painting the entire thing because there's leaves in front and you're only going to see part of them in places. So by not painting them, it helps create that illusion. And painting is nothing but games of illusion. There we go. Now then, we can go back to our little oval brush and we'll put a few little things here and there and there and here. There we go. All right, now I'm going into almost, almost the pure color. Time to start getting very dark as we work out here on the edges. The dark edges will help force the eye to go to the center of this painting. When people look at your painting, then they'll see this bright area. So you make very dark edges here. There, I'm into solid dark color now. Very dark. I want this to really get dark in here because this is going to end up being some deep dark shadows where all my little, where all my little creatures live, little bunny rabbits and squirrels. They all live back in here. And they just have a good time. So they need a place to hide. Now then, maybe up in here. Yep. I'm going to just drop in a few more wherever you think they should live. Isn't this oval brush neat? There. If you've ever had trouble making tree limbs and branches and all the gorgeous little hangy down things, this is the brush you've been looking for. There. Because it'll do it just about automatically. There we go. Maybe there's a big old limb lives right there. I don't know. It's your world. You make these big decisions wherever you want them. All kinds of little things live in our world. I'm going to go back to some that has a little little white in it, so it's a little bit lighter. Now, one little darker than that, so it didn't show up. So we'll, there, exactly. See there? You can just put all kinds of things. But already, this should begin having a lot of depth in it just because of the difference in value or tone of the color. See, it's very light back here. It gets darker, darker, and darker. There. And we'll go back to our little liner brush. And we'll take some more of that color, a little bit of paint thinner. And let's just go right up in here. And let's put in another little tree trunk or two. You sort of look at your shapes now, and you decide where there's a tree living. And in our world, yep, you're right. There lives one right there. Right there. I like to paint trees. They're a lot of fun. A lot of fun. And I, I have a natural inkling, as I say, to, to sort of paint trees and bushes, because that's where, that's where I really find peace and, and tranquility is out in, the, out in the woods with all the little animals and stuff. And I hunt with a camera. I go out and take pictures, not only of the animals, but I take pictures of individual trees. And, and then you take all these different pictures and you can put them together and make your own composition. You can take a tree out of one photo, you can take a cloud out of another, a barn that you took here. They could be in totally different states, it doesn't matter. And you put them together and you make your own composition and it's new and it's original and it's wonderful. I just want to show you how to make these things. What you make is totally up to you. Totally and completely. There we are. Just all kinds of little rascals that live in there. There. Okay. And let's go over on the other side and put a few over there. We don't want him left out. A little more of the paint thinner. And maybe, ooh, maybe there's a big old tree trunk that lives right there. There. Put some arms on him. And these arms just stretch right out here to get the light all they can. They want to come out and play in the sunshine. There. See there? But as I've mentioned before, when you're painting, just sort of make up little stories in your mind. It really helps, sort of helps put you in the mood and it, it gives you ideas. And new ideas are really one of the hardest things there are in painting. I get a lot of ideas from, from photographs and sketches that people send me, especially my young friends. I have a lot of young friends across the country, and they send hundreds of letters with, with ideas and suggestions, and that's where a lot of these paintings stem from. So if you have an idea, drop me a line. Let me know what you'd like to see. And a lot of times, if, if it's something that I can't paint, we'll go out and find somebody else who can. 
<laughs> All right, let's have a, I think maybe in my world, there's gonna be a, maybe we'll do a little bush that lives right there. Just sort of seems like a good place for a little bush. And we'll go back to our little liner brush with some paint thinner, a little bit of brown on it. And under here, then we'll put him, we'll put him some little legs so he can stand up. There. Now he's ready. He's ready. But you see how easy that is to make a fantastic background that's very effective? And when you show this to friends and relatives, they'll say, you didn't paint that. And I've had people write and say they actually had their friends look real close at their painting and see if they could see the numbers hit under there like it was a paint by number. There. Now then, I'm going to put a little bush that lives right there. Just put in some nice dark, dark, dark color. This is that pure alizarin crimson and sap green. It's not diluted with white or anything else. This is pure color. Doesn't it make a gorgeous brown though? Mm. I know, I know. Sometimes you see things here. I'm gonna dip the brush into a little bit of the liquid clear. Go into a little titanium white and it looks like there's a little Indian yellow in it too. That's good. We'll just use what's there. Put a little bit of the liquid clear in there only to make it a little bit thinner so it'll flow better. But see, both sides of the brush are loaded with color. Just really get in there and load it full. Let's go up in here. Now maybe in our world, let's see. There lives, yep, a little waterfall. He lives right there. Put a little touch more of the clear on my brush so it'll be a little smoother soon. I know, I know. <laughs> when you begin, you get to where you see things as you paint. In our waterfall, there lives a rock, a big old stone. He lives right out there. Take a little white and a little brown, mix it together, make a little highlight color. We'll use a little small edge of the knife, put a little touch of highlight on that stone. Go back and find our brush that's got the, the white with the liquid clear on it. And we'll come right along here and put water on that side of the stone. <laughs> Isn't that neat? I like to do watery falls. Now with a clean two inch brush, I'm gonna lift this upward. Lift it upward, like so. Just sort of to bring it together. Like that. And a neat way, a very neat way of making it look like there's little bubbles and foam happening down here. You can take just a clean, clean dry fan brush and I'm going to dip it in paint thinner and then shake off all the excess. Just give it a good hard shake. And then you flick that paint thinner right up here on the bottom of the waterfall. Paint thinner and liquid clear have a violent reaction and it'll cause it to, looks like little bubbles in there and it's neat. And when you first start doing this, use very little of the paint thinner. You can always add more, but it's hard to go back and take it off. And it'll look like, look like little bubbles that are happening all down through there. <laughs> Let's take a little bit more of that brown and maybe in our world, we need to come right along in here and we have to put something up here to, to contain this old waterfall. See there? Ooh. We have a big stone lives right there. Big stone. This this painting, somebody here in the studio said, my gosh, you're gonna paint a, a sepa tone painting. It looks almost like the old sepa tone photographs. Years ago, I used to teach photography and we used to do the, the, the old photographs that were all done in brown tones. And this sort of looks like that. It uses a very limited palette, very few colors, and it's very simple to do. Here I'm just adding a little bit of that brown color. Now then, we'll take a little bit of that same brown, mix a little white with it. And we'll come back in here and we'll just put a little highlight up here. Something about like so. Now with almost no color, almost no color, I wanna grab that and give it a downward pull. Just barely caressing the canvas. Barely, barely touching it. If you've painted mountains with me before, this is about the same idea. That much pressure. Just barely touching the canvas. Yeah, maybe we'll brighten that a little bit. Put a little more white in it so it stands out and you can see it a little bit better. Whew. 
Ooh, that's nicer. That's nice. But this makes it look flat on top by doing this. There. Now back to our little oval brush. And we'll bring these little bushes here right down onto it. Tell you what, I gotta mix up some more color. I ran out of color. Once again, a lizard crimson and sap green in about equal parts. This is a nice color because you can take it to the green side or to the red side. Just depends on your mood that particular day. Today I have it sort of neutral. It's sort of about half and half. Sometimes I'll mix it to the reddish side and, and other times to the green, depending on the mood that I want or the, the effect that we're looking for. Experiment a little bit. You'll find wonderful things you can do with this. Okay, back to my little oval brush. Just tap a little color into it. And let's go on up here and just put some little, some little things that live right here on this little rock. It's right by the waterfall. And maybe down here at the bottom, there's some more big bushes and things that live all down through here. These won't show up much till we put a little touch of highlight on, and then you'll see them. All right, let's go on the other side. Maybe this bush, yep, he comes right out over the waterfall. Now, by having it in front of the waterfall, it has a tendency to push the waterfall back into the painting. It helps a great deal with that illusion of depth and distance in your painting. All right, let's have some fun. Clean, dry, two-inch brush, the least little touch of titanium white on it. Least little touch right on the corner, and I'm going to just tap and let it blend. Make it look like there's a little bit of mist wee back here in the distance where that water's hitting. Just let it tap softly, very softly. And you blend it to, to however you want it. Now then, while we have that color going on this brush, I'll put a little more titanium white. Maybe there's a little river that comes from this waterfall. So just touch and pull straight down because that gorgeous brown color is already on the canvas. It'll mix with your white and automatically that will happen. Automatically. You don't have to work at it or anything. And I'm lazy. I look for easy ways to do things. Okay, and we can just tap that together a little bit right in there. Something about like so. So we can't tell where the mist stops and the reflections start. There. Sometimes little misty things will float all up in here. Just use your imagination little sparkler right there just to make it sparkle now then all right I love these kind of little paintings and as I say even if you've never painted before these little rascals you can do these you can do very simple and they're very effective all right now then same old dirty brush I'm gonna take a little touch of yellow ochre on it now this painting I want to keep very dark and very much into the brown tone. So just a little touch of yellow ochre mixed right on that dirty brush. Very little. Okay, let's go back up here. Now some of these darker ones, I'm gonna put the least little touch of highlight. Once again, once again, I'm not looking for very much. Very, very small amount. Just enough to separate some of these little bushes. There, see them? This little bit of highlight We'll just bring them apart. But think about individual bushes. Just don't throw this in at random and, and hope for the best. Think about little individuals here. There we go. There they are. Mm. These are a lot of fun to do. And they make fantastic gifts. Because, you know, people had much rather have something that you've, you've visualized in your mind and you've made with your own hand than something you just went out and purchased. I have paintings that people gave me many, many years ago. And if they had just went out and bought some old thing and give to me, I would have probably have discarded it by now. But the paintings are very special. And I'll probably have them as long as I live. There we go. There. And maybe up here in this big tree, very little though. I don't want to, I don't want to lose this darkness. To me, this darkness is what makes this painting very nice. But when you do yours, if you want it a little brighter, please, please feel free to make it any way that makes you happy.
because that's what the painting is all about. It should make you feel good about yourself and about the world, make you appreciate all of God's wonderful creations, and, but just enjoy it. There. Let's take a little bit of this brown, and let's come in here, and let's make a little land area, just something for all this to set on. Maybe something about like that. A little bit over here on the other side, too. So it looks like there's maybe just a little river here that we don't know where it goes. Don't know that we really care. It goes off into another painting, and we'll do it on another show. There we are. Just a little touch of highlight. Once again, keep it quite dark. Quite dark. Now then take a liner brush. And here and there and there and here. And we'll take just a little bit of this lighter brown color and put the indication of some little twigs and sticks in here. Where it's very dark, you may have to use a lighter color so it stands out. Okay, let's go over here on the other side. And we need a couple over here. Don't have to have too many. Just a few. Oh, there's one. There's one. You just sort of see them. Look at your painting, because every painting will be different. Each one will be a total individual. Now then, we can take a little bit of the liquid white, put it right on that liner brush, and we can just put the indication here and there, some little water lines that live out in here. Just little things like so. Don't want too much. Just a few little nice things. There. Shoot. That worked out pretty nice. I tell you what, let's pull the old contact paper off here and see what we have, because that's that's the moment of truth, and that's the, that's the fun. So we'll just pull it off. <laughs> and look at that. Isn't that a gorgeous little painting? And you can, then you can just take it and you can look around and see if there's any area that you need to add a few little things. I think there would be a couple little sticks and twigs right in here. Because in the woods you always have all these little critters that live in there. And it creates that illusion of depth in your painting and people will think you've worked for many hours putting all this detail in. Shh, that's our secret. <laughs> that's our secret. All right. Let's see here. Sometimes, sometimes I like to grab a little of this and pull it over so it looks like, looks like old roots and stuff that are just sort of hanging over the bank. Take a little of that, because they're always there. Just let them hang down, just a few, here and there. I tell you what, I think we have a finished painting here. I'm gonna take a little bit of the, since I don't have bright red, I'll use a little crimson today, thin the paint down like ink. I think we're ready to sign this one. Let's come right up in here. Hope you can see that, it's very dark. And we'll just put a little signature on there. There, I have a very short name, so it's, it only takes a second. I hope you've enjoyed this one. It's a fantastic little painting that you can do. And until next time, I'd like to wish you happy painting, and God bless, my friend. Hi, welcome back. I'm certainly glad you could join us today. You ready to do a fantastic little painting? Tell you what, let's start out and have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us. While they're doing that, let me show you what I've got done up here. Today I've taken just a plain old pre-stretched canvas and a little bit of black gesso and a sponge, and I just tapped the bottom of it here a little bit. I know I want the bottom of this to be dark. Other than that, I don't know, and I, I really don't care. And I've covered the rest of the canvas with a very thin coat of liquid clear. Very thin coat. And down here, I've put just a little bit of midnight black, just because I want this to be dark. And so I've put a little color on there just in case. So let's start out today and just have some fun. Tell you what, let's start with a small amount of the Prussian blue on the old two inch brush, just a very, very small amount of paint. Let's go right up here. Now, I've used the liquid clear up here because I don't want to distort color. I want the color to stay very pure. I'm gonna put some little spots of color up in the sky and then we'll come back and we'll put some nice little clouds around them. Ooh, there's a little black with a touch of the Prussian blue in it, just a little midnight black. And Prussian blue, something like so. However, it doesn't matter. Just a few little spots of color. Something right along in there like that. Maybe even add a touch of the crimson to it to give it sort of a sort of a little lavender flavor. <laughs> there you go. 
there. That's sort of pretty already, shoot. But we're not gonna stop there. I think today we'll, we'll put in some great big fluffy old clouds. They're a lot of fun to do, and this is an easy way to make them work. Put in our few little dark spots, and we'll just take the corner of the brush and go right into a little bit of the titanium white. We can go right into the white because there's such a small amount of color on the brush. Let's go back up here now. Now, I'm gonna take the two inch brush and very quickly, very gently, just put in the basic little shapes. We'll come back and add a few details later. Right now, I'm just looking for a few very, very basic little shapes. Something about like that, but just the corner of the brush. Just sort of, just sort of let it dance around in the sky. Little clouds are free. They just float around and have a good time. Very free. It may be one of the freest things in nature. There we go. Something maybe, maybe about like that. Whatever. Whatever. And maybe, yep. We're just going to have some holes in the clouds that we can see little bits of color through. There. Mm, I like that already. A little bit right in here. Just using the corner of the brush though and making tiny little circles. Tiny little circles. There we go. All right. And that'll give us just a little base color. Now we can come back and shoot, I might even use a fan brush for that. We'll come back and put a few little, a few little nicety things here and there. Let's take a little white. Get a little touch of the dark sienna. Ooh, I like that. That's pretty. Maybe a little more though. Shoot. There, that's good. Let's go up here. Now maybe we'll begin just dancing a little color in our clouds. We don't want color everywhere, but just here and there. We'll put in a few little basic things, then we'll come back and we'll blend them all out. I'm gonna take a little white, a little touch of the little touch of the lizard crimson. Make a little a little pinkish color little pinkish color. We'll go right up in here and we'll just pop in some some little little sparklers. I want some little things to make the sky shiny and pretty. There. And this is our world. We can put anything in our world that we want up here. Mm, like it. All right. Just you just doing little tiny circles though all the time. Little circles. So your clouds have form and shape and life and they're interesting. They're not just old dull clouds. I'm gonna add the least little touch of yellow ochre to my brush. Oh yeah, that's nice. That's nice. There, just a little bit though. And be careful that you don't get that yellow ochre up against blue. Cause you know, if you get that yellow ochre up against the blue, you could end up with a, with a real nice bright green sky. And we don't want that in this painting. I think this is gonna be a Maybe this will be a little winter scene. Let's do winter today, what the heck. There we go, a little bit right in there. See how you can just, sometimes you can just spin the brush. Let all these little things just sort of happen. They make little, just little lights in the sky. There. Even spin a little up in there, just to put a little, little floater. <laughs> nice, clean, dry brush. And I just beat it to make sure it's nice and dry. And I'm just gonna begin fluffing, blending, bring this all together. See there? Just bring it together. Let them old clouds just float around in the sky and just have a good time. Good time. There. All right. And that easy. We got a pretty nice little sky. Do you ever think you can make a sky like that in just a couple of minutes? <laughs> you can. You really can with this. All right. Today, let's make a big, strong, strong, tough old mountain. I get a lot of requests for, for big, strong mountains. So let's take, I'm gonna take some Midnight Black and, and Van Dyke Brown, just mix them together. Maybe put a little dark sand in there. But mostly black and, black and Van Dyke. Pull it out very flat and cut off our little roll of paint. See, it lives right on the edge of your knife there. Okay, let's go up in here. We gotta make our first major decision. Where does our mountain live? In my world, I think it lives right here. But when you do your painting, you put this old mountain wherever you want it, you make it any shape that you want it, it doesn't matter. Because on this piece of canvas, you have total and absolute power. You can do anything, anything that you want to do here. 
anything. Shoot. When I go home, I'm in charge of nothing but the garbage. But here, I can move mountains. There. Can put them wherever we want them. Can move them. We can put rivers or lakes or anything. Anything. Unlimited power on this piece of canvas. It truly is your world. I don't know where we want this to go. Maybe there's a... We'll just make all kinds of little shapes and then we'll work on them, see what comes out of them. There. That's a very good way to practice. Just just make a big bunch of shapes up here and then, then practice turning it into some kind of very beautiful painting. A lot of times when we're training instructors, we'll take them and have them turn their head away from the canvas and just make a big old line across there or something with paint. And out of that, oh, then we, we expect them to be able to make a beautiful painting just from that. I don't know of any better way just to learn, just to learn to, to work with this and to use the instruments and the tools and creativity and all those things and then just just to do it. Let's take a little dark sienna, a little white, mix it together, make a nice pile there. Take a little more white. I'll take some Van Dyke brown put in there. I want this one to be darker. I'm gonna make several piles of color here so I can just work back and forth. White. This one I'm gonna add some black and some Van Dyke. There. It's more into the gray color. So we have three different piles of color here. Now then, let's start out with this one. Get a little roll of paint once again. Little roll lives right out of the edge of the knife. And let's go up in here. And normally we pull down. Today, let's take the knife and just sort of touch and go across. Just touch and go across. That's all there is to it. This is a nice way if you're having a problem making the mountains the way we normally make them, try this. Because I think you'll find that this works so good you almost won't believe it. Take a little of that dark color and put it right in there. Not much though. I want to retain some of that darkness in there. There we go. Over here, we'll make another little, just let the knife bounce. Just let it bounce. Play, have fun. There, painting should always be fun. If it's not fun, then you're doing the wrong thing. There. I have enough things in my life that are unpleasant, so painting, it's one of those things that I reserve for good times. There little bit of color right in there. But isn't that fantastic that you can create all these illusions just like so? And you can do this. You can really do it. There we go. And when you're at home, you can really play and put all kinds of things here. I have a mean old director here that yells at me. She has no sense of humor if I go over 30 minutes. So, but at home you can do anything that you want to do. There we go. Then we just pop that back in like that. There. Just put an indication of a few little shadows. Once again, I don't want a lot in here. I want this to stay very dark, very dark, so it looks like it's far away, far, far away. There. All these little things that you can just drop in there and here and wherever you want them. I love mountains. I lived in Alaska for nearly a dozen years, and you can't live in Alaska and not appreciate mountains. Now, the mountains in Alaska, they're quite a bit different than this, but you just find an appreciation for mountains in general when you live around them all the time. There we go. But even before I had ever seen mountains, because I was born and raised in Florida, I still liked them. I liked to paint them. And then when I finally got to Alaska, whew, Oh, I just went crazy because I believe I believe God was having a good day when he made Alaska you know how some days things just work for you everything you touch works and I think God was having one of those days when he made Alaska because everything seemed to work all right let's take a little bit of the little touch of titanium white and maybe there's just a little bit of snow that lives right in here we'll just take that and say Got to make those little noises or it won't work. See there? Little glacier maybe lives right up in there and let some of this just climb up the side of the mountain wherever you want it. Wherever you want it. 
add a little touch of the blue in there just to just to give it a little cool feeling here and there and maybe yep you're right there it goes there it goes right on down I'm gonna have some trees over there I think so I'm not worried about it over there you know me I always want to have a big tree <laughs> there just white with the least little touch of the Prussian blue in it least little touch just enough to chill it a little bit but we're just gonna let that climb right up in here get a little touch more of the blue and maybe it goes out over here this direction so it looks like there's a little peak right there there see just allow those colors to pick up and blend together and all those things just to happen all right Sometimes it's fun in your painting to begin putting projections that are closer to you. By that I mean big rocks and stones and stuff that live out here. Let's take some of that same dark color and maybe in our world there lives, boy there does now, big old, big old rock lives right out here. Mm. Actually this is just a little baby mountain that lives here. If you love it and take care of it, feed it well. It'll grow up to be a big old mountain like that one up there. But right now, right now, he's just a little fellow there. But he's nice and we like him. See, you don't have to be crazy to do this, but it, it sincerely helps. There we go. Put a little highlight on him. Wherever you think light would strike across there. Just like you did the big one, only he's a little smaller. Little touch of the shadowy color. Once again, I want to keep it dark in there, though. There. Just to give that illusion that there's something happening there. All right. All kinds of little bumps. Maybe. Shoot, maybe there's another little thing right in here. And this is just that same dark color. We're just adding all kinds of little doers. There it comes. See there? little projections that live everywhere. Then we can bring our little glacier or whatever it happens to be that's living in here, a little bit of snow. Just pull it right on up the side. There. If it picks up a little of that color, don't get upset about it because that will come, come out when the painting's finished looking like shadows. And you need those anyway. Gives depth and dimension to your paintings. Don't worry about it. There. Just let that work right on up there. See, now that thing, that little baby mountain there, it looks like it's just sort of sitting out there all by itself, lonely. But Mama's not far away. It's right behind him. There we go. Mm. But he's cold. I can tell he's cold out here. All right. Take a little more of that color and maybe right behind here we'll put a little touch of shadow just so that all comes together. There we go. Mm. There's a lot happening right there, isn't there? I like these paintings that's got big old mountains. As I say, I really like mountains. It's one of my favorite things in the world to paint. All right. Let's take, let's take, we'll take some, some black, a little bit of brown, a little bit of the Prussian blue. Put a little crimson in there too. What the heck? I like it. Just a little crimson. Maybe a little more of the blue. Oh, ooh, that's nice. Okay, let me get an old fan brush. Maybe in our world, there lives some little evergreens that live way back here. So when they're far away, we don't want a lot of detail. As they get closer to you, then we'll need more and more detail. But right back in here, we just want to put the indication of some little things that are working down these mountains. Just give it a little upward lift. Maybe there's another row right there. I want to see some little snowy areas in between there. So I don't want to kill all that nice little snowy area. Little patches of trees that grow way back up there in the mountain somewhere. There. Now let's go on the other side. Maybe over here on this side, 
Yep. They're a little, getting a little bigger. They're a little closer to you. They're not really any bigger. They're just closer to you. So they look a little bigger. But in reality, they're all the same size. This is what will give your painting depth and dimension, perspective, all those big words. There. Easy way to say it is, in painting, as things get closer to you, they should get bigger. That's all. There we go. Now we'll take a little bit of the, little bit of the titanium white. And once again, we're going to allow that to pick up some of that color. There we go. Just allow it to pick up some of that color. For everybody that skis, boy, this would be a dynamite skiing mountain, wouldn't it? You could just come right down there. I hope you ski better than I do, though. <laughs> the, only, the only thing I'm good at is falling down. I'm not a very good skier. But it certainly is beautiful to watch. I envy those who can do it. All right, maybe, I know, I like these trees. I'll mix up a little more color. The Prussian blue, the black, crimson, a little brown. I just need more color. I ran out. Wipe off the old knife. We just wiped the knife on old paper towel. Now maybe on this side, we're getting a little closer. There's another tree. Now if you're picking up too much of the white color behind back here, dip your brush into a little tiny bit of paint thinner. Very little amount of paint thinner. Because remember our golden rule, a thin paint will stick to a thick paint. So if you thin the paint down just a little bit, it'll stick without mushing together, as Steve says, my son. Steve makes up words. But everybody knows what he means when he says just your paint's mushing together. That may not be a proper word, but it makes sense when you're, when you're painting. You understand. There. We'll come back and smooth all that out in a minute. There we go. Now, you know me. If you've painted with me before, you know one of my favorite things is big old trees. So I think it's time we put a big old tree or two in here. A lot of that dark, dark color on the brush. Just load the bristles full. All right, let's go right up in here. Maybe in our world, there lives, get brave, right across your mountain. And today, let's just give these trees a little upward push. Sometimes we push downward, sometimes upward, depending on the effect that we're trying to achieve. Oh, there goes my little baby mountain. But we know he's back there. And you learn how to do it, so that's really all that counts. But he was cute. There. We'll come back with a little highlight color, and we'll separate all these. Right now, all we're looking for is a nice dark base color. OK, maybe, 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 yep, right here lives another little rascal. These little evergreens usually grow in clumps. There, so we'll make us a little, a little forest right here. But because we had the black gesso in there, all that dark is already in there nearly. Shoot, let's get brave. This one, this one got a lot of sunlight and a lot of water. And he's reaching way up here in the sky. He wants to look down at the top of the mountain. There. What a view. This would be the place to live, wouldn't it? Look out across there and see all those gorgeous mountains. Mm. Makes me want to go back to Alaska. Let's put a tree or two on the other side, too. I think we need one over there. What the heck? Let's have a big one. Once again, just touch with the corner of the brush and push upward as you work down the tree, add more pressure, and automatically use more and more of the brush. There. See there how easy that is? OK. Once we get into the black gesso, we're not much worried about it. We can just, you can literally hit it anywhere you want. It doesn't matter, once again. We're going to separate this with highlights. Let me put a little highlight on there. All right, a little more color. Here comes one. And in your painting, you decide how many little trees live in here. Maybe you only want a few. Maybe you want a great big forest. Another thing, if you happen to have, I know you want, but if you happen to have a little spot in your painting that, that you're not real pleased with, you know, trees cover a multitude of sins. 
I know you can't cover up your whole canvas. I know your painting is better than that. There we go. That little tree lives right there. But sometimes they will cover up problem areas in your painting. There. Okay. Now see, let's take a little of that brown and white we had and let's put a little tree trunk here and there in a couple of these. Bloop, bloop, bloop. You're not going to see it all. You're just going to see a little of the trunk here and there. Maybe this old big tree. You can see a little more. Just a few little things here and there. I don't want too much. Just a few. There. All right. Same old dirty brush that we painted the tree with. I'll go into cad yellow. A little yellow ochre. And instantly, because there's blue in that color, we have a nice, gorgeous green. Okay. Now then, let's go up here with that green. And let's put a few little indications of some, some nice highlights on some of these. I don't want it to get too bright, though. I want to keep this quite dark. This old tree needs a few, though. Can't leave him out. There we go. There. Darker, darker, darker as it gets down toward the base. There. And this little tree right here, we want him to show up, stand out. Got to stand tall out here in the sunshine. Say hello to the mountain and all the little creatures. <laughs> Let's go on the other side. We'll put a few little highlights here and there on it. There. All right. Okay. A few on this tree. Now some of these trees I'm going to leave naked. I'm not going to put any, any highlight on them because I want them to look like they're farther away, back in behind. And very dark. Secret little things are happening in there. Now then, we'll take a little bit of the titanium white, allow it to pick up some of that tree color, and begin putting in some nice snowy areas. You want it to pick up that tree color because automatically that'll make the, the indication of some little shadows. See, it looks darker than it does up there, just because it's picked up the tree color. So allow the paint and the canvas and everything to work for you. Don't fight it. As I've said before in some of the shows, I'm a lazy painter. I look for easy ways to do things. Things that work very easy, very nice. And that's what makes it fun. Let's take a old two inch brush, a little bit of titanium white, very little. And we put a little black and blue under here, or blue and black, mostly black. It might have been a little blue in it, but I think it was mostly black on the wet canvas. And we'll just pull that down and look at there, look at there. We have instant, instant little pond right here below the mountain. Just a happy little pond that lives right there. And we'll take a little of that dark color and I'll just touch, just put a little, just a little water line under there, only dark. Just a little like that. Shoot, you take your old fan brush. Tell you what, maybe you want to put a, maybe there's a little projection that comes right out here. And this is your world here. You can do anything that you want. That works so well. Let's put one on the other side too. Shoot. Over here, maybe this one here is on, a, on top of old stones and stuff that are laying in the water. We don't know. We don't know. Don't know that we even care. Take a little of that dark color and just put a little, a little bit of right down here that's still showing. Just a little, take a little touch of liquid white. Go back in here, just cut in the indication of a, of a little, little water line that's floating around here and there. Something like so, don't want too many. Don't want too many, just a few. And maybe, <laughs> maybe out here in the water, maybe there's a little stone that's covered with snow. Something like so. And you could pull down just a little touch to create the illusion of a reflection. Put a little dark under it, like so. A little touch of waterline, just to bring it all together. Shoot, I think we've about got it here. With your fan brush, you could lift upward to bring the edges together, and you'd have a finished painting. Hope you've enjoyed this one. 
because it'll give you quite a little challenge. And from all of us here, I'd like to wish you happy painting, and God bless, my friend. Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join us today because today I thought we'd do a fantastic little painting that I believe you're really going to enjoy. We've got a lot of letters in the past asking how to use the liquid clear. In this series, I've devoted a lot of the paintings to the use of liquid clear, and today's one of them. So let's start out and have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us. And then come on up here and let me show you what we've got done already. This is a crazy looking canvas. I took a plain old 18 by 24 inch pre-stretch canvas, but you use any size that you want. And I took a little white gesso with acrylic paint and I mixed the, the acrylic paint with white gesso and just sort of took a little foam brush and just gobbed color here and there. And I use nothing but cad yellow and alizarin crimson. And I put the white gesso in there to dilute it so it's not too strong. And with that, we've just painted little splotches of color, yellow and crimson, all over the canvas. Then I've allowed that to dry completely. Then we've taken, after that was dry, be sure that's dry, we've taken black gesso and I used a sponge and just tapped on all these little shapes with black gesso. And then we've allowed that to dry completely. So we have black gesso and then we have the colored acrylic back here. After all of this was good and dry, then we've covered the entire canvas with a very thin, so let me say that again, a thin coat of liquid clear. And it's all ready to go. And I think you're going to enjoy this one. It's just, it's just a fun little painting. It'll make you feel good in here. Let's start out today. We'll use this little tiny two-inch brush here. <laughs> and we'll go right into a small amount of the phthalo blue. We need very, very little color because there's nothing on the canvas but liquid clear. Very, very little color. See there, there's almost none on the brush. Okay, let's go up in here. And let's start with a little bit of that blue and just begin putting in the indication of a gorgeous little sky. Something about like so. And we'll even put it back up in here. I'm gonna have some big trees up here, but maybe some of this will show through. So go ahead and put a little in here too. We're just using little crisscross strokes, little X's. <laughs> this is just the way the, the teacher used to grade my, my paper in school, man. She'd just go across it and do X's everywhere. Now, if this, was, if this was a dry, or if this was a, a wet canvas, I'm sorry, and it had yellow under here, and you put this blue on it, you would have a bright green sky immediately. And we don't want that. Not today, anyway. Not today. Maybe sometimes, but not today. A little more of the blue. Because the, the acrylic's dry back there, you can put this blue over it without getting the bright green. It'll have a little greenish hue, but nothing like you'd get if it was if it was both wet. Maybe I'll take just a least little touch of a mm, little dark sienna, a little bit of alizarin crimson. Once again, though, we're using almost no paint. No paint. And I'll put a little touch of that right down in here. Some of those colors that we, we put on with acrylic will end up showing through when the painting's finished. And I thought today we'd do something that makes the background of this look almost like a watercolor very soft and misty and watercolor has sort of, of a flowy look to it. It just flows. But this is, this is oils and this is a permanent medium. There. All right. Isn't that easy? We have some gorgeous little colors happening back here. Now watch. Let's go into colors like, oh, the little bit of the dark sienna. I'll be right back. Right back, let me get a little yellow ochre and mix right in there with it. Once again, I keep saying this, but it's important. Once again, there is very, very little paint on the brush. I'm just tapping the top corner of the brush right in there, okay? Now then, we'll go up here and we'll begin picking out little individual shapes. I'm not looking for a lot of detail. This is back in the distance. We're just looking for basic little shapes. There we go. Little things that live all back here. So there's a little, little touch of crimson, a little dark sienna. We're going to hit a little Van Dyke brown once in a while. I'm just going to vary these colors back and forth. And all we're using is the top corner of this big old two inch brush. Something about like that. A little more of the yellow ochre here and there. Just to create variations. Now then. I'm going to work in layers on this painting. I'm going to take 
going to take a fan brush and dip it in paint thinner and then shake off the excess. Just shake it off. Now we go right up here, and you can use your knife. I'm just going to use a palette, but you could use a knife to flick. And I'm going to flick that. Paint thinner and the liquid clear have violent reactions. So it creates gorgeous little effects. Can you see what's happening right in there? And sometimes it'll take a minute or two for it to come up. But you'll get little spots. It's just so pretty. Look at that. Mm. And it's so simple. Now then, let's take, I'll use a little bit of the Indian yellow. It's a very transparent yellow. And I'm gonna start on another layer. I want it to look sort of like, maybe like there's light coming through here when this is done. And this acrylic color underneath will cause that to happen automatically. There we go. Just let that work all up in here. There. Now then, I'm going to take a little script liner brush. We'll take a little of the dark sienna. Put a little paint thinner here. I'm going to make the paint very thin. Very thin. Turn the bristles in there. Turn it. That loads it full of color. Turn it. All right, let's go up in here. Now with that, we can come back in here and put the indication of some little, little sticks and twigs and all these little things that are happening back here in the woods. There. I don't want these to be too dark. I want them to stay way back in the distance. There we go. But just all kinds of little things that live in the woods here. Maybe if I pulled down, it'd be easier to see. But you got all kind of little trees and sticks and just happy little things that live back in here. Something about like so. Tell you what, that's fun. I'm gonna do some more of that. Let's take a little bit. I'm gonna even get into a little black now and then, maybe even a little bit of Prussian blue. But I'm just tapping, just tapping. Let's go back up in here. I'm gonna tap in maybe another little, little thing that lives right here. But see, all these things you did with the black gesso, they end up looking like thousands of little leaves and little details that are in, <laughs> that are in your painting. And people will just go crazy trying to figure out how you, how you accomplished all that. There we go. And it's so simple. This black gesso is one of the neatest things that we've ever come up with. It really works and it makes painting so much easier and you use it in combination with the liquid clear and it creates gorgeous, gorgeous effects. There we go. Add a little alizarin crimson in there to warm it up some. Maybe a little touch of the yellow ochre here and there. And back to my fan brush. Paint thinner, shake off the excess, and we'll just flick it a little bit. Once again, I want to create that illusion of little dots and looks like little little leaves and things that are happening all back in there and people will be amazed at how you did this there see and you can see all that just happening in there all right and maybe there's some maybe there's some nice reflections in here let's take the least little bit titanium white, I put a little, say that again, a little bit of dark sand in it. And I just want to, maybe there's a little happy little pond that lives right out here. There's still very, very little color on the brush. If you put too much of the titanium white, it's opaque. It's going to cover up all of these, and I don't want to lose them. I don't want to lose them. They're too precious. They make your painting gorgeous. Let's add a little touch of the phthalo blue to that, just to give it a little, oh, I like it better. Looks like transparent water now. So there's a little titanium white, a little. I know you get tired of hearing the word little, but I, I don't know any other way to express how small amount it is. A little of the phthalo blue. There, but already you begin to see how transparent that is and you can see through it. Just like that. Then we can sort of come back with our same colors and we can tap in the indication of some little reflections in this. Not much, don't want a lot. Not much, just want a few little things in here. Something about like so. 
little touch of the yellow here and there. There, just to create the illusion of some reflections. I'm just knocking off the excess paint there. And we'll pull it down. There we are. Okay. And then very lightly, we'll just go across. And you can see right through that water already. I'll take a little touch of the, the Van Dyke, mix it with a little dark sienna. We'll just mix them together right here. And let's begin thinking, pick up a little roll of paint right on the edge of the knife. Let's begin thinking of some land mass that lives back here that all these little things are, they have to have a place to stay. So they're staying out here on this, something like that. Mm. Maybe, maybe a little here. Maybe this goes back behind there. We don't know where it goes. We don't care where it goes. Make a happy little pond out of that. That easy. That easy. We'll take a little crimson, maybe a little yellow ochre, mix it together with some white. A little dark sand in there. Ooh, that's beautiful. A little roll of paint. Then we can go back up here and very lightly, I want to just put the indication of a little highlight here and there on that. Just a little. Something like so. Don't want a lot of highlight. This is too far away. Much too far away. There, and the edges, I'm just gonna take the knife and sort of fuzz them up in there. So they just disappear. Just up and down, clean knife. And that just sort of fuzzes the edges away. All right. And with our liner brush, we can go back Add a few more little sticks that come off these land areas. It'll help bring it all together. And in the woods, you always have a lot of little sticks and twigs and little things that grow right along in here. That's where all the little animals live. There. Everywhere I go now, people ask me about Peapod the Pocket Squirrel. You saw him in some of the earlier series. And Peapod, I think I might have mentioned before, he's grown up and we've turned him loose. And He's got his own family now, a little condo in Miami, BMW, car payments every month. <laughs> Same thing we all have, except I don't have a BMW. There, let's take a little bit of the liquid white. I'm gonna put the least little touch of bright red in it, just enough to warm it up a little. Don't wanna set it on fire, just warm it up. And very lightly, we'll go in here and we'll put the indication of a, some little water lines in here. Something like so. Get a little more paint. There. Add a little touch of the thalo blue in there. I want to give it a little, a little variation here and there. Something like so. You can just sort of vary these colors however you want them. But see it, now you can see under the water. see all those things that are underneath there. And that's very hard to accomplish sometimes, but using the, the acrylic in the background and the black gesso, it's very simple. You can do it even if you've never painted a, a painting like this. There. Something about like so. And when you stand back and look at that, I see just an absolute perfect place here. I'm just pulling that up a little. I'm gonna fuzz these edges out. Perfect place, right? I, I gotta do this. Sometimes you get excited, you see things in paintings. Let's take a little bit of the liquid white and mix it with a small amount of titanium white. I put the liquid white in there only to thin the paint. Be right back. Get a little touch of that thalo blue. Ooh, that's pretty. Just a little though. Now this paint's a little thinner than what we've already put on the canvas, so it should flow on there. Let's go up and see. Maybe in our world, the water's just having a good time playing along here, comes over and says, Floom just fell right over the edge. Look at that. It just fell right over and over on this side. Maybe it's coming around. We'll just make up little stories. Say, so think about the water just running through there and playing, having a good time. And all of a sudden, somebody pulled the stopper out 
and it fell right off. And we can take the brush, give it a little upward push, make a little splash here and there. Water's coming off through here. Add a little more of the blue there. Mm. Just let all these little things just sort of happen. Just sort of happen. There. Just want to graze the surface here. There we go. This is getting darker and darker back here. It's going to be in the shadows, I think, when we get finished. Let's put something up here to contain all this. We wouldn't want all this water just to be standing up here in space. So maybe, maybe in our world there lives, yep. Maybe there's a great big old rock that lives right out here in front of the waterfall. Maybe it comes back like that. Big old rock. We'll just fill that in with Van Dyke Brown. All those good colors. There. And we'll take a little touch of brown and white and very gently here. I'm just going to let that work its way down. Barely touching. There we go. Something like so. There's not a lot of color here because I want this to be pretty dark and in the shadows. Add a little bright red to that. There. Ooh, I like that even better. Something like so. Maybe. Shoot, bravery test. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Maybe we'll have a big old tree that lives right here. So we'll just take the knife and put a big old tree trunk in there. This is just Van Dyke Brown. We'll have a big old tree. This is such a gorgeous place. Old tree, you'd want to live right in there somewhere. Take a little bit of that brown and white color that we have. And I'm just going to touch and sort of let it bounce as it goes around. Excuse my arm there. Just touch it and let it just sort of appear. Maybe it'll be in the leaves and it'll be in more in the shadows. Just paint big old trees using nothing but the knife. In fact, you can do entire paintings using nothing but the knife. There we go. Maybe, maybe there's an arm that lives right out in here. There, put a little highlight on him. Just enough so you can see him good. All right. But see already that black gesso is beginning to give the impression of leaves behind that tree. Now that Let's go over here. On the other side, we have to contain it. Maybe it comes out down to like that. We don't know, however you want it. Just putting some dark color in there. We don't need much dark color because of the gesso. Once again, the black gesso gives you those dark values almost automatically. There, all kinds of things. Let's put some leaves on our tree. For that, I'm going to use some black, some Prussian blue, maybe a little brown and crimson. Mainly good dark colors. Just tap like that. And we'll put, we'll just put some base color into here, just here and there. Then we'll come back and we'll put some nice highlights. Just all kinds of beautiful little things. But all we're doing right now is just filling in some of the base color. Let's have some on the other side over here, too. I want to try to leave some openings in here, if possible, so you can see the sky through there. I think that's very pretty, and it looks natural. It looks real. Don't want to kill them all. But if you do, that's no big deal. Your tree is just a little thicker than mine. Maybe it's bigger and stronger. Good. And then put some highlights on there. Today, let's use... Let's use that little oval brush. Take a little bit of the sap green, a little bit of yellow. There, a little yellow ochre, some Indian yellow. Now and then I'm going to touch the bright red. Let me get, maybe I'll put a little black in there. I want to dull that down. So, ooh, whew, that's nice. See, load a little color right in there. Let's go up in here. Now this little oval brush makes gorgeous little little leaf shapes in your tree. Very easy, even if you've never painted leaves or if you're having trouble with them. This little rascal makes it simple. 
just think about shape and form. Don't just throw them on at random. No matter how well the brush works, you still have to think of basic shape. There. All right. Mm. I like paintings like this. Reminds me of deep places back in the woods. And I like to go back in places like this with a camera and sit real still and little animals come out and You'd be surprised how many animals you can see if you just talk very softly and remain very still. Let's go on the other side over here. They'll come out and, and talk to you a lot of times. Now, if you begin understanding them, uh, you may be in a little trouble there, but... <laughs> there. Okay. But isn't that fantastic what that old brush will do? We'll just tap all these little things in here. Think about little shapes, though. Once again, don't just hit it random. Don't hit it random. There. Maybe down like so. And we can put the indication here and there. I have a few little trunks and sticks that we can see back in here. We don't want a whole lot. Just where you think you might be able to see a few things. Wherever. This is just a little dark sienna, paint thinner in it. There. Put all kinds of little things that live in there. Let's go on the other side and put some over here too. We don't want those left out because there's all kind of, all kind of little doers back in here. All right, let's take a one inch brush. I'm gonna dip it into a little bit of the liquid white. We'll go through some. We'll go through some cad yellow, be right back, get some sap green in there. Pull it in one direction, load it full of paint. Let's go up in here. Now maybe in our world there lives all kinds of little bushes and trees and things back in here. Just all kinds of numerous little happy things. There they come. There they come. Sometimes it's fun just to take the old brush and go sideways here. And you can begin putting in layers of little grassy areas. A little more of the yellow ochre. There. See, you don't need anything because the black gesso's back here. You already have your dark colors. Maybe that climbs right up the hill in places. Something about like so. And maybe there's a whip right there. See, we'll have another little bump. A little brown and white. Give it a little highlight so it looks like there's a little, little dirt showing right there. And we can go back and pop in a couple of more little bushes that live in there. But it helps create the illusion of a lot of distance and depth in your painting. I'm going to take a little black and that yellow makes a nice green color. Come right in here. Put in all kinds of little bushes. There we go. Little yellow ochre and all those colors. Indian yellow sometimes. Just vary your yellows back and forth. Okay. There's one. Mm. All right, let's go over here on the other side and put a few little things in. Maybe there's a happy little bush that lives. Yep, you're right, right there. Something like that. There's one. As many or as few as you want. So there comes one right down the side. Push upward with the side of the brush. It creates the illusion of little tall grasses and stuff that live in there. Okay. Maybe a little dark area right in there. Just to sort of separate that a little. Okay, take the knife, scrape through, and put in all kind of little sticks and twigs and little things that live back in here. When you scratch here, the black gesso shows through and it makes little black twigs and sticks. And they live everywhere, once again, they're everywhere. Let's take a little filbert brush, that's a lot of fun. And 
take a little white, a little touch of dark sienna, maybe a little black in it. Okay, and then I'm going to take paint thinner and mix with that and make it very thin, nice thin color. I'm going to dip the brush in paint thinner. This is a filbert. And we'll go right through a little bit of Van Dyke Brown. Both sides get it full of paint. And then I'm going to take one side and go through that nice thin grayish color that we made. So one side's light, other's dark. We can come up in here and put all kinds of little stones and rocks that live back in here. And you can do the entire stone in one stroke that way. Maybe there's some over here. See there? You can just put them wherever you want them. Maybe, maybe there's some live down in here. Wherever. Then we can take our fan brush, a little phthalo blue on it. Might even put a little black to dull it down. We want it to be darker back in here. And we come back in here and just put the indication of some little ripples that just disappear right on into the distance. All kinds of little things that are happening. There. A little liquid white, a little titanium white. And you can just pop in all kinds of little foamy, ripply things that go right on out. But isn't that neat? This liquid clear and black gesso will give you some of the neatest combinations. Give it a try. I really think you'll like it. I think with that, we're going to call this old painting finished. I hope you've enjoyed it. And from all of us here, I'd like to wish you happy painting. And God bless, my friend. Hi, welcome back. I'm glad to see you today. You know, I get a lot of letters from people saying, how in the world do you come up with ideas for new paintings? And one of the ways I think I'll show you today. So let's start out and have them run a list of colors across the screen that you'll need to play along with me today because I don't know exactly what we're going to do. And let me show you what I've got up here. I've got my standard old 18 by 24 inch pre-stretched double prime canvas. Now, say all that with a mouthful of rocks. And I've covered the entire canvas today with just a thin, very thin coat of liquid clear. And I think we'll just play a little bit. A lot of times when I'm trying to develop a new painting, I'll start out with just a blank canvas and I'll begin to play on it and sort of let the creative process happen. So I think that's what we'll do today. I'll show you exactly the kind of messes that we get into sometime. As I say, the entire canvas is covered with the liquid clear, so let's just have some fun. And we'll just start out and maybe we'll take a little, <laughs> I don't know, a little sap green. We'll have a little Van Dyke brown, maybe even a little black in there. We'll just mix this up a nice nice dark color. Maybe even put a little of the dark sienna too. We don't care because I really don't know what we're going to do except have some fun. Okay, let's go up to the canvas. Now this liquid clear is fantastic because it does so many things. But one of the things that it's, it does is it has a very violent reaction with paint thinner. So let's just put in some basic little shapes and forms here. Maybe we'll start with just a little Maybe the indication of a little evergreen tree that lives way back somewhere. We don't know where it lives. Something about like that. And this is also a good experience to, to just practice making little evergreens. Start with a fan brush, make a line, and I take just the corner of the brush and begin touching, see? From the center out, work it from the center out, like so. And as you work down the tree, add more and more pressure. Push harder and harder, something like that. We'll just sort of let that fade right into nothing down here. See, there's just some good practice on making a little evergreen tree. Now then, I want to I wanna cause these to sort of mist and blend together, maybe even give it a little watercolor look. So I'll take an old two-inch brush, I'm going to dip it in some paint thinner, and just shake it off a little bit. They're still thinner in the bristles. I have not taken it all out. But I've taken the majority of it out. You can always add a little more. Now when you begin touching this with a paint thinner against that, beautiful little things begin happening. Be careful that you don't get too much thinner initially. You can always add more. But it's a son of a gun to take it off. There. Now we'll just take that color and let's just begin playing here. I wanna, I wanna create the illusion of beautiful little misty areas that are far, far away. There. Just little soft things that live way back in the distance. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna sort of blend this out till it's very fuzzy, very quiet, 
just a gentle little place back here. There we go. But see how all these little things begin happening? And we can just let this go wherever you want it to go. Maybe just add the least little touch of paint thinner to the brush. Shake off all the excess though. Don't get too much. Once again, you can always add more. And just touch it, and it takes just a second for the reaction to take place. But you can create beautiful, beautiful effects. A little more of the thinner, and just touch. Very little though. Once again, experiment a little, and you'll find marvelous things that happen. But see, it almost looks like a watercolor, the way it flows in there. And maybe we can come back and maybe we'll just do another little tree. We'll put a little layer of trees in there. I don't know. And so we'll see where this goes. We use the old fan brush. Okay, let's go back up in here. Maybe there's one that lives sort of in the foreground here. See? There. Once again, this is just mainly sap green and the browns and a little black. Both browns, though. Maybe he's got a little friend named Clyde that lives right there, or whatever you want to name him. I give names to my little trees and I sort of make friends with them. Of course, people look at you like you're a little strange, but that's okay. Painters are expected to be different. Now, back to the paint thinner on the brush, and I want to begin pulling that out a little bit. So it makes like another layer. This one's in front. And you can make as many or as few layers as you want. Pretty soon here, we're going to have to decide where we're going with this, though. You can get carried away. And then I'm going to add a little more paint thinner to the brush. That's just knocking off any paint that I picked up. I just beat the bristles against the easel a little bit. Now, see the paint thinner? Isn't that fantastic, the beautiful effects you can create? Once again, it takes a moment or two for this to work, for the reaction to take place. So give it a little time to set. And as it sets for an hour or two, it'll continue to sort of spread even a little bit more. But already it's beginning to give that appearance of maybe just a little watercolor. <laughs> there we go. There, just have to splash the cameraman one time so he, he doesn't feel neglected. Now, let's take a little filbert brush, and I'm going to just use a little filbert. I'm going to go into a little sap green, some of these colors. There's not a lot of paint on the brush, though. Just both sides right in there. A little brown, a little dark sienna, maybe even a little black. There's still not a lot of paint. Okay, let's go up in here. Now, see, so you can, I hold the filbert brush sort of like a pencil, and you can just take, and let's begin making some big decisions in our world. Maybe, we'll, maybe there's... Yeah, maybe there's something that lives way back in here. And we just begin laying in some very basic little, some little ideas, some little feelings. There. And you can even take your fingers and work with this to create all kinds of illusions. Now, if you don't want to use your fingers, because it will get some paint on them, you know, you can still use your brush. I like to use the fingers sometimes just to create effects that are a little different, a little, a little unique. There. But you better remember where your finger's been before you scratch your nose. <laughs> there we go. Because I do things like that. I'll forget that I've been painting on my finger and scratch my ear or something, and people will begin laughing then because you've got all these funny colors on your face. But that's all right. As long as you enjoy what you're doing and have a good time. Look at there. But see, that easy, you can begin creating illusions of all kinds of little things that are happening in there. Just using a finger. Okay, maybe a little more color on the old brush here. I'm going to add a little more dark sienna. I like that dark sienna. That's a beautiful, warm color. And you can use this brush sideways, straight on, any way you want. Just practice with it and scrub that paint in and it creates all kinds of different effects. Once again, I like to take the finger and just work that out a little bit. Let's see, let it go over here. We're beginning to have something that looks like maybe this is a side of a mountain or a hill. Or, I don't know. 
looks pretty neat, though. I sort of like it. Sort of like that. A little bit more of a dark color. We can outline and make some of these a little stronger if you want to. It's a nice way of making a lot of little rocks and stone areas, very simply. Shoot, I like it. There's already a lot of distance and depth in there. Let's go back to our old fan brush. Get a little paint thinner on it, and I'm going to flick a little paint thinner in there. I want to keep this feeling of like a watercolor going throughout the painting, I think. I like that. Very soft, gentle little painting. But you can see how that instantly starts coming up, all those little things. Isn't that fantastic? As I've mentioned before in this series, I've got a lot of letters. I'm going to add a little Prussian blue in there. A lot of letters from people saying, how in the world do you use this liquid clear? Seems like it ought to be fantastic, but I don't know exactly what to do with it. And in this series, we've really tried to show you some, some paintings that you can do using liquid clear. There, because we have clear black and white. And all these things do gorgeous, gorgeous effects, but they're all different and unique. There we go. See, now we'll make this one darker, maybe. Mm. Just try to vary these colors wherever you want them to go. Looks like a big old stone lives right there. Now I'm going to sort of fade the edges out a little. And as I say, I like using my finger, but if you want to use the, just the filbert, that'll work just as well. Just as well. I sort of find this to be fun once in a while, just to get in there and play like that. Pick up a little touch, maybe a, ooh, a little lizard and crimson. We'll get a little crazy here. Nice little stone lives right in there. But you just put as many or as few things in your painting as you want. But this is a super way of just beginning to come up with ideas. Start with a blank canvas and begin playing with it. Just begin playing. You can create all kinds of gorgeous things. There. Don't be afraid to experiment. Don't be afraid to, don't be afraid to go out on a limb once in a while. Because you know, if you go out on a limb once in a while, that's where the fruit is. It never grows close to the tree. It's always out on the, on the limb. If you want to get the fruit from the painting, go out on a limb. Take chances with your art. Enjoy it. Mm. There. You know, I gotta do, I gotta do this. You know me, I begin seeing things in these. I'm gonna take a, a little bit of, the liquid clear, just a little liquid clear on the fan brush, and go right into titanium white. Maybe I'll get a little more clear. I'll be right back here. Let me get just a touch more. There. I want to make this. I want to make this paint thin. It's very thin with a clear. I'm only using the clear to thin the color. Look up here now. Right in here. I know. I know. I know. I know. Watch here. Watch here. A little. A little watery fall lives right there. There he comes. See? Look at that. This is the way paintings come about. This is the way that you create whole new ideas, new concepts. There. Look at that. It, I'm sorry. I, just, I get excited about things like this and just want to go crazy with it. Maybe. There we go. All kinds of gorgeous little things. We'll just put the indication of more things that are happening up above this little watery fall. All right. Just let your imagination take you to any place that you want to go, because this truly is your world here. I'm going to take my fan brush, a little paint thinner, and begin. Just flick a little, a little more of the paint thinner right up there, just to sort of bring all that together. Maybe even a little down here at the base of this waterfall. But see how it softens those edges and brings them right together? Isn't that neat? I used to work like crazy to do things like this. And this will allow you to do it almost effortlessly. There. There we go. Now that we got to make some big decisions. Where are we going with this? Where are they doing the filbert? There it is. Let's go back and 
and get some color. I told you this was going to be one of those days where we just played and had fun. But I want to I want to get you to try being creative on canvas, just to, to take your time and, and sit down and have nothing in mind when you start. Just have a good feeling and be happy and, and in love with life and your world and, and sit down and begin playing. And if you feel good about yourself and the world, it'll show in your painting and all these little things will happen. There, I'm just putting in some little, maybe some more little stones over here because we have to contain this little waterfall or it'll, it'll get out and run all over the place. We don't want that to happen. There. We don't even we don't even know where that goes yet. We'll decide that later on. Right now we're just putting some little stones in there to contain all this. Okay. Wipe off the old brush. Now then I'm just gonna take my finger and fade that back. Just blend these edges out. And you can create the illusion of highlights and shadows and all kinds of things that are happening right here. Just, just using your finger. That easy. There. Okay. Oh, back to my little fan brush. It just has paint thinner on it. And once again, I'm going to flick a little right along the edges here. Something like, like so. And maybe, maybe in our world, maybe there's a whole nother layer here. Look at all the layers and the depth that we've done in here. And you can do this. As you see, this is so easy. Even if you've never painted, you can do this. You can do this. Mm. There. Something like so. We just let that fade right. We don't know where that goes. There we are. Now then. Let's go back. I have to keep wiping my finger off if you're painting with it. You're going to end up with that dirty finger. Maybe we'll have a, let's have a little tree in our world. We can just keep using this filbert. I like it. We'll use some black, some sap green, some of the browns, crimson. It doesn't matter. Maybe even a little of the Prussian blue. Whatever. Okay. Let's go up in here. Maybe in our world, let's do a little evergreen tree right here. We'll just paint it with this. It doesn't matter. You can just take this brush and just begin putting all kinds of little limbs and just sort of dob them on. We'll come back and put a few little highlights in there. There. Nice dark tree that lives right up here in all this. There we go. And maybe let's put a little, let's just put a little color in here for a background. I may even pick up a little of that tree color. I just sort of want this to fade out, I think. Something about like that. We'll just let that fade right on into nothing. There. Hmm. I really do enjoy doing this. And uh, for a long time, I've wanted to show you some of the ways that we create new paintings. And this is one of the ways, right here. Right here. Okay, back to my little fan brush. It has the paint thinner. I'm going to flick this. See, there's really not much here, but I'm going to flick it a lot and just let it sort of, just let it sort of be a nice soft little background. Look at that. See there? It just sort of gives a, it gives a hint or a, or a suggestion of something going on in there. Let's take a little, we'll use a little blue and a little lizard crimson. Maybe I'll make a little lavender color. And once again, I'm just using my finger here, but the brush should work just as good. I just, I've got into the, using the finger. Oh, that's gorgeous. And I like that today. I just like doing that. You know, this, this painting already almost has an oriental flair to it. it sort of has like an oriental flair. It's interesting because I'm talking about, about that our show now is being played all over the world. And recently it started playing in, in Japan. And it's just, oh, it's fantastic. We have so many fantastic friends there. And, and they're enjoying the show, and it's working well for them. And, and we had one lovely lady who decided she wanted to be an instructor. And she came here all the way from Japan just to learn to be an instructor. 
And this is Misuko Tada. And she's our first Japanese instructor. I have to show you some of her classes that she has going there. We had some photographs here, and I wanted to show these to you. She has some fantastic classes, and she's teaching hundreds of people all over Japan the joy of painting. Isn't that something? So people all over the world, there's a common denominator. Everyone loves to paint. Everyone, even the young people. We have so many young friends, and they too enjoy this. There we go. I'm going to have to go to Japan pretty soon, I think, and meet some of these fantastic painters. They're, they're just so exciting. There. Maybe we'll go back to the brush. I'm, maybe we'll put something right in here. And we don't know what it is. Maybe I'm just going to sort of let this fade off on the side over here. Like that. Maybe. 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 Maybe there's another old tree up here. I'm just sort of bouncing around and sort of deciding what looks right and wrong and where I want these. And when you do yours, just sort of watch it and look at it and see what's happening in it. Because everybody's painting will look different, especially if you're doing a painting like this. Because we, we really don't have any set idea of where we're going with this. We're just sort of letting it happen. Take a little brown and white. Maybe just put the indication here and there of a little tree trunk. Not looking for a lot of detail, but just a little. Take a little yellow ochre, a little, a little cad yellow. Make a little green just to put a touch of highlight. I don't want this to be too strong. I think I'll keep these colors quite muted. There we go. Just enough to give it a hint. Just a hint. Shoot, maybe in our world. Maybe there's another old trunk. This old tree, maybe he had a bad bad time and pooped out on us. But he still lives up here on the rock. And let's see, maybe there's a little light shining through there. A little arm sticking out there. All right. Now then. Down in here, I'm going to go back to the finger. I like to blend with that. You can make some most interesting shapes and color combinations. There we go. I want it to fade right on out down here, almost to nothing. There. Something about like that. By changing the angle of some of these strokes, you can create the illusion of highlights and shadows and all these gorgeous little things. Just practice a little with it. I think you'll find this is a unique way of painting. Back to our little paint thinner on the brush. I'm going to flick the bottom of this. As I say, I'm going to do this through the entire painting, I think, just, just to keep this feel, sort of a, a watery color feel. Once in a while, I'll put a lot on an area and allow it to actually drip because it makes a very nice effect. And it'll drive people crazy that you show your paintings to. They'll, they'll go nuts trying to figure out how in the world did you do such a thing. There we go. Now then, let's take an old two inch brush. I'm gonna go right into a little bit of titanium white. Maybe the least little touch of, little. this is a little lavender color. It's sort of got a little crimson in it and a little bit of blue, but not much color, mostly white. Let's go up in here, and let's just take that and begin bouncing in like it's, maybe there's just the indication of some foamy water back here. White, a little bit of the Prussian blue, just sort of bury this a little bit. There we go, and just sort of bounce it in. There. All right. Just let all these little things happen. I don't want a lot of detail here. I don't really want to know where this goes. I want to retain the soft watercolor look. Something like that. It's very soft, very misty. Sort of a just secret little place. This is just a lot of mist out here. There. Maybe, 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 maybe. Let's go back to overall colors. We had the browns and the blacks. 
Maybe over in here. Yep, you're right. There lives another big old stone right there. Just work the bottom of him out a little. Maybe, maybe he's got a friend who lives right there. Don't let that just sort of fade off. We don't know where that goes. I don't, I don't want very sharp edges on here. I like this softness that just sort of happens. All right, maybe. And we're just varying these colors back and forth and back and forth. Maybe off we go over on this side. There. Isn't that neat, though, how you can do things like that? There we go. Maybe about in here. All right. You know me. <laughs> you know me. I got, I got to have a big tree. We'll just continue to use this. Maybe our big tree lives right here in front of the, right there, right there. And I don't want my old tree to get lonely. Shoot, let's, let's give him a friend. He has a friend now. He lives right there. Take a little bit of Sort of a gray color, we'll just put a little touch of highlight right down the edge. Just so it looks like there's a little light shining through there. Something about like so. And we can just work this on out. Something like that. I really hope you try these kind of paintings. It will, it will allow you freedom. To just experiment and don't be afraid to experiment once again that's where some of the best ideas in the world come from it's just experimenting and having fun and enjoying your art and enjoying your time with yourself or if you do it with a friend or your spouse it's a good time together okay back to our brush it has the paint thinner on it and let's just flick all of this too shoot i like that flicking just give it a little flick Maybe, maybe our tree goes into some sap green here. Maybe there's a few little old limbs hanging out here on our tree. There, just a few. I don't want too many because I don't want to lose all this nice background. Something about like that, just here and there. Just the indication. Maybe we even have a few little indications of some little bushy things that live out here. I say this is something that I really hope you try because it it's so much fun and it works so well and it's so easy maybe on our tree here there are a few old limbs that are hanging out like so wherever you think they should be a couple hanging out in here a few little sticks and twigs that live right back in here see there just all kinds of little things take a little a little touch of the yellow ochre just to spice it up a little right in here. Maybe a little touch of the bright red. <gasps> Ooh, just to give it a little fire in there. Shoot, I sort of like that. I think we're going to call that painting done. I really hope you try this because it'll teach you creativity and it'll allow you to express yourself. From all of us here, I'd like to wish you happy painting and God bless, my friend. Hi, I'm certainly glad you could join us today. I thought today we'd paint the little painting that you see in the opening. So I tell you what, let's start out and have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint the little painting with me. While they're doing that, let me show you what I got up here. The way the little painting was made, we started with a plain, ordinary canvas, just a pre-stretched, double prime canvas. I took a little bit of white gesso and mixed yellow acrylic with it, cadmium yellow acrylic with it, and painted the entire canvas allowed that to dry completely. Then I took a, a sponge and some black gesso and just daubed all this, just everywhere. Just use a sponge. I like a natural sponge because it has more shape to it than a man-made sponge. After that was completely dry, then we've covered the entire canvas with just a very thin, thin coat of liquid clear. And down here on the bottom, I took a little Indian yellow, which is a transparent yellow, and put down here because that particular painting has sort of a yellow cast throughout the entire painting. So I put the Indian yellow down here at the base just so that yellow cast in that painting continues throughout. So let's get started. Let me show you how we did that. I'm going to start out with the old two-inch brush and a very, very small amount of the phthalo blue. 
just a little bit of blue. When you're using clear with nothing in the background, it takes very, very little color. Okay, let's go right up here to the canvas. And we'll just take a little bit of that blue color and just, just begin dropping it right on here. Now it'll sort of have a, a little greenish tint to it because there's yellow underneath. But if you had wet yellow underneath, you would have brilliant, bright green, and we don't want that. Don't want that. We're gonna just let that bounce around here and play like so. As I mentioned in one of the earlier shows, we've had so many people write and say, show us some things that you can do with this, this liquid clear. We've devoted a lot of the paintings in this particular series to liquid clear. There we go. See, that easy. I don't want to kill all these nice areas in here. I'm going to allow some of that yellow gesso to show through when the painting is complete. I'm going to go into a small, small amount of the alizarin crimson. And we'll just dance a little of that in here, just using little X's. Once again, there is very, very little paint on the brush. About as close to no paint as you can be. Just enough to, just enough to sort of stain the canvas. And the colors that we're using here are very, very transparent. So it allows that, that acrylic color underneath to show through. And acrylic paint blends very well with white gesso. You can make any color background you want. It doesn't have to be yellow or red or it can be any color your mind can imagine. So practice a little bit and just experiment and play. You'll find wonderful things that happen doing this. All right. Something about like that. Maybe a little touch more of that blue. I like that blue color in there. We'll just bring it right on down in here somewhere. Okay. Now then, I'll just go right into a very small amount of the titanium white. Don't need much. Now, the titanium white, let's go right up here, is very opaque. In other words, you can't see through it. But if you put it on thin enough, you can still make out all these little details through it. But this will be our light area in this painting. This is where our light's just zinging from. There. And it'll give a nice, soft, almost a misty appearance. Very, very pleasant. And this works so easy, even if you've never painted before. This, again, is one of those effects that you can make very easy. I'm just going put a little bit here and there so it looks like little misty areas that are playing in the woods when we're all done. This is a soft painting, very soft. Maybe we'll go on the other side and put just a wee bit over here too. We don't want that left out. There we go. Something about like that. And really and truly that's basically about all that we have in this background. That's really about all we have. It's that simple. But you can see there's areas here that's the pure acrylic that are showing right through. And there's areas that have more opaque color on them and they look very misty and very soft. Isn't that a fantastic way of making a background that, ooh, if you're out selling paintings, and of course none of us are interested in happy bucks, but if you're out selling paintings, these son of the guns here will sell like hotcakes. Mm. All right. Now then, let's have some little sparkly bushes that live way back here in the distance. For that, I'll just, I'll just keep using the same old dirty brush. Take a little cad yellow, a little bit of yellow ochre, a little Indian yellow here and there. Just tapping a little into the bristles. There, that's some gorgeous close-ups we're getting there, isn't it? You can really see how that brush is being loaded. Let's go back up here. Now then, we come right down here, and I just want some indications of some pretty little sparklers that live back here in the background. Just some little sparklers. Maybe there's another one that lives right about there. Not looking for a great deal of detail. Not looking for a lot of detail. Just a little. Mm. And when this is done, it'll look like the light should be zinging right through there and, and creating some gorgeous effects on some of these little bushes. There's a nice bright one. It'll really show up. Of course, we get carried away sometimes and cover up a lot of them, so it may disappear or it may not. We don't know. We don't care. I'm going to the other side here, maybe put one or two over here. Something about like that. Now, since in this particular instance I have an, an idea of exactly where this painting's going, 
I know most of that's going to be covered up, so I'm not going to put a lot of effort into it. Okay, now the fun part of this whole technique. <laughs> Let's wash the old brush. Shake it off. <laughs> and just beat the devil out of it. That really is the fun part of this. Now then, let's start with some nice background things. I'm going to make a brown color by using about equal amounts of alizarin crimson and sap green. These two colors mixed together make a gorgeous, gorgeous brown. And you can take it to the red side or the green side, just depending on your mood or, or how you feel about the painting or whatever. Either way, you make the big decision. Let me clean the old knife off here. We just wipe the knife on a paper towel. No big deal. Take a little bit of that color. I'm going to load it the same way. Just tap right into it. See there? Just tap. Okay, let's go up here. Now then, we're going to have a few happy little bushes that live back in here. Isn't that a gorgeous brown color? But we're going to play dark against light, light against dark, continually, continually throughout this painting. That's really what makes it work. Ooh, there's an area that has a little more crimson than green. Isn't that gorgeous? Right in there. Hope that shows up when you're set. There. Okay. See? But it's nice just to use this old two-inch brush. Sometimes we're afraid of this brush because it's so big. But it'll do wonderful things for you. Just, just allow it to do it. Allow it to work for you. Okay, a little bit more of that color and maybe, oh yeah. We'll have one that lives right there. See how you can create all those little illusions? There, and these are far away. They're in the, we in the background, so we're not worried about a lot of detail yet. As we get closer in the painting, then we'll be concerned about detail and being able to count every leaf on the tree. But back here, back here, we just want indications. I want to create the illusion of another layer. Let me grab another brush. I have several of them going here. We'll take a little white with just the least little touch of yellow ochre in it. And I'm just going to tap a little color. I want to create a light area at the base of this. Something like so. Knock off the excess paint and then we'll blend that right in. All I'm looking for is this misty area. The rest of it we're not concerned with at this point. That light area will be your separator when we put another layer in here. So take care of that little light area. It's your good friend. It'll do wonderful things for you in the painting. There we go. Okay. See, if you can tap a brush, you can do this. That's all there is to it. Going back to my old dirty brush, we'll go right into, we'll just use some midnight black. Load it the same way. Just tap. Just tap it like so. You can see up close there, we get a lot of comments about what the brush is, why does it look like that. We tape the brush furrows to keep them from shining when the, when the studio lights. But other than that, they're the same identical brushes that you're using. This is just black. It's just, just a little bit of duct tape we put around there. Otherwise, they would shine and cause big glares and, you know, it wouldn't look good on your TV. That's the only reason we do that. Okay, see there? Now we have another layer. But you see how that little light area is your separator? Without that, it would have a tendency to blend together more. And we don't want that. We want it to, to separate so you can tell there's different planes in your painting. There we go, maybe. Shoot, why not? Just wherever. Maybe this one goes all the way up here. I don't know. Just sort of... Let your imagination take you wherever you want to be. Because this piece of canvas, as you've heard me say a million times, truly is your world. Let me grab a little liner brush. Let's take a little bit of that nice brown color we made. We're going to put a little paint thinner in it. We're going to thin that paint down till it's, well, it's not quite ink consistency, but it's very thin. Okay, let's go up here. With that, let's put in the indication here and there and there and here. Uh, some little sticks and twigs and all the little things that live in the woods and they're all out in here there because you always have these out in the woods just gobs of them sometimes lots of them lots and lots of them there we go 
And one of the questions I hear, is it better to pull down and make little sticks and twigs or go up? It really is up to you. Try it both ways, see which works the best for you. And that's the way that's exactly right. Because painting is a very individual pastime. Everybody does it different. And everybody enjoys it for different reasons. There. I enjoy it. I think it's my escape from reality. I can go in here and I can really, literally, create any kind of world that I want. There's tranquility and peace in my world. There's never any violence. I have all my little animal friends. They all live right here with me. All right. Now then, that's coming along pretty good. Let's just take a little white, a little bit of that brown that we made. Ooh, that's pretty. There, maybe a little bit darker. Yeah, that's nice. Very nice. Cut off a little roll of paint. See there, let's go up here. Now you have to start making some decisions. Where did you land lift? Maybe, maybe right along in here. So just take the knife, decide where it lives, lay it in. Lay it in wherever you want it to be. There we go. As I say, I think these kind of little paintings with the liquid clear are so much fun and they're so, so effective. So effective. And they're easy to do. Now I'm just going to take a clean knife and just sort of fuzz up the edges here a little bit. Just, I don't know exactly what you would call it other than just fuzzing it up. I just want a soft edge here. I don't want that hard edge. And you can just take the knife and just sort of rub it. And it'll, it'll create that illusion. Sometimes it comes out looking like little, little bushes and stuff that are far away and you haven't hardly done a thing. There. See there? And by not overmixing the paint, you get these variations. Don't overmix your color. Most of the time we leave it sort of marbled. Sort of marbled. And that way these happy accidents happen continually. Continually. And then you learn to use these accidents to create beautiful, beautiful paintings. Because, <laughs> as you know, we don't make mistakes. We just have happy accidents every once in a while. Maybe it comes on back up in here. Now this will not be an exact duplicate of, of the little painting you see at the beginning of the show. But it'll show you how it was made. I like that little opening where you sneak behind the tree. Isn't that fantastic? That was created by a very good friend of mine that works here at the station by the name of Jerry Morton. It's him and a lot of the other engineers put a lot of time into making that little rascal. So I hope you enjoy it. There. Okay. <laughs> well, you know me. I like big trees, so I think it's time to make our big tree. I think I'll use the filbert today because I want paint that's very thick on the canvas. We'll go into the Van Dyke brown and dark sienna. I'm just sort of going to gob a lot of it right on the bristles. Let's go up in here. Major decision time. Where does your tree live? I think our tree does now. It lives right along here and just I'm putting the paint on very thick. Very, very thick because I'm going to put highlights on there and I'm going to depend on this thickness to catch the highlights. So don't be afraid to use a lot of color. There, see there? There's a lot of paint there. So we have areas in this particular painting that are so thin there's nothing there hardly except liquid clear over acrylic color. I'm going to have a limb right here. That... And then we have other areas that could be up to like an eighth of an inch thick. And I like that in a painting. Very much. Very much. Let's give him another big old arm over here. And you can make him crookedy and have all kinds of character. Don't just make old straight tree. Shoot. If you do that, uh, the lumberjacks will come along and whack him down and make a telephone pole out of him. We want a tree here that has character gnarly old tree. It's had a hard life. Things weren't always good out here in the woods. There were some years that they didn't get much water and maybe when he was little a big old creature came along and gnawed on him a little bit. Just make up little stories so it makes sense why your tree looks the way it does. 
there. See, we'll put a big old foot out here for him to stand on. There we go. We'll give him another arm or two. Maybe he's got an arm out here. Now I'm just going to put a few on here. When you're doing this at home, you can put as many arms on your tree as you want. I just want to show you how they're made. It's a little filbert brush that works very good for doing things like this. There we go. See there? Now, but that paint is so thick on there. As I say, in some areas, it's probably a good eighth of an inch thick. It has, it, it has bumps and ridges on it, and when it dries, you can actually feel the bark. All right. Now, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take the little script liner brush, put a little, little of my brown color over there. Ooh. Want some variation. Script liner brush and a paint thinner. Gonna get quite a bit of thinner because I know I'm gonna use several different strokes here. But we wanna fill the bristles full of color. Fill them full of color and the paint is very thin. But see, there's a lot of color in those bristles. And this is a, a liner brush has very long bristles so it holds a lot. Let's go up here. Now then, delicate touch. All we're gonna do is just barely touch the edge of this and allow the paint to be picked up on those areas that are very thick. That's why we use the filbert brush rather than a fan brush or something to do this. I want it to be very thick so that just those ridges of paint pick it up. You can make some of the most gorgeous looking bark like this on trees. See there? See how these little areas I will push that limb into the back by just coming distinctly through with that one. Now see, he's behind. Didn't know you had that kind of power, did you? All right, it's just barely touching. Just let the bristles graze it, graze it. Mm. I really do think this is one of the neatest ways I've ever seen of putting all kinds of gorgeous little things in there. Like that. Okay, and over here on this side, We'll just put a few little things, a little more paint thinner, a little more color. If you have trouble making it come off your brush, just add a little more paint thinner, that's all. If you don't get all these ridges and bumps, it means that your under color was not thick enough and you don't have all those variations under there. Now you can sit and try to draw these, it'll take you forever. Or you can just do it this way and it just works like that. Isn't that neat? And as I say, when this thing is dry, you can feel this and it'll feel like real bark on a real tree. Maybe an old tree that you used to know. Might have lived in your yard one time. Might have been your good friend. There's nothing wrong with having a tree for a friend. There we go. Come right on out wherever you want it. Something like so. Maybe a little bit right in here. Okay. And if you really want to sparkle it on the edges, just here and there, don't over, don't overdo. You can just take a little bit of light color. See there, look at that, look at that. Oh, I'm sorry, I get excited sometimes. I've painted thousands and thousands of paintings and I still get excited when this works. It's so fantastic. All right, that'll show you how it's done. Okay, now then all I got the old paint thinner going, we'll go right into a little bit of this nice brown color we made from crimson and sap green and let's just put some little arms here and there on this see just let it flow there as i say this i like these woodsy scenes because this is a fantastic place for all my little creatures to live i got to show you one of my little creatures here recently I, I had the i had the privilege of going out and seeing a fantastic lady named carmen shaw and she had a little baby fox and she told me if you look in the dictionary under cute, it would say baby fox. Isn't this the most precious thing you've ever seen? I'm just putting limbs on while you're watching that. Not doing anything that you won't see. But I love these little animals. And Carmen, there she is. She brought a little raccoon over to visit the little fox. This is just a baby raccoon. Of course, he's a little older than the fox. Oops, hey. <laughs> I think maybe there's a little personality conflict there. But aren't those precious little things? I have to agree with Carmen. When, 
when they made the word cute, they had that little fox in mind. There is no doubt, because they are absolutely precious. I think that one's six or eight weeks old. Carmen's a super lady. She lives right outside of Orlando, Florida. And she's a rehab specialist. She takes care of all these little animals that are injured and orphaned. And she nurses them back to health or raises them up, whatever they need. And then she turns them loose, lets them go back, back to nature. OK. Now then, let's take on a little tree in the background. I'm going to take the old two-inch brush, a little bit of brown, a little bit of bright red, a little more bright red, a little yellow ochre. Mix them together, a little more bright red. I like that. Let's go right up here. Now over this dark area in our world, we're going to put us a nice tree, but we're going to let some of that show through. There. Just a big tree that lives up here and has a good time. There we go. We'll take the little liner brush, some of that brown color. Let's put the indication of a trunk and a stick and a twig that lives in there. There, just however many, doesn't matter. Now then, use that same old dirty brush. It's working pretty good. We'll go back into some light color. This is cad yellow, just to give it a little highlight. Maybe I'll get a little white, put that in there with it. There. Okay, now then, let's go right up in here and let's drop a few little highlights on there. There we go. Isn't that easy. We got us a pretty nice little tree. It lives back here. There, he watches my little fox back here. Let's take some white, a little bit of that brown we made. And just come right along in here. And we'll put in some, some more little land area. Notice I'm not covering all this up. I want some of that dark to show through. Tell you what. Let's take a little bit of our brown we made from the crimson and the green. Let's put some more little bushes that live right here. Just a few little happy bushes live right in there. There. All right. Big old bush lives right there. Go right into the black. So we have a little separator in there. See there? it. Now then, when I have it going, I'm going to touch just a little bit of the color, a little bit, just to put some indications. Don't want much. A few indications of a highlight here and there. I'm going to take my old filbert, put a little brown on it. Light brown on one side, dark on the other. Maybe there's an old fence lives. Oop, yep, right there. Yep. Now this guy, he he took care of his fence about like I do. He didn't do too good. It's falling down on him. And it just comes right on down. Maybe like that. Maybe like that. Maybe there's one old rail that's still trying to hang on there. Soop. Like so. Put a little bit more of the color right in here to indicate some soil, dirt, land, whatever you want to call it. We got that going. Shoot. Let's put a little more right in there. Just helps give it a little more depth. Back into our black. That was just the brown made from the crimson and green. There we go. There. Take a little more of that. We can sort of bring that together. Looks sort of like a little road now. Goes back in there. We don't know where it goes. Don't know that we even care. It's just a nice little place back in there. Take our liner brush, a little bit of light brown. We can flip up a few little weeds and sticks and things that live all in there. Something about like that. Wherever you want them. This is one painting that I really hope you'll give it a try because I think you'll find it to be one of the most enjoyable little things using this liquid clear that you've ever done, and it works. That may, be, that may be one of the greatest parts of it. Little highlight right here. It works so easy. The clear and the black gesso will just make your 
it'll make your painting world <laughs> so much easier. Well, I think we about have a finished painting. I'm gonna take a little bit of the bright red, a little paint thinner, and I'm gonna sign this one. I have a short name, so it's very easy to sign it. So I say, I hope you try this, but if you have time, send me a photograph of your attempt. I'd love to see it. And from all of us here, I'd like to wish you happy painting, and God bless, my friend. Hi, welcome back. I'm certainly glad you could join us today. Thought today we'd just do a fantastic little painting. It'll just make you feel good in here. So let's start out and have run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us. And they'll come across right about there. See them? Okay, let's go up here. Today I just have a plain old white, pre-stretched, double prime canvas, and I've covered it with a very thin, even coat of liquid white. So it's all wet, and it's slick, and it's all ready to go, and so let's just do a fantastic little painting together. I thought maybe today we'd just start with the old two-inch brush, a little phthalo blue, and just load a little color right into the bristles, like so, just a little. We don't need a whole bunch. It's easy to add more color, but sometimes it's a son of a gun to try to take it off. Okay, let's go right up here. We'll start right at the top of the canvas, and, and we'll make little X's, little crisscross strokes. Something about like so. And if you start at the top of the canvas, work all the way across, and then begin working downward in layers, it'll, it'll mix with the liquid white that's on the canvas, and automatically, automatically, it'll get lighter in value as you work down toward the horizon. And that's exactly what we're looking for. And the little crisscross strokes will give you little actions that are happening in the sky. So it's, it's not just a flat old dead sky. It has some, has some character to it. There we go. Something about, about like that. Whatever, whatever, doesn't much matter. We'll bring it right on down to about there. Okay. Now maybe I'll just add a touch of alizarin crimson right on that old brush with the blue. Just a little though, I don't want much, just a little. And I'm gonna start down here and just put a, a little lavender hue, sort of, sort of lavender color. And then we'll let that sort of work upward because I want that lavender color to be down here. But it's not very strong, it's just enough that you know it's there. Now, sometimes in paintings, it's nice to take and make the corners of the painting much darker. And that way, when you look at the painting, your eye is automatically drawn toward the center. There we go, so we'll just take a little of the midnight black, and we'll just put a little bit in the corners, just like so, and then we'll blend that right in. Something about like that. Sometimes I use a little Prussian blue. Let's use a little Prussian blue. In fact, what the heck? We'll mix that right in there with the black. Prussian blue is much darker and stronger, and it just blends right in. It'll make the top of this painting and the corners a little bit darker. There. And it also helps create that illusion of depth and distance in your painting. And that's what we're looking for. That's what we're looking for. All right, now then, down here. Tell you what, we have to decide what we're gonna paint today. I think, i tell you what let's do. I live in Florida, and in Florida we have a lot of gorgeous, gorgeous swamps. That's where a lot of my little creatures live. So let's do a little swamp scene today that's very simple. And if you've never painted a swamp scene, this is one you can do. This is a nice one. I wanna take a little bit of that phthalo blue, a little alizarin crimson, I'm just mixing them on the brush. I think I'll make a little more of that lavender color. Let's go right up in here. If we're gonna make a swamp, let's make one that's colorful, it's pretty, make you feel good just to look at it. There we go. And we'll just pull this straight across, pulling from the outside in. Something about like that. I think I'll leave a little area open right here so it'll look like a sheen of light, and maybe we'll, maybe we'll come back and put a bright color in there, something that'll just sparkle a little. Same thing here, I wanna make these corners a little darker than the rest of the painting. And already, your eyes should automatically be going to right in here. Let's wash the old brush. If you've painted with me before, you know this is the fun part of this whole technique. There, shake off the excess. <laughs> and just cover everybody around you. If you do this at home, there's a thing made called a brush beater rack that you put down in a little garbage can, and 
you shake the brush inside of the can and then beat the devil out of this little rack. And I tell you right now, it'll save your happy home and your marriage and all that. Because if you do that in your living room, chances are your spouse is going to kill you right on the spot. I'm going to take a little pink. I'm going to put a little, little bit of alizarin crimson right in that little area. Right in there. Something about like that. And that'll give us some nice base colors for what we're looking for. And maybe in our world, maybe in our world, there live some happy little clouds. Use a little fan brush today. Take some white. I'll be right back. I'm going to get a little... There. Whoops, maybe a little more. A little touch of the bright red. I want to put a little... A little pink sparkle in these clouds. Load a lot of color in the brush. Okay, let's go up in here. Now, have to decide where your little clouds live. In our world, I think one lives. Yeah, you're right. Right there. There he is. Little rascal just runs around and has fun all day. I like clouds. They're very free. Very free. There. We'll give him a little more right there. We just let him go wherever you want him to go. It doesn't matter. There we go. There we go. A little touch more of the bright red, because I want this to have a little pinky, a little pink flavor to it. Ooh, maybe that's too much pink flavor. We'll just dull him down. That's all there is to it. Just add a little more white, dull him down a little. And we just sort of let that wander off wherever. I think I'll put some big trees back here. We'll probably cover up half of these, so we're not too worried about them. Not too worried about them. If you've never seen a swamp, they're most, most interesting. There are so many fantastic creatures live in a swamp. It's sort of the start of the whole ecosystem. That's where all your little creatures come from. So we have to preserve some of the swamps. There. As I say, I live in Florida, and we have some of the most gorgeous swamps there. There we go. And there's a lot of swamps all the way up into Georgia and uh, Louisiana, all through there. Beautiful, beautiful areas. And there's so much wildlife in one of these. Mm. Every so often I drive down to the Everglades and just go out and look at all the little alligators and the birds and the egrets and all kinds of little creatures that live out in there. There. See, isn't that easy? We've got the indication of a little, little cloudy area that lives way back in there. Shoot, that's, that's a lot of fun. Let's wash the old brush. <laughs> I just like to wash the brush. <laughs> I got a cameraman that gives me a hard time. This is the way I get even with him. All right. Then I got another one dirty here, but we won't wash it. I'll, I'll just take a little crimson, pick up a little Prussian blue. I'm gonna make a, a lavender color toward the blue side. You can make it toward the red side or the blue side. Today I'm going to make it toward toward the blue side. Let's go right up in here. I'm just going to put some little indications of some little trees that live wee wee back in the distance here. They're a little clump. These are these are going to be cypress trees, and they grow in clumps. There. So we'll just put in some basic little shapes. Like so. Don't want a lot of detail because these are too far away. Too much detail would ruin the illusion of distance. Something about like that. There we go. Just using the corner of the brush and just tapping in some very basic little shapes. Maybe we'll do a big cypress tree. Yeah, let's do a big cypress tree in the foreground. And we'll put some detail in those. Right out here though, these are ones that are far away. We're not looking for detail in them. Take a little yellow ochre, a little Indian yellow. We'll just come back in there. That makes it green with what we've got on there. Sort of a greenish. But just the indication of a few highlights here and there. This is sort of separates the individual trees. There we go. Mm. There we are. All kinds of little things. There's little creatures live all out here. In the last show, we showed a little baby fox. I wonder if you got to see him. He is so precious. There. Something about like that. I'm going to take my little liner brush, little script liner. And let's take, we'll use that same old lavender color. It doesn't much matter. 
thin the paint down with paint thinner. Okay, let's go right up in here. And we'll put the indication here and there and there and here of, of some little trunks. These are far away. We're not worried about much detail. Here and there we can put an arm, but don't put a bunch of detail. It'll ruin the illusion of distance. Ruin that illusion. And that's what makes your painting special. There. Maybe, 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 maybe. Yep, you're right. You're right, wherever you want them. Okay. Yeah, we can take a, we use a fan brush for a while. Get an old fan brush, I'll use that same color. Lizard, crimson, Prussian blue, mix them together. Make a lavender to the blue side. Lavender to the blue side. We'll use that. That's just, I'm pushing upward, giving it an upward push with a brush. Pushing pretty firmly, I wanna bend that rascal. Bend it. Just something like that. Shoot, maybe over in here. Maybe there's some little trees back in here too. I want to put some back here. This may show through a little. That'll help create that illusion of more trees back over in there. Just in case some of it shows. I'm gonna put a big tree right there. I know that already. I can feel a big tree coming. <laughs> if you've painted with me before, you know I really like those old big trees. So invariably before we're finished, we're gonna have a big tree here. Take a little sap green, a little yellow, mix them together. Make a nice green color, maybe a little yellow ochre too. Ooh, that's nice. Let's go up here. And just take that. And we'll begin putting in a little, little indication of some bushes and weeds that grow way back in here. Some little swampy things. There they come. A little bit more right in here. Maybe like that. It doesn't much matter. Doesn't much matter. I'm going to take another fan brush. Put a little bit of phthalo blue and white on the brush. And maybe right in here, just to give it a little cool area. Just want to put a little blue right in here. Very little, very little. Just cool it down a little. Whew, like it. All right. Now, it looks like something that's far, far away. But Let's take the old brush here that's got the lavender on it. And let's just begin pulling some of that color down. There, see, straight down, straight down. I'm gonna make the indication of a nice reflection back in there. Straight down. All right, now, very lightly, just go across. That'll help create that illusion of reflections in your water. Let's take, let's take a little liquid white. I'm going to put a little bit of the phthalo blue in it. It's just to sparkle it up a little. Mm, it's a pretty color. Cut across, just like so. See? Pull it out flat and cut across. Gives you a little bit of paint right out of the edge of the knife, okay? Then you can go up here with that little bit of paint, and you can just begin cutting in a little water line. Something about like that. Normally swamp water is not real deep. There are exceptions to that, but most of the time swamp water is pretty shallow. Pretty shallow, so I don't want to make this look real deep. And it looks, swamp water looks blackish, unclean, but it's really, it's really, as I mentioned earlier, it's where the whole ecosystem starts. It's right there. So the swamps are very, very important. We, we really need to preserve some of them. There. Okay. Now we can start having some fun. Let's find an old filbert brush. I think, I think we'll take the old filbert and go into a little bit of Van Dyke brown, a little dark sienna, just mix them up. It doesn't much matter. Maybe back here there's an old, let's go right up in here. Maybe there's an old cypress tree that maybe, maybe it's a tired old tree. And cypress trees normally down toward the base are very fat, big old fat trees, sort of funny looking. Maybe he's got a, a friend right here. And you have what's called cypress knees. They call them cypress knees. They're just little protrusions that come up of cypress out of the water. 
So we'll draw one of those here too. Okay, we can take a little bit of a little bit of white, a little brown on it, and maybe maybe our light's going to come from that. So we'll highlight that side a little bit. There we go, right over in there. And we'll come back with a liner brush and work on that a little more later. But right now, that's good enough. Good enough. Let's take a little black, a little Prussian blue, brown, crimson, all the good dark colors, a little sap green, put them all together, mix them up on the fan brush, make a good dark color. And we'll just pop in a little area right here so we can have like a little, maybe a little grass is growing right around this rascal. Maybe it's just growing right around like that. Take that same old brush, we'll go right into the yellow. Because there's blue in there, we'll get green. And we can just pop in some indications of little grassy areas that live all down in here. Take our two inch brush, pull downward, create a little reflection. There. Okay, back to our liquid white on the knife. And we can put a water line right around that. Right around there. Isn't that fun? I like doing little swamp scenes. Mm. Of course, I like to go out in the swamp and just and just watch the creatures out there, the little animals and everything. They have a lot of fun. Big old alligators are where I live. Some big old alligators. When I was just a child, I used to have an alligator for a pet. I worked for years and years ago. I worked for a store one year at Christmas. And instead of paying me money, I was only about 10 years old, they gave me several exotic pets. And one of them was an alligator. And he was only about a foot long when, when they gave him to me. I'll never forget, I took that rascal home. And I wasn't real popular with my mother when I dumped him out in the living room floor out of a, out of a big old bag. But she let me keep him. And I kept him for maybe probably about a year, year and a half. And he grew to probably close to two and a half, three feet long. But he got mean. I don't think you can ever make a pet out of an alligator. So I took him down to one of the local lakes and turned him loose. I won't make a big tree. And chances are he's still there today. Shoot, he, by now he's probably huge. He's probably scaring swimmers to death. <laughs> All right. I'm using the filbert brush because I want this paint to be very thick. Very, very thick. I'm going to put a lot of paint on there. Because I'm going to come back and use that thick paint to catch the highlight color. There we go. Once again, you got all these little things that grow down here around his foot. So. And they're not always straight. Sometimes they're crooked and gnarly. And I guess that's a word. They have all kind of little shapes. Shoot, maybe there's one that came up out there. All right. Where's another one? Just Van Dyke brown, dark sienna mixed together. Very thick. Very, very thick. And I like this filbert brush for that. Okay, you know. <laughs> I have to have a big tree. Have to have old big tree. There he comes. Big old tree. And it doesn't really matter much how you put this on. As long as you have a basic shape. We're going to come back and put all the highlights and all the things that make it sparkle in there. Right now we're just looking for for texture on the canvas. Let's have two trees. What the heck? I like these old big trees. Well, I'm glad we put that back here. Some of it is showing through. I wasn't sure if it would or not. You just sort of see these scenes in your mind and you don't know exactly how they're going to come out. And that's all right. You don't mind. Cypress trees sort of grow in clumps. So we're going to have a bunch of trees, all different ages and sizes, some of them big, some little. Shoot, maybe they just go right on off the canvas here. Here's one right here. Oh, big one. He just lives right along here. We'll separate all these with highlights. Right now we're doing, once again, just blocking it in with a lot of color. Let them get very, very big at the bottom, though. Big at the bottom. There we go. Something like that. 
And while we have it cut on there, we just pull a little bit down because we're going to pull that down and make a reflection out of it. So it doesn't matter. Just grub a little in there. Take your big brush, decide what you want to be reflections, pull it down because <laughs> we don't make mistakes. We don't make mistakes. We just have happy accidents. See there? Now then, let's take our script liner brush. I'm going to take a little, little white, a little dark sienna, mix them together, something about like so. Mm, put a little lizard and crimson in there too, just to give it a little, little warm flavor. A lot of paint thinner. We're going to thin this paint down to it's almost the consistency of ink. Be right back there. So you can see it running right there on the palette. Okay, let's go up here. Now with this liner brush, we said our light was, our things are going to be highlighted on the right, so just take the liner brush and just let the edge of it, just the edge of it. I'm holding it almost flat, almost perpendicular there to the canvas or whatever. Just let it graze. This is where you separate all your beautiful trees. Let it graze. Just barely, barely touching. And it'll look like real bark. And there, a little more paint thinner. There, and there's a big one hiding right in here. All we gotta do is pull him out. There he comes, there he comes. He's in there. He's in there. There. They use cypress wood to make panelings and they use the logs to make log cabins. There we go, a little bit over in here. Now at home, you have unlimited time and you can really take your time and put a lot of detail here. You can make it a lot nicer than this one. Here, I just want to show you how. Just show you how. Something like so. That one we'll have behind there. A little bit in here. We gotta put some, gotta put some nice leaves on these yet. We can take a little bit of blue and white and put the indication of a little reflected light over on this side just to make a shadow. There we go. Something like so. There. And you can even take, even though you don't see one there, you can just pull out a little knee, a little cypress knee right in there just by doing that. See, now he stands out. Okay, let's grab us a fan brush. We're gonna take, we're gonna take some black, some Prussian blue, sap green, good dark color. We gotta put some leaves on our tree. Okay, let's go up in here and decide where our old tree lives. Boy, he lives right up here at the top of the canvas. He's got big old arms that stick out everywhere. Here comes one. There they go. We're just really, using a lot of pressure. There, pushing it in. Just push it right in. Okay. There. These are fun old trees to paint. And sometimes, sometimes the top of the tree is naked and down here will be a few little limbs. They just grow any old way, makes them happy. Shoot, there they come right across there. And if you're really brave, <laughs> it's your bravery test. Maybe there's a few that grow right down there. Who knows? It's up to you. Wherever, wherever you think they should be. Something like that. Something like that. And we can take our liner brush, a little bit of the brown color, and maybe there's a big old limb that comes right down. So that has something to set on. Look at there. Something about like that. One here. Wherever. Not too many, but a few old limbs hanging around. All right. We'll just wipe off the excess paint, use that same brush that had the dark color on it, go right into our yellow. And yellow ochre, Indian yellow, just mix them all together. And instantly we have green. So let's go back and put a few highlights up here on these. Just a few little highlights. Think about shape and form, though. Don't just hit that rascal at random. Think where you're going. It's 
like taking a trip. You need to know your destination. Same here. <laughs> so I met some drivers on the road that they have no destination. Bet you've met some of those too. There we go. Something like so. See there? With that easy, it gives an indication of a lot of nice little leaves and stuff that live down here. Okay, takes more of a dark color. The blue, the black, the sap green. Put a little dark down here at his foots. There we are. A lot of times these little grassy areas grow around their foots. Maybe there's another one right in here. Who knows? Wherever you want them. A little bit of our green. And some little highlights in all these areas. Something about like that. Yeah. Okay, a little more for here. Don't want that one left out. There we go. Take our knife, a little bit of that liquid white with a little color in it. Put the indication of a little water line. It sort of cleans up the bottom of all of this, brings it all together, gives borders to it. Something like so. And sometimes if you're really brave, maybe you can put a little bird sitting right here. We'll take and scrape out some of this excess color. It's really better if you wait until the, until the thing is dry. And then you can put him on easy. We'll just take a little liquid white. And put the indication here of a, maybe a little egret that sits right out here. Something about like that. I would really suggest you wait till your painting's dry. Take a little orange. Put him a little beak on there, a couple little legs. And it sort of gives an indication of a little bird that lives out there. We'll put him an eyeball in there and call him finished. With that, I think we're going to call this one done. really hope you've enjoyed this painting from all of us. We'd like to wish you a happy painting. God bless, my friend. Hi. I'm glad you could join us today. I thought today we'd just do a fantastic little painting that's very easy, and I think you'll enjoy it. So let's start out and have them run all the colors right across the screen there that you'll need to paint along with us. While they're doing that, let me show you what I've got done up here already. I have my standard old pre-stretched double prime canvas, and I've taken a little bit of black gesso and, and just actually used a paper towel here and just sort of put in a basic shape. You can use a paper towel or a sponge or a foam brush works well. I thought maybe today we'd have a little river that's coming around here, and I want to show the indication of little stones under the water. So I took a little bit of white gesso and black gesso and mixed it together to make a nice gray gesso, an old filbert brush, and I just made the indication here of a lot of little stones, just very quickly, blah, 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 blah. Let all that dry completely. Then we've covered all the dark area here, all across the bottom with liquid clear. The top, we put a little bit of liquid white on like we normally would. But the big thing is here, let the black gesso dry completely all this dry completely before you put the clear and the white on. That's the reason we had to do it before the show started. And with that, let's take our old two inch brush, go right into the thalo blue, and let's just put a happy little sky in this painting. We'll just put a little blue in the brush, go right up here, and just begin making little crisscross strokes. Let's just make a gorgeous little painting out of this. One, this, one that'll just make you feel good. Maybe we'll Maybe we'll have some big clouds in the sky. So I tell you what, let's just leave some areas open here where maybe this, maybe the old clouds will live. There. I don't know exactly where they'll be, but somewhere in here. So we'll just leave some open areas, some, some holes in the sky. Something about like that. A little more color. And let's go right over in here, put a little bit right in there between those going to be some big trees in here. Now then, I'm going to take a little bit of the midnight black, a little Prussian blue. I'm going to just darken the, darken the corners here a little bit. Just to, just to make it a little more attractive when it's finished. Okay, over in the other corner, we'll do the same thing. Something about like that. And that's really all we need. Now then, very gently here, I'll just sort of blend this together to get rid of any any harsh edges, then we'll come back and we'll put in some clouds. There we 
are. Okay. And then the most fun part of all, let's wash the old brush. <laughs> I just like to, I like to wash this brush. It's a lot of fun. There we go, shake off the excess. <laughs> and just beat the devil out of it. There. Now then, I'm gonna go into a small, very small amount of the alizarin crimson. Just a very small amount. I want these clouds to have a little, little pinkish hue to them. So we'll take a little of that crimson, go right up in here, and very lightly, in this area, I'm just gonna put a little crimson, just so it'll show through when we put the clouds in. There, something about like that. Okay. Now then, shoot, we'll just use that old big brush. It's working pretty good for us. We'll tap in a little titanium white, and let's start up in here, and just begin putting in some basic cloud shapes. Just titanium white, that's all we're using here. Because we already had some crimson on the brush, we have blue and crimson already on the canvas, and it's continually, continually gonna mix. So automatically, you're gonna get all kinds of little variations anyway. There. We'll just sort of blend that layer out, blend out the base of them, fluff them a little bit, just a little, and very lightly, very lightly, just go over them just to sort of blend them all together. Go back into our white, and maybe there's another little layer here. But work on one layer of clouds at a time. Don't get greedy. <laughs> Sometimes it gets, it gets working good, and it feels good, and you just get carried away. Do one little layer at a time. Now then, let's take that one. Let's just, just blend it out here on the bottom. Just blend it out, then we'll fluff it a little bit. There. And see, there's a little separation between them. A little bit more white, maybe. Yep. Right there we have just another happy little cloud. They just float around here and have a good time all day. Good time. There we go. I think you're gonna enjoy this painting. The, the black gesso and, and then the use of some colored gessos and liquid clear makes beautiful, beautiful effects. We've tried to We've tried to devote a large part of this series to showing that because I've had so many cards and letters from people asking about it. So I think you're going to enjoy this one. I have some, I have some good ideas here. We'll just see if we can pull them off. There. Maybe the little cloud just floats right along in here. I don't know where he lives. But we have a huge big cloud that lives in our, in our world already. Shoot, I'm, maybe there's a little over in here too, if you can see. Maybe he's just a little soft cloud. Now then, I'm gonna fluff that, and very lightly, three hairs and some air, just blend the entire canvas. Isn't that easy? We got some pretty good old clouds there. Some of the edges you can just, you can just fuzz them out and let them just float around, because you don't, you don't always see the entire cloud. It just sort of gets soft and just sort of floats around. There. Now then, shoot, let's have some fun. Maybe back here in the background, take some black, blue, little brown, little crimson, Prussian blue. Now, I don't want this to be very dark, so I'm gonna take some white and mix in there. I'm gonna paint a little mountain. I think it lives wee, wee back in the distance, far away. I want just a color about like that our little roll of paint. Then let's go up in here and decide, maybe we have a little mountain. Yep, lives right in there. Just wherever you want him to live. Put a little bump here and a little bump there. Here, bump, there, bump. Wherever you want him. There. These are far, far away mountains. So we don't want them to get too big or too bright. They're far away. Far away. Now we take our old two inch brush, just like we normally do when we paint mountains, and just pull that down. Just pull it down like so. Something about like that. Okay. Let's take a little bit of the titanium white, pull it out as flat as we can get it, and really get tough with it. And go down. There we go. Cut across. 
you get that little roll of paint. You want to do that again so you can see it? Pull it out flat. Just cut across. See that little roll of paint? It lives right on the edge of the knife. That's all there is to it. Flat, cut across. Okay. Then with that, let's put some nice little highlights and shadows on here. All kinds of little things. This is just a little baby mountain. It lives way, way back here in the distance. A little bit right in there, wherever you want them. See there? No pressure. Absolutely no pressure, though. Just pretend you're a whisper floating through there, just barely caressing the mountain. Take a little blue, a little blue and white. A little blue and white. Mix it together. Cut off our little roll of paint again. Then we can go up in here and we can just begin laying in the indication of all kinds of little shadows that we back here. There we go. Maybe this one comes too, right on through. Push that other one right back into the distance. There we go. A little bit of shadow in there. So you can just sneak right in, put it in. Give the indication of a little, little mountain that lives there. There. You can add all kinds of little details. Don't want too many details though, because we want these mountains to be far away. Put too much detail in them, they'll begin to look too close to you. We don't want that. We want to keep them back here in the distance. Stay back, mountains. There. Now, take a clean, very dry, two inch brush. And just tap the base of it. I want to create mist down here at the base. So it'll be far away, far away. There we go. See, he lives way back in the distance back here now. Now then, let's take, I work pretty good. We just keep going here. We take a little crimson, a little white, a little bit of thalo blue. Gonna make sort of a lavendery color. We use a two inch brush. Just tap a little of that right in there and, and push it. So you just give it, shove it, uh, 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 like that. Okay, let's go up in here. And with that, maybe back here there lives a little footy hill. Just a little foothill, way back in the distance. Just tap. Put in a basic shape. Then I'm going to, using very short little strokes, lift upward. Make it look like little distant trees far away. Far away. They live way back here. A little more of the same colors put together because I want another one and we're going to make it a little darker. That way it'll indicate that it's closer to us in the landscape. As you know, as things get closer to us, they get darker in value. So we'll use the same color, only darker. And maybe, yep, you're right. I like to put several layers sometimes in these little foothills because it, it helps with that illusion of distance again. And I think it's so important in a painting. We just push that mountain back another five miles, maybe. We don't know. But it lives way back here now, far away. Far away. Isn't it neat that you can push mountains around? You can do that. <laughs> you can do that. All right. Maybe we'll put some nice trees right in here. And for that, let's use, let's use, clean off a spot to work. Black, Prussian blue. Alizarin crimson, phthalo green. I like phthalo green in trees sometimes. There we go. Nice dark color. Let me wipe off the old knife. And maybe today we'll, let's use the old fan brush. What the heck? Load a lot of color in there. A lot of paint. We're gonna put, we're gonna put, maybe there's some evergreens that live right here. You have to make a big determination. Some of them are about that tall, some are short, some are big, some are little. There we go. A little mountain reminds me we were, we were in Mexico City here a while back and there was gorgeous mountains around Mexico City. Popo and all kinds of mountains. They are gorgeous. And until I went there, I never realized Mexico had so many mountains. And, you know, our, our program is playing in Mexico and many, many other foreign countries now. And I, I want to share with you some of our instructors there and some of the fantastic things they're doing. I've got a couple of photographs here. 
first of all, let me show you this. They, they took us out on a boat to the floating gardens to paint the floating gardens. And this was Bob here getting ready to go out on a, on a beautiful boat. They had really decorated it nice. And it was a lot of fun out there. And here's Annette with some of her instructors. And, and that fuzzy haired guy thanks me. And good looking gal there on the right is Lulu. And, and the other young lady's a good friend of mine. Her father works with us. There. I'm just, I'm just putting in little trees while you're watching this. Here's Annette with some of her instructors. We have certified instructors in Mexico now that are, oh, they're doing gorgeous paintings. Just gorgeous. And they can really paint. Annette has really, really done a fantastic job working with them. And now they're sharing the joy of painting with many, many people all over Mexico. And we, we really thank them for that. It's a lot of fun. There. I'm going to get to go to Mexico again very soon and spend some time with some of the most fantastic friends there. Mm. See there? But we're just putting in all kinds of little trees. That also helps give the illusion that those mountains live much farther back. We just keep pushing things farther and farther back in this painting. There we go. There. See there? But all we're doing here is just tapping downward, real easy. Sometimes you can pick out a little tree or two and just give it a little sideward pull that makes it look like little limbs sticking out. I wouldn't do it to all of them because they're too far away. Too far away and you'll earn that illusion of distance. But a few here and there makes it sort of interesting. All right. And then. Okay, let's have some fun. Let me find a clean brush. There's one. I got several old brushes going, so I don't have to spend every minute of my time just washing brushes, because it's, it's the fun part. Take a little bit of phthalo blue here. Now then, let's take this phthalo blue. It's very transparent, and paint right over the top, because we have liquid clear here, so it's slick and wet, and we can do that. Let's paint right over the top of the water. Watch what happens. Watch what happens. Isn't that fantastic? All of a sudden, we can see through the water. We can see right through the water. But you have to use a transparent paint. And phthalo blue, Prussian blue, both are very transparent. There we go. See there? Isn't that sneaky? <laughs> I used to work so hard to try to, to create the illusion of rocks and stones underwater. Now, we put a few ripples on here, it'll look even better. But that easy. That's really all you have to do. All you have to do. Okay. Boy, that's a gorgeous looking little streamer. I might take a least little touch of phthalo green too and add in there. Okay. Now then, maybe in our world, wipe off the old fan brush here. It's got some of that dark tree color and I'm going to yellow. And maybe in our world here, we have a little bit of nice green, little grassy areas that grow back here. Okay, so let's go up in here. And we can do that by just deciding where they live and giving a little upward push. A little upward push. And it goes way back in here. Like that, see? And you can lift it upward if you want to make it look like little bushy things here and there all kinds of little things. And in your world, you create any kind of illusion that you want. Any kind of illusion that you want. Nice little grassy areas here. See there? There they come. That easy, though. Okay. Now maybe we have a little dark sienna, a little white, and with that we'll make a a little brown color, maybe a little more of the dark sand in there. Yeah. And let's come in here, put the indication of some, of some land right under this. See there. Mm. That easy. Maybe it goes way back in here somewhere. I don't know where it goes. This little stream or river, it meanders way back in there. We don't know where it goes. Don't know that we even care. Let's take a little liquid white. Here, I'm going to take a least little touch of phthalo blue and put in it. Just enough to give it a little bluish tone. Not much. 
Not much though, just enough to flavor it good. Cut across, get our little bit of paint right on the edge of the knife. And then let's go up in here and begin putting some water lines right over the top of this transparent water that we made. There. Okay. And maybe this comes out through here. But we can still see through the water. You can see right through it. Shoot, I bet if you look close there, there's a big old trout just floating right down the river. Taking life easy and enjoying it. That certainly is a pretty place to live, I'll tell you that. All right, now then, let's go back to our nice dark color. And we'll have, I'm just putting a little dark paint on there because I'm gonna put some light color on top of it and I want it to stand out. And I want it to mix with that dark color. Don't have to do much because the black gesso is there. I just want enough paint on there so it mixes with the color we're going to put on top. Something like that. Don't even matter if you cover it good. Something about like that. We'll just try that same old brush. We'll go right into the yellow little sap green, little yellow ochre. There. See all those colors. And then just give it a little tap. See, you're just pushing that paint. Push it. That loads a little bit of paint right on the end, edge of the brush. Now we can go up here with that and just touch. We can begin putting all kinds of little grassy areas that live back in here, just by touching. And the more you tap on this, the more it's going to mix with that color that's underneath. That's the reason we put it under there. And it'll get darker and darker and darker. There, see? Now, that's the area. This is going to be a big tree right here. That's the area behind the tree. Now we can take some dark color, and we have to make our first major decision in the tree business. Where does our big old tree live? Well, we put some black gesso up here so we know basically where it's going to be. There. And I don't cover all those black gesso things. See, there's some of them showing through over here. And when the painting's all done, people will actually see foliage that's behind the tree. And they'll, they'll go crazy trying to figure out how you did that. And that's our secret. There we go. That's our secret. But you can share it with everybody if you like. That may be the most fun of painting is when you share it with other people. I get letters every day from people that, that have started painting from watching this show and they, they did a painting for a friend or a relative and let them watch them do the painting. And, and the friends, they absolutely, if they hadn't seen it, could not believe that they're doing it. And they are. In our newsletter, we just, we just showed the picture of a lady who's in her 90s, who's painting now. And she's doing a fantastic job. This is just a little brown and white. Just want to put the indication here and there, and there and here, wherever, of a few little trunks. I'm going to put some leaves on here, and we're probably going to lose most of those. But if some of them show through, that's wonderful. All right, dip the little oval brush right into some liquid white. We'll go into a little cad yellow, a little sap green, yellow ochre, Indian yellow, all those colors. Push that little brush to load it. Give it a little push. OK, let's go up in here. Now let's put some gorgeous little leaves up here. This little oval brush does some of the neatest leaves they just literally just, just almost fall off your brush. There they go. Something about like that. But think about shape and form. Don't just throw them on at random. I know I say that every time I use any brush to do leaves, but that's so important. Think about shape and form. Got to give this old tree some character. There. Down here, we let him get darker and darker and darker. We need those dark shadows down at the bottom to give him depth. There, a little bit over in here. But doesn't that make some beautiful shapes for your trees? And it almost happens automatically. Almost automatic. A little oval brush is really neat. All right. Shoot, let me find the old brush we were making 
some grassy areas with and we'll just start bringing them right on down. These are in front there. So there we are. Let's keep on coming down with those. And you can really practice a little with this and you can make grass. It's just, it looks like velvet nearly laying up there. Maybe in our world, this is a nice little bush. It lives right here under the tree. So we'll put some nice leaves on him, just using the corner of the old two inch brush. It doesn't matter. Whatever brush makes, makes you happy. There. Now nah, then, a little bit more of the dark color. I see another bush lives right there. Once again, I'll leave some of that black gesso behind there and let it show through. Because that'll make it, make it look real neat. Back to our little oval brush, put a few little highlights on that little, little baby tree there. Little baby tree. But he'll grow up to be a big tree. He just needs a lot of water and sunshine, love, affection. Same as all of us. There. Something about like so. Back to our brush, it has some nice little color on it here. and we'll We'll just continue on making all kind of little grassy areas. I know what we need. Take a little brown. We need some dirt out here. So we just use a little brown here and there. A little brown and white for some touch of highlight. I don't want a lot of highlight on this. Maybe just a little. Don't want to distract from the water. The water is what's important in this painting. Just a little. There we go. There. See, something like so. Just keep tapping that in there. Okay. And as I say, the more you tap this, the softer it'll become. It'll get so neat. Just layer after layer after layer, wherever you think it should live. Bring some right down in here. All right, let me wash this old oval brush. I'm gonna take and go, ah, shake off the excess, go right through some Van Dyke brown with it, get it loaded with color. And then the other side, a little more paint thinner. It needs to be thin. Take a little white and brown on the other side. Maybe even a little black on the dark side. So one side we have full of light color, the other we have full of dark. And let's just go right up in here and maybe, maybe there's some big rocks that live around here. See them? You can make them in one stroke, a little black, brown, a little white. Put these little stones and rocks wherever you think they should live. Something like so, wherever. Okay. A little bit of liquid white, put a little water line right around these stones. Look at there. Isn't that neat though? Try this idea with putting rocks under water. Just see what kind of things that you can come up with. You'll be amazed at what, what'll happen with just a little bit of practice. Do it with all colors of different, different colors under here with gesso and a little acrylic paint. And I think you'll be very satisfied with the effect that you get. Okay. Scratch a few sticks and twigs here and there. I think we're about to a finished painting. Hope you like this one. It's a little different than anything we've done before. Give you a whole new idea to work with. And from all of us here, I'd like to wish you a happy painting. And God bless, my friend. Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join us today. I thought today maybe we'd do a very nice little seascape. I've got a lot of letters from people asking me, for a simple little seascape that anyone can do. So I thought we'd do that today. Let's start out and have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us. While they're doing that, let me show you what I've got done up here. For this, I have my standard old canvas. I use an 18 by 24 inch pre-stretched double prime canvas, but you use whatever size you want. I took a piece of contact paper and cut an oval out. Now, I, to cut the oval out, you can use something like an X-Acto knife or a pair of scissors, it doesn't matter. Stuck the oval onto the canvas, covered the inside with black gesso. Just totally covered it with black gesso. Allowed that to dry completely. Now on top of that, on the sky up here, I've taken Prussian blue and black. 
I think I'll make a stormy looking sea today, so I want something very dark and very moody. Just Prussian blue and black and covered the entire top. On the bottom, I've used a little bit of black, sap green, and Prussian blue. So on the bottom, I just put a little bit of sap green, otherwise it's the same as the top. So you could do the whole thing, add a little sap green at the bottom, just to give it a little watery feel. And with that, let's just start off and have some fun. Take off today with the old two inch brush and a little bit, just a small amount of titanium white. We don't need much paint, not much, just a little. Just old titanium white. And let's go right up in here. And now with that, let's just put in some basic little, little cloud things that are happening up here. And I'm just using the corner of the brush and just making like little, little X's. Just sort of let the brush play and just have fun up here. See, it takes very little paint though, very little, because we have the color underneath. When you touch it with white, that color comes alive. Just absolutely comes alive. There. And we just sort of have to think and make up in our mind where, where does our big old clouds live? These are big old fluffy, mm, big old tough clouds, storm clouds maybe. And we just sort of dance them in here and there and there and here, wherever you think they should be. There. See, it's very, very easy to do this. Very easy. Maybe there's another big old cloud that lives right here. You can tap in a few, use just the corner making X's. Any way that you sort of get an effect that you're looking for. There. Then we're going to come back and we're going to blend all of these. So even these areas that are very dark will end up with a little bit of paint in them. This black canvases are so fantastic because it allows you to make effects that, oh, they, they're almost unreal and they're easy to do. Very easy to do. There we go. And maybe a little color right in here. Now then, let me wash the old brush. <laughs> if you've painted with me before. You know, that's really the fun part of this whole technique, is just washing the brush. So we'll scrub the old brush with odorless paint thinner. Shake off the excess. <laughs> and just beat the devil out of it. Now, be sure your brush is as dry as you can get it. And then we can go up here and very lightly just begin blending this. Now you can blend it to any degree of darkness that you want. In other words, the more that you blend it, it's going to mix with the color that's already on the canvas and it'll get darker and darker and darker. And you can always go back and add a little more of the white and we may do that just to highlight some of the clouds. So don't worry about it. As you know, we don't make mistakes. We just have happy accidents sometimes. And by that, we just mean that, that very soon you begin to, to be able to work with anything that happens. Anything that happens and you can turn it into something that's exciting and wonderful. There's nothing bad that happens on this canvas. The absolute worst thing that could happen is that you take the paint off that you put on, reuse the canvas and do the painting over. But even then, you've still learned. And any time that you learn from practice, it's not wasted. All right, I just use the same old brush. I'm gonna, I want to add a little more white. I think we're going to brighten up our clouds a little. And as I say, in your world, you make them as bright or as dull as you want them. It's up to you. Up to you, depending on the mood that you want. There. Just the corner of the brush and just little tiny things like that. See there? For the purposes of TV, I think maybe we'll make them a little bit brighter so you can see them better. But maybe when you do yours, you just want very quiet little gentle clouds. I have several brushes here. I'm gonna grab another one that's nice and clean and dry so I can just blend that out a little. There we go. <clears throat> Maybe, yep, you're right. We'll do this one here a little bit too. But this is one of the simplest, easiest ways that I have ever found to make very effective little clouds. And it works. That's what's so important. It works. There. But just think about little things that are floating around here in the clouds and just, just put them in. Just put them in. I'm going back to the clean brush. Like that. And very lightly, just blend it a little. Just blend it a little. I don't want to blend it too much. I just don't want it to go away. There. 
And you can do this, as I say, as many times as you desire. Some people want clouds that are very distinct. It's easy to do. You just do this as many times as you want till it gets there. Till it gets to where you want it. Mm. Well, that's a mean looking old cloud there. That's one of them old clouds that'll bring you a thunderstorm in a heartbeat. All right. I live in Florida right close to Mickey Mouse's house and we have a lot of thunderstorms sometimes. Especially in the summer. There's a, there's a period there where almost every day we have a fantastic thunderstorm. I sort of like them because it has a beautiful sound to it. And when it's over, everything is clean and fresh and beautiful again. It's like God sort of washes the whole landscape. There. Okay. With that easy, we have a pretty nice little sky. Some nice clouds, no problem at all. And as I say, even if you've never painted, this is one that you can do. Now here, I had just a piece of old masking tape because it, it helps me have a nice straight line across there. That's the only reason I have it on there. So we'll just take it off and we have a very straight horizon now. And with that, we can begin to really play. Let me wash the brush. It's been a while. I just like to wash it. There we go. We're in business now. Now then, where we had that piece of tape, might need to add just a little bit of color. So we'll take a little sap green, a little black and blue. And we'll just bring that color right up, right up there. Something like that. I know you probably can't see that, because I can't either. But we know now that there's paint all the way up to that line. All right. Now then, let's use the old filbert brush a little bit. Put a little bit of titanium white on it. And let's just sort of lay out our basic wave shape. This is one of the easiest ways that I've ever found to sort of lay out your wave so you know where it's gonna go. Just take a little paint, because it doesn't matter. Anything you don't like, you can just wipe it out and lay out a basic wave shape here. Maybe the old wave comes over like that, goes off, and back in here, back in here, there's a, another old wave, wherever you want them. And back in here, we'll just have little ones. See, and that wave will crash over in that direction. Does that help? We just sort of put a little line in there so it, it helps you see how the water is going to go. But that easy. Now then, wash the old filbert brush up. I'm going to grab, maybe today I'll use a number three fan brush. Sometimes I use a three, sometimes a six, whatever happens to be available. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Now then, a little bit of white paint on it. Pick up a little touch of blue and put in there. There. All right. Now then, let's start way back in here and just touch. And let me exaggerate, I'm doing a rocking motion. Think about water, to do, to do, do like that. Now I'm really exaggerating because I'm doing it very small. Something about like so. See there? And automatically, that'll begin to create the illusion of little things that are happening back there. Right. Now, if this is going to be our wave, just take and go zoop, with, right across like that. There. And with, while we have paint on the brush, we'll bring this right on down, and over, like that. All right. Now then, wipe all the excess paint you can get off the brush. Or you could even wash it and start with a fresh brush. Now then, I want to take this color that we put right on the edge here and begin blending it back very gently, very lightly. Just begin blending it back. Trying to preserve a dark area right in there. Just trying to preserve that. That's your good friend. See there? And those dark areas will end up being your waves. There they come. Something about like that. And we'll come back with a liner brush and we'll put all kinds of little details in there. But this is just an extremely, extremely simple way of making a very effective little wave. Very effective. Because seascapes sometimes can give you, they can give you a little problem or two. 
they're not the easiest thing in the world to paint. So we try to simplify it to where anybody can do it, even on their first attempt. I'm going to take a little of the cad yellow, a little bit of white, just mix it on the filbert brush right there, like that. Okay, let's go up in here. Now, everybody likes to have this wave where the light's coming through. Some people call that the eye of the wave. So we'll take this and scrub it in. Just really get in there and scrub it in. Just really work it. Let it just get darker and darker and darker as it works out like that. Okay, that's really about all there is to it. And you can make this as bright as you want it, the same as you did the clouds, by just cleaning the brush, going back and adding more and more color. Now then, we'll take a very clean, dry brush, and using just the tippy top bristles, I'm just going to wiggle it. I'm really wiggling the handle more than I am the bristles. See, just, the handle's going around and around, but the bristles stay right there. Can you see that good? There. And that's all we're doing. And you can turn this into, to, it's so smooth, it's almost unbelievable. And then just work outward. Outward, outward. There. I don't want this to get too bright in this particular painting because in my world I think this is a this is sort of a, like a storm coming. It's it's getting pretty rough out here. So there wouldn't be a great deal of light coming through here. But if you want to have more, please, please feel free to do it. We're not trying to teach you to copy here. We're only trying to teach you a technique and, and turn you loose on the world. Because as I've said before, we all see nature through different eyes. And we all have different interpretations of what things look like. And that may truly, may truly be the joy of painting, is that you do your thing. You paint your world the way that you see it and the way that you want it on canvas. There, because art is a very, very individual thing. We all have different ideas of what we want. And they're all good. There's no good or bad. It's just, does it make you happy? I have still number three fan brush since it was handy and dirty. Load it with a white paint. Now then, this is the fun part. Let's think about the water just crashing over. Make little sounds. Just make little sounds. See? There. There it comes. Just think about how it crashes over. This old wave has traveled a long way. And it finally got here at the shore. And now it's crashing over. It's going to create a lot of foam. Makes a beautiful sound. Beautiful sound. There. Something about like that is all we need for now. Now we'll take a filbert brush and take a little bit of black, a little bit of the Prussian blue, and a touch of white. There we go. So I'm making sort of a, I'm going to put some lizard and crimson there too. I want that to be more of a, ooh, that's nice, more of a lavender type color. But lavender to the blue side. Okay, let's go up in here. Now then, we'll take this brush and let's put the shadow. We're putting the shadow in first for the foam. There it comes. Oh, water's turning and crashing and churning. And, oh, it's just having a ball back here. Mm. There. All right. I have two filbert brushes going here, so I can sort of work back and forth without having to stop and clean them each time. They're not as much fun to clean as the big brushes, so we'll just, we'll have a couple of them. Something about like that. Now then, we can go right up to the top of that shadow, and we can put the indication in here of some, some nice foam. Each time you load your brush, wipe it off, get it nice and clean, or at least wipe off the excess paint. Then go back and reload it. There. Wiping it. A little bit more paint. Then we can come back with fresh paint and just keep right on splashing here. Just sort of tapers off into nothing. Shoot. Oh, we got that. Maybe there's, maybe back in here, some little splashes that are happening. This is pretty rough water, so we need some little, some little doers that are going on back in here. Who knows, who knows, maybe there's even a little bit in here. Not as much, not as strong, because we want the center of interest to still be in here. There, now, good dry two inch brush, or you could use a one inch brush for this if you're a little more comfortable with it, makes no difference. And 
once again, we want to blend this together so it's as soft as silk, just like so. There. Something about like it. And I beat the brush just to knock off excess paint. And sometimes in our world, we'll take a little Van Dyke brown, a little, little bit of the dark sienna, maybe even a little black, mix them together. Maybe in our world, we back, we, we back in the background, let's go up here. Maybe there's a little headland up here. You know, just a little projection of land that comes out into the water. Something about like so. It's very dark, it's very far away. But we can still make it out back here. And take a little bit of white and put in there to make a little highlight, same color, I'm just adding a little white to it. So here and there we can see just a little indication of things that are going on. There. Like that. Now we have to wash the old brush. Go back to our white paint, pick up a little, and now I'm gonna just, just splash a little water right up here on this headland. There, something about like so. Maybe you can even see a little ch here and there. See, it's really splashing right there. Maybe there's some big rocks in the water, we don't know. Just makes it very interesting and very pretty. Now then, going back to the old filbert. I, I like the old filbert today. It doesn't matter, you can use anything. And we can begin putting in the indication here of all kinds of little foam patterns and this water's churning pretty hard here. So we're gonna have a lot of little things that are going on. There. Now this is where you really bring your little seascape together. All of these little things that are happening. There we go. So I say this is a very, very simple little seascape. This is one I'd recommend when you first start. And as you work farther and farther, you can do seascapes that, my gosh, you won't even believe. But this is a good way to get started, to get a feel for it. Just to get a feel for it. There we go. We have so many fantastic people all over the country that are painting, they're painting scenes that they never believed possible. <laughs> and maybe more interesting is their family and friends didn't believe they could ever do it. That's nice when I've got letters from, from young friends' mothers that said, my son or daughter is painting, and they're doing paintings that I can't hardly believe, and they've never had any lessons other than watching the show on television. And from that, they become very interested in art. They begin to experience a little success. And as you probably know, nothing in the world breeds success like success. So if you have a few good experiences with painting, then you, then you sort of get hooked on it. So try these paintings that aren't too difficult at first. Become comfortable with them. And then as you become comfortable, go into more difficult things. I've taken a little bit of paint thinner, mixed it with some titanium white and a little bit of the Prussian blue. Have the liner brush, very thin paint. Fill the bristles full. Let's go up in here. Now we can come back and begin putting the, the icing on the cake. You can just put all these little things in here. This is what gives your, your painting character. It looks like a lot of detail in it. And if you have time, you can sit and do this and make all kinds of gorgeous effects. Gorgeous, gorgeous effects. And this is really what will make your seascape special. Very, very special. There. See there? Just little things that are happening where the water is splashing and playing and having fun. But we're using that same stroke, sort of a rocking stroke. Now you have sort of a weird angle here and it looks a little strange. But it'll look right for you. By the weird angle, I mean the camera gives it a little angle. This looks a little higher than it really is. All right. And we can bring things all down through here put details in, in the water. There. As you paint more and more seascapes, spend more time studying foam patterns. That may be the hardest part of painting seascapes. These little foam patterns here, though, are what make or break a seascape. These are just dropped in very easily. 
But as you paint more, you'll want to put more and more detail into them. There we go. You can get carried away with this and just make some of the most gorgeous scenes. There. Maybe something about my cat. Sometimes it's nice to take the least little touch of that white we had with a little bit of yellow in it and thin it down. Thin it down with a little paint thinner. And you can come back and just highlight this just to, just to make it sparkle a little. Don't overdo. This is too dark of a painting for this to be real bright. Now then. Also another thing that can be done that's very easy. Find old filbert here that's half clean. You can take that dark color, some blue and black, a little green. And you can come back up in here with the filbert and you can literally just punch holes in the foam. See? Can just punch holes in it wherever you think it should be. So it looks like there's openings in there. So if you get a little, little more foam pattern here than you want, just go back and punch a hole here and there. That's all. That's all. No big deal. As I said earlier, we don't make mistakes. We just have happy accidents. Now then, I'm going to take the contact paper off and let's see what we have here. So this is the moment of truth. So let's just grab it, pull it off. And that doesn't make too bad of a little seascape for your first time or if you're just beginning to paint. It's a nice little seascape. But you know me, I don't ever leave well enough alone. So tell you what, let's do. <laughs> let's take a little black, a little bit of the Van Dyke Brown, mix it together here. And maybe in our world, shoot, that's too nice to leave alone. I gotta have a big tree that lives right there. Be brave. This is your bravery test after you work so hard to, to create a beautiful little seascape. Then this crazy guy tells you to, to drag a tree right through it. You know what's worse? The only thing worse than one tree is two trees. So let's be brave. Let's be brave because we can do anything, anything on this piece of canvas. Anything. A little sap green right into that same color. I'm going to put a little base color in here. I need something for my little trees to set on. They're sort of just hanging out here in space. So, same color with a little sap green in it, just to give it some dark so our light will show. Shoot, let's take, I'll use that little fan brush. I'm going to take it, a little dark sienna in it, and black, but mostly black. I want this to be sort of a gray color with just an indication of a little dark sienna in it. So, now, we can just go up here and touch Give it sort of a little round pull. Just touch. Don't want this to be too bright because we have a pretty dark sky here. Pretty old dark sky. Just enough to show a little indication of light on this old tree. That's how we sort of separate them. But when you do this, pull it sort of round. By round, I mean like that. And once again, I'm exaggerating but it'll give the tree sort of a round effect. Okay, see how easy that is? And then, let's take some paint thinner, and I'm gonna go right into the midnight black. I want a lot of black color, but I want it to be very, very thin. Very thin, because you know our golden rule, a thin paint will stick to a thick paint. I've got paint all the way up, halfway up the handle of the brush here, but that's all right. <laughs> it's all right but the paint is very thin. And maybe there's some old palm leaves laying out here and blowing in the wind. This is the easiest way I've ever found of making them. Just use a very thin paint, figure out basically where you want them to be, and then just give them a little pull. Something like so. There. What old palm trees had a rough time, hadn't they? Where I live, there's a lot of palm trees. They're gorgeous, gorgeous trees. I like them. There, maybe that's just a little rascal's hanging up here. He's trying to make it. The wind's sort of blowing him around today, but he's doing all right. We'll have a big one out here. Maybe he goes clean off the canvas, who knows? It's your world, so you make it any way that you want it. Another one out here. There's another one coming out through here, out 
through there, wherever. These are going to be mainly silhouettes. Mainly so little sap green, little white. And here and there, you can just put the indication of a little, I don't want much. It's going to burn that illusion of darkness. All right. Grab another fan brush. Take a little yellow, a little sap green. Put it right in here. Pretty dark. And let's put some little grassy areas down here at the foot. Pretty dark green color. A little dark sienna in it once in a while. Just to do like that. We can take a liner brush, a little bit of color, put in a few little, little things that hang like that, just to bring it together. And I think we have a nice little seascape done. It's very simple. I hope you try it, because this one will work for me. From all of us here, I'd like to wish you happy painting, and God bless, my friend. Hi, certainly glad you could join us today. I thought today we'd just do a fun little painting. So let's start out and have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us. While they're doing that, let me show you what I got going up here. Standard old 18 by 24 inch pre-stretched canvas, but you use whatever size is convenient. Today I've taken and I put a little bit of uh, just masking tape around the edges underneath here, and I covered the edges with a little bit of black gesso. Then I've just got some paper here to keep to keep from painting on the black gesso. And we pull that out, we'll have a black border that goes all the way around this painting. Inside here, I've just covered the entire canvas with a very thin, even coat of the liquid white, as we normally do. And from there, let's just make something that's bright and shiny, has a lot of color. It's a fantastic day here, and I hope it is wherever you're at. So let's start. Let's start today. Maybe we'll lose just a touch of the Indian yellow. That's a very bright, nice yellow. A little bit on the two-inch brush. And let's do something that looks like, a, let's go right up here, something that looks like maybe a big sun shining through there. I don't know. Let's just start off and have some fun. There. Now, if you can do that, you can paint the rest of this painting. So all there is to it. We'll go right into, without cleaning the brush, a little bit of, of cad yellow. And we'll just put that right around the edge. Next color I'll use, little yellow ochre. I'm not cleaning the brush in between these colors because I want them to mix anyway. Just a little yellow ochre. There we go. Now then. And then I'm sort of putting this on with little crisscross strokes because it gives you little fuzzy edges that are much easier to blend together than old harsh line. Something like that. Now then, I'm going to mix up an orange. And for that, I'll use a little cad yellow, a little of the bright red. I want to make a nice orange color. Something like so. Let me clean off the old knife. We just wipe the knife on a paper towel. Still haven't cleaned the brush. I'm going to go right into that nice orange color and just bring it right on around. Whew, this is going to be a firecracker. There. I like these nice colors. You can, if you do a painting with these colors, I tell you, it will certainly brighten up a dull room. Mm. There we go. Something about like that. All right, still haven't cleaned the brush. And we're just allowing these colors to blend together over here on the edges. Okay, just straight, straight bright red. Now we're gonna get, we're gonna get into some beautiful colors. Right there. And see, we have color on the brush and we have color on the canvas and there's liquid white under all of it. So it's continually mixing. None of it's gonna end up as pure color. Okay, now then. Still without cleaning the brush. Go into dark sienna. Still haven't cleaned the brush. And we'll just bring that right around the edge. Right around the edge, just like so. Just plain old dark sienna. Something about like that. But once again, these little crisscross strokes certainly make blending much, much easier. A little more of the dark sienna, put right up in here. Don't want that little corner left out. Okay. And we have a little hole left in the sky up there. We'll use just straight old Van Dyke Brown right in there. All right. And that's basically all we're gonna put in the sky as far as color goes. Now then, let's do the most fun thing in the whole technique, wash the old brush. That's 
That's really where you take out your frustrations and your hostilities. Shake off the excess paint thinner. <laughs> and just beat the devil out of it. There we go. Now I'm just going to take a clean brush, dry as I can get it, and begin blending this. Just blend it, blend it, blend it, blend it. You want to blend it until you can't tell where one color starts and the next color stops. Just work it and work it and work it. And when you're doing this, I would recommend that you sort of step back from your canvas and take a look-see every once in a while. When you're as close to it as I am, it's very difficult to tell what something looks like. Step back and take a look-see. There. And then you can really tell what you have in your world. Okay. Now then, I think I'll wash the brush again. I just look for excuses to wash the old brush. Now, I want this to be even brighter. So I say it's a fantastic day and everybody here is feeling good and I think we'll just, we'll just make something that's, oh, it's shiny. So I'm gonna take straight titanium white, start right here in the light area and begin blending outward. It'll mix with all those beautiful colors and it'll come brighter and brighter. And you can do this several times, several times. I recommend you at least wipe your brush between each color or even better, clean it. In the sake of time here, I'm just going back and not cleaning it, but I am wiping it in between. There we go. But boy, that rascal will shine now. Look at that. And we'll just go across to sort of take out the brush strokes and just blend everything together. Something about like that. Okay, down here, I'm gonna have some water. You know me, I, I love water. So we'll just take a little yellow and put right in here. A little cad yellow, a little, a little touch of the yellow ochre. Just reflect a little of that color into the water. A little of the bright red. Doesn't much matter. There, maybe even a little little touch of the dark sienna. Just the basic colors that we had in the sky. A little more of the dark sienna right there. Something about like that. And a little bit of Van Dyke. The Van Dyke brown will makes the edges darker. Helps, helps lead the eye into the light area. Okay. Now then, wash the old brush again, and we can blend that out. This is a good one. If nothing else, it'll teach you how to wash the brush. There. <laughs> I must admit, I just, I just really like to do that. There we go. Okay, now we'll just blend it out a little bit. And as we decide what's in the foreground here, then we can, we can add or subtract. Doesn't matter. Right at this point, we're just we're just worried about a sky and putting some color down here where we know water is going to be. All right. I guess now we have to start making some big decisions in our world. Maybe let me find a little fan brush. Maybe we back in the background here. Let's take a little bit of dark sienna, put a little white in it, a little white in it. Maybe the least little touch of the bright red. Something like so. Just make a nice color like that. Let me wipe off the knife. There. And we'll put a little of that on our little fan brush. Just load it up. You can use number three or the number six fan brush. It doesn't matter. Let's go right up in here. Maybe there's a, well, maybe there's a little, maybe there's a little island back here. What the heck? Make up little, just little ideas, huh? Didn't matter. Just want to show the indication of Something that's far, far away back here. Far away. There. We're not looking for a lot of detail. But now we want to have a reflection, so we'll pull a little bit of that color down, too. Take our old brush, old two-inch brush, grab that, and give it a little downward pull. Zip. Go across. Gives us some instant reflections under there. And take a little bit of the liquid white, put it on the palette. Least little touch least little touch of the bright red into it just to give it a little a little pinkish taste cut across 
get a little bit of paint. It lives right on the edge of the knife there. And we can go up and we'll just cut in a happy little water line. Just a little separator. Just a little separator here. Now if you ever do a water line that you think is too bright, just clean your knife and go back and rub it. And it'll go away. It'll go away. You can rub it till it just totally disappears if you want to. Up to you. That worked pretty good. If it works good, let's do it again. Take that same color, except I'm going to add a little more of the dark sienna and maybe a little Van Dyke brown to it. Want to darken it slightly. As things get closer to you in the landscape, they should get a little darker. Okay. Now, maybe, maybe there's another little, little doer, a little peninsula, whatever. It sticks right out here. This might be, maybe it's the half of another little island. I don't know. Don't know. It's your world. You decide what it is. Just lift upward, make it look like little distant trees and stuff that are growing back here. Pull down. Once again, we need that reflection. If you ever paint a little projection out into the water like this and it doesn't look right, it looks like it's floating on top of the water, way above it, chances are it just needs a reflection underneath it. And that reflection causes it to set down into the water. There. Come across. Once again, our little little reflection. We'll come back in here. Take a little bit of that liquid white that we had. And we'll put another happy little water line right in there. And you could make as many as these little, these little islands or projections or peninsulas, whatever you want to call them, as you want. Or as few. Maybe you don't want any. It's up to you. Up to you. There's total freedom on this canvas. Here you can do anything that you want to do. Anything that you want to do. All right. Shoot. You know what? Maybe there's some more there. It's our world and we can do it if we want to. I'm going to use that same color. Only a little darker. I'm going to put a little lizard and crimson in it now. A little crimson. Ooh, that's nice. I like that color. So it's just basically the two browns, a lizard and crimson, a little white. Let me wipe off the knife. We'll just keep using this old fan brush. It's working pretty good. So if it's working, as my father used to say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. All right, and it's not broke. Let's go back up here. Maybe there's a big group of, big one, like this, only big, it's closer. So we'll use the brush this way and just tap down. You know, I got a little piece of film I want to show you today. It's so fantastic. You know, I love, I love animals and I work with animals all over the country. I'm just going to be doing this while we're looking. And animals have a special affection for children. And my young friends love animals. This is my friend Paul. And he lives right outside of Orlando. And, and his grandmother is Carmen Shaw, who's one of the animal rehab people. This young man, he is so cute. And this little baby raccoon he has here, isn't he precious? Paul and I sat and talked for quite a while, and, and he told me a lot about animals. This, this young fellow, since his grandmother has worked with animals for many years, he's grown up literally around these animals. He knows more about animals probably than I do. And he has a special thing. He's inherited his grandmother's, well, I don't know. I think, I think animals know when people really like them and they trust them and this young fella has that but isn't he cute there see all I'm doing is just putting up some indications here some trees I want a little more detail in these than I had back here so I'm using the brush this way sort of vertical now that I need some mist in there we'll just take a clean brush two inch brush and tap and tap. You could even you could even put a little touch of white paint or a little white with maybe even a little yellow on your brush. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. It's easier to show. Take a little cad yellow, a little white, and you could tap that in to create a to create a nice misty effect back here. See how it looks like mist laying there already? And then gently lift up. It just takes out the little tap marks and sort of blends it together. Now then once again. As you know, 
we want to set in the water, we have to put a little reflection under here. You have to decide where it lives and put a reflection. Go across. There. Isn't that neat? Now I think, I think, let me grab another fan brush. I have several of them going here. I think maybe we need some trees that are even closer. By putting all these layers in your painting, or planes as they're called, it helps create that illusion of depth and distance in your world. I'm just using straight Van Dyke, dark sienna, and alizarin crimson. And we're just mixing them together here, like that. Maybe a little more crimson. I like that little reddish hue. Okay, let me wipe off this old knife. Just clean them off. Now. Once again, back to the old fan brush loaded full of color. A lot of paint. A lot of paint. Don't be afraid of getting too much color in there. Don't think you can do that. Let's go up in here. Maybe in our world there's a big strong tree that lives right there. Notice that this tree is darker in color than the one behind it. So it stands out now. There. There he is. There he is. He lives right there. He's got a friend right there. Even trees need friends. And it's rare that you find just one tree growing in an area. Usually, usually there's several little trees. You know how it goes. Little trees get together and pretty soon there's a whole mess of little trees. That's what makes them wonderful. We'll just let them get a little smaller so it helps create that illusion of going down, downhill there a little bit. Maybe this one's a little bigger. Don't have each one of them progressively getting smaller or progressively getting bigger because trees do not follow the rules like we do. They grow however makes them happy. However makes them happy. It's like a lot of times in art, we're told that you have to have odd numbers of things. Now, artistically, that looks better. There's no question about that. It looks much better. But in nature, nobody ever told the trees that rule. So if you're painting a scene from nature and you want to have an even number of trees, it's your world. You can do whatever you want. There, we just take a little dark, that dark color. Just put the indication here and there of a little trunk. It's the same exact color, but it shows up. A few little trees and stuff. Now then, when we got that old color going, I'm just going to add a little tiny bit of yellow ochre right on there. Just come back in here. And here and there, and there and here, we don't want much. A few little indications of some highlights. I want to keep this dark, real dark, because that's what makes it stand out from what's behind it. Maybe, we just take the old fan brush, that's working pretty good. Maybe there's just a nice little grassy area that lives right underneath the trees. Just push up a little dark color. The dark colors there only so our light will show. You can't have light unless you have dark. Dark is what makes it show. Just like in life, you, you can't you can't appreciate the good times unless you have a few bad ones. That's what makes us appreciate the good times when they happen. There, a few little reflections, go across, something like that. That's all we need. Tell you what, tell you what, maybe in our world, maybe, let me clean off my knife here. Maybe we back in the distance there, I'm gonna use a small knife. Maybe there lives, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna do something else first. Change my mind. And it's our world, we can do that. I wanna put a little highlight on that grassy area. Use a little yellow ochre, a little Indian yellow. Maybe even a little touch of the bright red now and then. See, that flattens it out. Makes it look more like, it's a, like a little flat area. I think that looks a little better, don't you? There. Now then, back to our little knife. Maybe back here in our world, maybe there's just a little tiny, we can see wee back a little tiny house. That's the reason I'm using a small knife. There's his little roof. Don't want a lot of detail, he's too far away. Sets right out of there on the edge of this gorgeous place. We'll put a few little grassy areas right around his foots. 
That's where I want to live. It's right next to that water. I love water. I've always wanted to, to have a home right on the water. And maybe one day I will. There, but just a little highlight on the roof. Just enough to make him sparkle a little bit. Now, I don't want that little house to get lonely. I'll tell you what, maybe come right up in here. Maybe there's one that lives right here, too. He's a little closer, so he'll look a little bigger. There. And we can put as many or as few as we want in our world. Maybe this one's actually out in the water. Maybe he's on stilts. Maybe this is a little fishing village. Maybe we just keep making up things here. We'll have a, we'll have a whole, <laughs> whole group of things. I don't know. You just sort of let these things happen. Okay, want a village? There's another one. How many is in our village? I don't know. I'm just putting in some dark areas. Maybe, shoot, maybe there's another one there. Doesn't matter. Because in your world, you can do anything that you want to do. Just all kinds of little things. We'll take a little white, a little brown, a little, little bit of the lizard crimson, yellow ochre. Just mix them together. I want some, some nice colors. Oh, that's coming out. But I want to leave a marble to it. So when we put little highlights on the roofs. I guess that's the word, roofs. More than one roof. It'll separate them. Just some little, all kinds of little variations going on in there. I'm going to take some white and just black. Just midnight black to make a nice gray color. Maybe some of them are gray up here. Oh, I like that. And we can take the white, the gray, all those colors, just mix them together. Put all kinds of little sides on there. Come back with just a touch of color. Maybe you can make out a little window indication here and there. These are too far away to have a lot of detail, so don't worry about them. Don't worry about them. Maybe we said this, maybe these were on little stilts. So we'll put the indication here and there, some little stilts that they're standing on. See there? It's just indications. Once again, too far away to worry about a great deal of detail. There. Now then, I want to reflect those stilts into the water. So I just grab them, pull them down, and that easy. That easy. Take a little bit of the liquid white and just make a little ripple here and there. Just little ripples. Tell you what, let's get crazy. Maybe right here. Ooh, I'm gonna go right over the top of that. That's all right. We'll just go right over. Maybe there's a bigger one that lives right here. This one's sort of looking more toward us. Something about like that. Come back with our highlight color, put a little edge right there, a little indication there. Come right down in here. There. Maybe there's a little walkway around there. I don't know. Make up little things. If it's out in the water, he's got to have a way to walk around his little building. Maybe there's a little door. How about a little window? We can do that too. It's our world. A little highlight around there. Little, I think there's just a little, few little few little posts that stick down in the water like that. Make them a little longer than, than they actually should be because we're going to pull some of them down and turn it into reflections. See? Choo, choo. Then just go across just enough to wiggle it. Just enough to put some little ripples here and there. Now, let's grab an old one inch brush. I'm going to go into the browns, crimson, little black, whatever. Maybe even a touch of the Prussian blue. Don't want much blue though, just a little blue. Just to darken it. Maybe there's some bushes that live right here. Choo, choo, choo. Just throw them in. At least a little bit of blue now. At least a little bit. All kinds of little things live right there. 
take that same brush, go into some yellow ochre, Indian yellow, cad yellow. Just get some nice yellow. Put a few little highlights on these bushes. I use these colors, a little red too, just because they sort of match the sky and keeps everything together. There. Just a few little bushes live here. Maybe, maybe even there's a few posts out here. Bloop. There's another one, there's one, wherever you want them. Maybe one even over here. There's some old posts that are still hanging around. A little bit of that brown and white. Just touch, give it a little pull, bloop, bloop. Something like so. A little bit of paint thinner. Maybe, maybe there's still indication of some old, maybe there's some wires out here. I don't know. Whatever you'd like for it to be. Most of them are broke down, but there's still a few here and there. There and here. Now we have that old color. You pull up a few old weeds and sticks. There, something like that. Now then, let's see if we can, let's take this off and see what we got. I'm just gonna lay the palette down. I had a little paper here just to keep the black from getting messed up. We'll take that off. And then let's come in here and take off this layer of tape. See, that sort of gives us a, a nice border that goes all the way around the painting. There. Just something like so. This is just plain, ordinary old masking tape. Nothing big. But isn't that neat? I like these little things done like that. Now watch, watch. In our world, there's one more post and it lives right out here. Something like, so I'm gonna let it come right into the white so it shows up good. A Little bit of highlight color, let it just work right around like that. Take our little fan brush, put a little dark right in there so it, a little bit of the yellow ochre, Indian yellow. Put a few little highlights on that rascal. Something about like that, just to make it look like little grassy areas. Back to our liner brush. And let's take maybe this piece of wire here and bring it right on out, just like so. So it looks like it projects right on out of the painting. Isn't that neat? I think you'll like this one. Give it a try. Send me a photo of your attempt. I'd love to see it. From all of us here, I'd like to wish you happy painting. And God bless, my friend. Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join us today. I thought today maybe we'd just do a happy little desert scene, just something that is very calm and peaceful, and I think you'll enjoy it. So let's start out and have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us. While they're doing that, let me show you what I got going up here. Have my standard old pre-stretched double prime canvas, as usual. I use an 18 by 24 inch canvas, but you use any size that's convenient for you. Today I've taken a little contact paper and cut an oval out and stuck it on. After I had the contact paper stuck on there, then I've just taken and covered the inside area here with a very thin coat of liquid white. So the canvas is all wet and slick and ready to go, so let's just do a fun painting today. I thought today we'd start with the old two inch brush. What the heck, big old two inch brush. We'll put a little, little Prussian blue on there and a little black. We'll just mix them together right on the brush. So we have black and blue or blue and black, depending on your preference. There. It's the way I look when I get home late. There we go. All right, let's just go right up in here. And we'll just start like so, just using little X's. I'm holding the brush flat and making little X's. Let me get a little more color on the brush. There. Something about like so, we don't know. Maybe I'll have some long stringy clouds in there, so we'll just leave some areas open. Then we'll come back and we'll We'll fill those up with beautiful little clouds. Show you a very simple way of making some clouds that are, are fun and they're effective and you'll like them. There we go. Maybe a little back in here. Wherever, wherever, we don't care. Something about like that. All right, and now we come to my favorite time of the whole painting already. Let's wash the old brush. <laughs> because if you've painted with me before, you know that may be the highlight of the painting. All right, we just scrub it right against the screen in the bottom of the can with odorless thinner in the can. 
shake off the excess. <laughs> and we just cover everybody in the studio. And with a clean brush, just gonna quickly go across that. Just removing the excess paint. Now then, I'm gonna take a little touch of yellow ochre, a little yellow ochre, and go right into the titanium white. Just load some color in the bristles. Okay, let's go back up here. And today I'm just gonna tap in Happy Little Cloud. Just take the brush and just tap, just tap. Just think about some shapes that you'd like to have in your world and tap them in. No big deal, easy, easy. You can do this, anybody can do this. There we go. In our newsletter, we just featured a lady who was, who was in her 90s and just beginning to paint. Isn't that fantastic? There, there's no age barriers in this. Anybody can do it. All right. We're just tapping in some happy little clouds. That's all. Maybe there's one that lives right about there. Just basically, wherever you think one should live, that's exactly, exactly the right place for it. Okay, and that's all we, that's all we need. Now we're taking, now we're taking clean the old brush again. There, probably just, just want to clean the brush again. I look for excuses. There, shake it off. <laughs> and there we go. Now then, very lightly, very lightly, just graze the canvas, because you can always add more pressure and begin blending this. And automatically, automatically, beautiful little clouds will just appear. And you can pull them, because there's liquid white on the canvas, it's wet. You can pull these clouds around. You can move clouds in your world. That easy. See there? Never knew you had that much power. But on this piece of canvas, you do. When you go home, you may be like me. You have no power at all. <laughs> but here, here you can do anything. Anything. All right. Okay, let's take the knife, take a little Prussian blue, a little Prussian blue, a little lizard and crimson, mix them together. I'll make a lavender color, but I want it to the blue side. When you make lavender out of these two colors, you can have it to the red side or the blue side. Sometimes you need to put a little white paint out there and, and check it out, see if that's what you want or not. That's pretty good. Let's use that. Shoot, I like that. Okay. Cut off our little roll of paint. It lives right out on the edge of the knife. And let's go right up in here. And we have to make some major decisions already. Where in the world do our little mountains live? Where, where do they live? Here they are. There. See? And these are going to be far away. I'm not looking for a lot of detail in these. In fact, I'm looking for almost no detail. Because detail indicates closeness. And I don't want them to look close. I want them to look far away. Maybe something about like that. How's that? And the only thing you're worried about at this point is a nice top edge. You could care less what's happening in here. It makes no difference. In fact, I'm scraping very firmly, trying to get off all the excess paint. There we go. Let me go back to our old two inch brush. And I just want to grab this and just blend it out a little bit. Just a little. There. Just blend it out. Because that's basically all I'm going to do in these little distant mountains. Once again, I don't want it to get ate up with too much detail. I want to keep them very soft, very far away. Just brush strokes, so it will create the illusion of detail, but you've done nothing. Shh, that's our secret. That's our secret. Now then, let's take a little bit. Tiny bit of that white, and it had yellow ochre in it. Well, maybe I'll add just a touch more yellow ochre. So we got white and a little yellow ochre. I want to create mist down here. So I'm just going to take a little of that and rub it. Just rub it. See, just sort of let it play around in there. That old knife will just do wonderful things if you just allow it to. Don't be afraid of it. Don't be afraid of it. See there? Now, you may not see a lot of that yet, but when we're finished, That'll come out to look like a nice, soft, misty area. There. Something like so. See there? And you have to decide how far up your mist lives, and how bright it is, how quiet it is. It's up to you. Up to you. Because in your world, 
You can create any illusion that you want. Any illusion. There. Okay. Now that'll give us a little background mountain. The one that's far away. Not much going on in its world. I'm gonna take some more blue and crimson. I just didn't mix up enough before. Same, same color. Same identical color. There we go. Now, cut off our little roll of paint, just like we had. And let's go back up here. Come right up in here. Let's start right in here. And maybe this comes up. We're gonna have a, a big strong mountain that lives in the foreground. We'll put a little more detail in that rascal because he's closer to us. Unlike the one that lives far away that we don't want detail in. This one we'll have a little more detail in. Maybe like that. Well, that's a nice old mean looking mountain. Shoot, I tell you what, maybe he had a good day. Maybe he got even stronger. It went way up to the top here. Way up to the very top. It's up to you. See, just change your mind if you want to. You can put your mountain anywhere you want, any shape you want. In this technique, we don't do any drawing, any tracing. We just sort of, we learn to create as we paint. That may be the beauty of this. There we go. We learn to create as we, as we paint the scene. Maybe this goes, who knows? Maybe it comes all the way across. If you want it to come all the way across and be some little rolling hills back here, maybe on this end, you can do that. We just take the knife and rub that too. There. Wipe off the excess paint. You can do entire paintings using nothing but the knife and they're gorgeous. Some of the earlier series, we've done one or two paintings using the entire knife. It's a little harder to do in the time frame that we have, but you can do it. You really can do it, and it's gorgeous. I do a lot of them when I'm at home, using nothing but the knife. See, if you want to put another layer, I get carried away doing this. If you want to put another little layer in there, you just put a little more paint on, decide where that next layer lives, and we'll just rub it a little bit too. Like that. I've had people tell me over and over again, I bet your house is full of paintings. You know, it's funny, most artists, I think, are, are like me. They, they sort of pick their own paintings apart. <laughs> Every time I walk by it, I, I see something that in my mind, I think I could have done better, or it's, it's not exactly what I wanted. So in my own home, I really, I hang other people's paintings. I have paintings that people have sent me. I have paintings that, that some of our instructors have done. I even have a couple of paintings my son Steve done, which are very, very special to me. There. And I have, I have a lot of paintings by very close friends and associates. Annette Kowalski, my partner, she does the most gorgeous flowers you've ever seen. I have some of her paintings hanging around. In fact, Annette's doing her first book on flowers now, which will be out soon. I think you'll really enjoy that because she can paint some flowers. Whew. I'm gonna get her on the show here one day and get her to show you what she can do. Cause I'm not much of a flower painter, but she paints them well enough for both of us. There, I'm just taking off some of this excess paint. I want this to remain very dark though. And we can take a big brush and wipe it. That too will remove paint. I'm gonna put some highlights in there. So the more of this paint that you can remove, the easier it is to make the next layer stick, but yet I don't want to lose this dark value. It's important to me. It's very important. Okay, let's mix this up a little highlight color. And for that, let's use some dark sienna. Oh, we'll put some bright red in there. Some bright red. Let's put a little, a little white. Shoot, maybe even a little crimson here and there. I want some yellow ochre. Well, we got a mess going there, don't we? You just sort of piddle around until you find a color that you like, and I like that. So we cut off our little roll of paint, and we go back up here, and now we just begin picking out little things that, that will make our mountain look special. And today I'm just gonna sort of touch it and sort of just rub the knife on there a little bit. Just rub it out. Normally I would pull it down, but today I'm just gonna sort of rub the knife on there, 
just to create all kinds of little things. There we go. Something like so. Add a little white to some of it so it'll be a little bit brighter. And then you can take and pick out the areas that you think would, that light would strike as it zings across there and has a good time. There. I don't want, to, don't want this to get too bright though. Don't want it to get too bright. Okay, now, in fact, I'm gonna sorta of fuzz the edges right out. There. All right. Okay. Just something about like that. There. Okay, it comes all the way down. I don't know where it goes yet. We'll make that decision pretty soon. But right now, we don't really much care. We don't really much care. Okay, mix up a little more color about to run out. And maybe out in here. There it comes. Just let that flow right down the side there. And we'll just let it sort of just sort of disappear off into the to never never land. Right there. Hold it right there. Take some of that dark color that we had, and I want to retain this nice dark edge. Maybe it comes over and down and just disappears back here. But that dark edge is our separator. It's our good friend. Don't lose it. Don't lose it. See there? That's what separates. Pushes it back. Pushes him back. And you can put a little highlight or two here and there, wherever you think they should live. Deserts are fantastic places. There's a lot of, a lot of fantastic wildlife in there. For example, there's a lot of cougars and big cats. And recently, I had an opportunity to spend a little time with a big old kitty cat that I think is just absolutely gorgeous. This kitty belongs to Carmen Shaw, and the cat was given to her, or she actually found it. I'll tell you that story in a minute. And all of Carmen's friends have named this this beautiful cat, Carmen, after her. Now this was a kitty that somebody had purchased as a pet. And the little kitty turned into a great big cougar, grew up, and they decided they didn't want it anymore. So they put it in a little, little kennel cage and they took it out and they left it in the woods to die. And when Carmen got this thing, it was just about dead. She worked with it for a long time, and she saved it. And this is one of the most beautiful animals God's ever created. Isn't he gorgeous? I can't imagine anybody hurting something like it. But I'm sort of strange. I like all these critters anyway. All right. But I love that big old kitty. I'm going to take a little sap green, a little yellow, maybe put a little yellow ochre and a little brown there, dull it down some. Ooh, I like that. Maybe in our world here, I'm going to just start laying a little color in. We do this, we'll just do a little of this with a knife. You could put it in with a brush or a knife. I want to just put the indication that there's some, some little things happening back here at the base of this mountain. We don't know exactly what they are. Some little green things that are growing right back in here. Don't want them too bright though, don't want them to be distracting. Just some little things. There. Just have to wipe the knife off every once in a while. But all I'm doing is just rubbing the knife, just rubbing it. You see there? I say you could take the one inch or two inch brush and you could lay these in much faster. But I like this effect. It's very soft, very misty. You just sort of don't, you don't know where edges start and stop here that way. It's just very pretty. Very pretty, but we all have individual tastes, so you do it however makes you happy. A little of that mountain color right here, we'll just blend that down in here too. What the heck? Shoot, here and there we might even hit a little of that lavender that we used in the base of the mountain. Just to sort of, so all the tones come together. It's your world, so you decide. You gotta make big decisions. That's a responsibility that comes with painting. There. Or speaking of big cats, yesterday I had the opportunity to go to one of the most fantastic zoos I've ever seen. And 
It's right outside of Muncie here who we filmed the show, and it's, it's called Mizu. And Mi stands for Max and Eileen, the people who started it. And they have a lot of very exotic animals, beautiful animals. But what makes this zoo so special, I think, is the fact that they, they devote their whole life to sharing this, this fantastic zoo with other people, especially handicapped children, the elderly, people who are very sick, and it's all free to them. Every bit of it's free. These two fantastic people have literally spent everything they have to create this zoo, and they give it away. And that's what makes it so special. You can find a zoo anywhere in the country, but you can't find people like this. And you know what makes it more special than, more special than anything else? Max has a terminal illness, and this is how he has chose to spend the rest of his life, is helping other people through his animals. That's what makes it so special. So if you ever, if you ever around the Muncie or Indianapolis area, stop by and say hello, tell them I sent you. There. Okay, maybe in our world, let me clean off my knife. Tell you what, let's do. Let's take the old filbert brush, what the heck. I'll go into a little bit of the Van Dyke Brown, a little Van Dyke Brown, pick up a little black, and put in there with it. Shoot dark sand too, we don't care, whatever you get. And maybe back here, maybe back here, maybe there's some old cactus. If we're gonna do a desert scene, we need to have an old cactus. There he is. So filbert brush, and it makes the right shape pretty easy. Maybe he's got another arm right there. Two or three of them right close together. There's one. How many cactus you have in your painting? That's up to you. Let's give that one a little arm, Choop, like that. Another one right there, That's, that'll give us a few. You can just take this old filbert, push upward, look, make the indication of some little bushes that live far back there. See there, just push them in, just push them in. Just sort of like you're putting foam on an on a ocean, if you painted oceans with me. I just take that same brush, go into a little of the yellows, Indian yellow, cad yellow, yellow ochre, a little bit of, a little bit of blue with it, that'll make a gorgeous green or a little sap green. And then let's just put a few little highlights here and there. Just a few. Want them to stay sort of muted though. I don't want them real bright. There. Isn't that neat? These are far away, so we're not seeing a lot of detail now. Just enough to make them stand out. Leave some of them totally dark. Don't, don't, don't cover them all up with highlights. Sometimes it gets feeling good and you, you don't know when to stop. I have that trouble all the time. So, there. Tell you what, we got a little lavender left right here. Let's just put some little doers like this back here with a knife. Some little rock formations maybe that are far back in the whatever. Just sort of, you expect this if you're painting little pictures from Arizona, New Mexico, and all those gorgeous areas. There, something about like so, that's good enough. We'll take some of that nice, this was the color I used to highlight the mountains. And maybe right under here, right under here, we can begin applying just a little bit of sand color. Something like that. There we go. See there? I'm gonna take a little white. It's got a little yellow ochre in it, not much, just a little, mostly white. And just begin putting in some highlights right on that. Barely cra grazing it. Barely, barely grazing it. See there? Just to make it look like, oh, sand and rocks and all those things that are out there. Shoot, we don't know where it goes. Don't know that we care wherever it wants to go. It's just right. Just right. Shoot, I like making them cactus. <laughs> Let's make another one. Black, browns, both browns and blacks is all I used in here. And maybe we have a big old cactus in our world. Yep, we do now. And he lives right there. Just using the old filbert. The old filbert brush. Give him an arm. Doop. Maybe he's got a friend. Lives right there with him. Who knows? 
Maybe he's got two friends. He's a popular little cactus. Shoot, maybe he's got a party going on here. Who knows? As I say, make up little stories when you paint. Shoot, that's what makes it fun. I'm gonna take a little of that green color and just come down here and just go right over it. So it has a little green flavor to it. You can just make a little cat yellow, a little, little sap green. There we go. Do something like so. Now then, we'll take, we'll take, we'll take some more of that. This is that basically that lavender color I was using. And maybe there's some little bushes and stuff that live right along in here. Maybe there's a big bush lives right there by the cactus. That'd be a good place to live. Under this old cactus, there'd be a multitude of wildlife that lives in it. So that'd be a good place to see some beautiful scenes right there. Right there. Now then, take a little bit of our yellow ochre, cad yellow, little sap green, and let's come back in here and, and just pop in a few little highlights. I'm still using a little filbert. Today I'm just using a little filbert, but you use whatever brush works well for you. I'm liking it today. I'm gonna get a little bit bright red in there too. Heck, I'm, I gotta have a little sparkler here and there. Deserts have some gorgeous color in them sometimes. It's like, it's like God had his paintbrush out and he just went crazy with color. You ever seen the desert after it comes a rain and, and everything lights up, it just lights up. That's got to be the most gorgeous, gorgeous thing. There, let's take a little of that blue and white, put in here. There, maybe there's a little, little bush, it's about that color in there. Mm, I like that, I like that one. I like that one. Let's take a little bit of our soil colors, dirt color, whatever you want to call it. Put it right under here. Something like it. Just need this dark so our light will show up on top of it. Look at there. Now then, let's take a little, oh, we'll use more yellow ochre and white. I like that one. Put a little of that in there. This painting has a lot of color in it. I didn't know it was going to have that much color when I started it, but now I like it. I like that. All right. Okay, let's go back into, we had some nice lavender color we was using here. Pop in another little bush. Maybe it lives right there. Let's put one on the other side too. Maybe there's one right in there. I don't know. Do you think there should be one there? Then there should be. We we'll go back to our greens, little sap green, yellow, yellow ochre. Put a little of that here and there, like so. Clean off the old brush. I don't want to go back to that blue and white. I like that blue and white. It's a cool color amongst all these warm colors, so it sort of stands out. There, a little bit more of that. There, see it? Just a, it's just a nice, refreshing, cool little area in your painting. Now we'll just take the old knife and clean it off. It's dirty. And just blend these areas together here where they come together, something like so. There. Shoot, I think we're ready to take the contact paper off and see what we got. It looks pretty cute. So let's grab a hold of it, give it a little pull. And look at that. Isn't that a fantastic little scene? And it's very simple to do. You can do it. Take a little bright red, a little paint thinner, right on the liner brush, and I think we'll sign this little painting. We'll sign it right here, because we can sign it anywhere we want. There we go. Since I have a very short name, it's no problem just to stick it right in there. And with that, I think we have a finished painting. I really hope you've enjoyed this one. Give it a try. I'd love to hear from you and know how you do with it. From all of us here, happy painting and God bless my friend. Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join us today because here we are, the last show of the 25th series. So I thought today we'd just do a little painting. It's a lot of fun and I think you'll enjoy it. So let's start out and have run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us. While they're doing that, let me show you what I got done up here. I have my regular old 18 by 24 inch pre-stretched double prime canvas, or you bet you use any size that's convenient for you. 
and I've covered the entire canvas today with just a very thin, even coat of the liquid clear. So it's all wet and slick and it's ready to go. So let's just do a fun little painting today. I thought maybe I'd do one today just, just using the old two inch brush basically and a few nice colors and, and just, just sort of let it happen. Just sort of let it happen. We'll take a little bit of the Prussian blue, very little. When you're using this liquid clear, you use very little paint normally, very little. Okay, let's go up in here. Now maybe we'll just take that blue and we'll just dance in a, just a happy little sky. It takes very little color though, very little color. It'll almost look like a wash when it's done. There, maybe I'll add a little black to my brush and blue, a little blue and black and yeah, just change the flavor a little bit here and there. There, maybe we'll do a little winter scene today and, and for that I'll make it, make it just a little grayer. But on the other hand, let's add a little crimson and, and make it sparkle a little bit. This piece of canvas truly is your world and in your world, you paint anything you want. You use any colors that you want. Just whatever makes you happy. There, just something like that. Now this is a very, very transparent color on top of the clear. But if you wanted to make the indication of maybe a happy little cloud up there, you could just take the corner of the brush, a very small amount of titanium white, for example, and just spin in using top corner, just spinning, round and round and round, just like so, and create the illusion of just maybe a happy little cloud shape that's far, far away, just barely can see it. And it just sort of floats around there and has a good time. Something about like it. All right, and maybe, okay, tell you what, let's make us a nice brown color. We'll use some alizarin crimson and sap green in about equal proportions. I think this is one of the nicest browns made. I like making brown out of these two colors. There we go, because you can sort of take it to the reddish side or the green side, depending on the mood or, or what you're trying to achieve in your painting. Okay, let me wipe the old knife off there. We just wipe the knife on a paper towel. That brush seems to be doing okay. We'll just keep using it. Tap just a very small amount of it. Very, very small amount into the bristles like so. I'm just tapping in the top corner, okay? Now maybe I might even wipe off any excess. I want very little color, that's good. Maybe wipe it a little more. I want very, very little color in here. I want to just make an indication of just a happy little tree that lives far, far back here in the distance, far away. There. Don't want a lot of detail, too far away. We're just going to put some very gentle little shapes. Just barely, barely can make out what they are. They're too far away. There we go. Something like so. Now sometimes it's nice when you're using this clear to give the indication of light coming through. So for that, I'm going to take a little Indian yellow, a little yellow ochre. Once again, very, very small amount of paint. And down in here, I'm just going to tap some of this. So I'm going to have some trees in here. And this hopefully will come out looking like this. Maybe there's some backlight coming through there. You could also do this using a white gesso with a little bit of yellow acrylic in it and put it on before you start the painting. Today I thought we'd just do it this way. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Maybe we'll put a little sky up in here too. What the heck? Well, I got that old brush. Maybe some of that'll show through. I'm not sure exactly where we're going to have trees and where we're not. So we'll just put a little color on the canvas in case. Now then, I'm going to use all kinds of alizarin crimson, a little touch of black, but. Once again, I can't say it enough. I'm using such a small amount of paint. It's almost not worth talking about. It's so small. There we go and change the flavor a little bit so it stands out there. Very, very small amount of paint. There. I want this to be very soft, almost like a watercolor. Sometimes I like to do oil paintings that have a watercolor look to them. And this is one of the ways that we do them. All kinds of things. Maybe over in here, a little more of that brown that we made. And we just tap in, just tap in indication of a little bush. And we just let them fade right on down to nothing. Right 
tie it on down to nothing. And when you do your painting, you may want it to be a little brighter, a little stronger. It's up to you. I'll show you a little trick here. This is fun. Take a liner brush, shake off all the excess paint. You might even wipe it on a paper towel. And then very lightly, just touch the canvas and we'll make the indication of all kinds of little sticks and twigs, just with a clean brush. And you just, that paint thinner on there reacts it reacts with a liquid clear, and you can make all these things using nothing. It's just removing paint. Sometimes we apply paint, sometimes we remove it, depending on what we want to accomplish. Takes a minute for it to come up, but look at there. See? Wherever you think there should be one, that's the right place. And if you want to make it look like a watercolor painting, sometimes you can also take a fan brush, put some paint thinner on it, shake off all the excess thinner. Just really shake it off. Mm. Then go up here and flick it. Just flick a little paint thinner right on to that color. And once again, the paint thinner and the liquid clear will have a violent reaction and you'll get all these gorgeous little things right in there. Maybe we'll flick even a little up here. You decide where you want it. Something like so. I like to put it right down at the base of all these trees and bushes and stuff. And I sort of like that effect. And you can work in layers when you're doing that. You can put, put some in and put a layer underneath it and just keep working layer after layer. It helps create that illusion of depth and distance in your painting. And to me, that's what makes your painting special. Maybe there's another little tree that lives right here, wherever. There we go. This is a nice way of making the indication of little trees and bushes if you've had problems making them any other way. Because here, all you do is add a little color to the tip top of your brush and just tap. And they almost happen automatically. There we go. Maybe this is a winter scene. We don't have, let's have some nice oh, snow in here. I like to do winter scenes sometimes that have a lot of warm colors in them. Winter scenes can get so cold, whew, you almost have to wear a coat to work on them. So let's take an old fan brush, a little bit of the titanium white. Maybe I'll put a little touch of the, little touch of the Prussian blue in there just to blue it down. See there? But just a little. I want it to look like maybe as a little tiny bit of shadow. That's enough. Let's go up in here. And then we can take an old brush and go back in here and begin picking out areas that we're looking for. That easy gonna lift up so it just disappears back here. See there? Just worked right around that bush. <laughs> you can just put things wherever you want them. Just lift it up, lift up. That easy. There. Ooh, that looks sort of cold already. Sort of cold already. There we go. Wherever you think these things should be. Let's take a little blue, a little black, put some white in it. Don't want it too strong. Blue and black. And maybe, maybe right in here, I'll do something about like that. But notice we're curving these strokes, I'm curving them. It'll go right on off like that. And what I'm doing, I want to make maybe the indication of a little bank here. Like maybe there's a little stream that lives right in here. Maybe it's all frozen. And all we can see is this little little area right here. There, see, something like so. Now we can go back to our white. Put in all kinds of little things. And you could do this with a you could do this with a two-inch brush if you wanted to. I'm just using a little fan brush because it happens to be available. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. There we go. Put a little more titanium white on the brush. We can come right up to the edge here. Maybe occasionally it slides over. See there? Just like so. And down in here we need a little bit of the white color. Something like that. But that'll help create that illusion that maybe there's a little frozen bank right there. Something like that. These little paintings are a lot of fun. They're good paintings to just sit down and, and experiment with. You know, we did one painting in this series. It sort of turned out to have an oriental look to it, where we just sat down and we started playing. 
and just working with color. These little paintings here you can do the same way. Don't be afraid to experiment. That's really where the fun of painting comes in, the joy of painting. It's in learning new things and experimenting, doing things that, that you've never done before. That's what's fun. Maybe there's some little areas right in here somewhere. I don't know. Just put a little blue on there and bring the white right up to it like that. And it'll look like a little, like there's a little indentation there. That easy. <laughs> That's sort of sneaky, but it works very well. Works very well. All right. Let's go back and play with some more trees. They're a lot of fun. I'm going to go back into that nice brown that I made from the sap green and the lizard crimson. Just tap a little color right onto the brush. There you can see it. Very little color. Very little. No, you get tired of hearing that. But if I don't say it too much, I'm afraid, afraid you're going to sock a big bunch of dark color up here and be very unhappy with me because it takes such a small amount of color to create this particular illusion. Sometimes you want to create other illusions and you do use more color. But today, just trying to, I'm trying to create softness. Take a little blue and a little crimson, mix it together. We'll make a little, little lavendery color. Let me wipe off all that excess again. I don't want much color. Maybe we have the indication right here. Oh, another little tree. Another little tree lives right there. I like doing all these little trees and bushes. That really is some of the most fantastic things because I know there's all kind of little creatures. That they've got. I gotta show you one more little feller. Shoot, we've showed you several animals in this series. I wanna show you one more, one more little fella that I think you'll just love. This is a little baby raccoon, just a tiny little thing. But I think he's one of the neatest little characters. I'm just painting his tree while we're watching it. I think he's just absolutely darling. By the time you see this, though, he'll probably be, oh, he's probably going to be grown and long gone because it doesn't take too long for these little devils to grow up. They grow up quite rapidly. And then we turn them loose because God intended for them to be free, and I believe that's where they should be. All right. Now then, let's take an old fan brush with just a little paint thinner on it. I want to flick it again like that. Just right down here at the base of that. Let all those little things just happen. Watch them. That's exciting when that happens. It just turns me on to watch all that. I like that. See? And as you let the camera stay there just a second and watch what happens. See them? They just keep coming and coming. And you can do this and make great big ones or little ones. You can make them even run sometimes. And that's very pretty. That's good. Thank you. There. Now then. Let's go. I'll take a little bright red and put it into my, into my titanium white just to give it a little pinky flavor, but I don't want to set it on fire. Don't want to set it on fire. And we'll put a little touch of snow that lives right in here. There. Just lift it upward. Something about like that. There we go. I just, I just take and lift it up because it just blends it together. And you can't tell where one stops and the next one starts. But very, very soft. This is a very gentle painting. Very soft. Okay, let me grab the old brush. Let's make another little layer. I'm having fun making all these. But notice that we complete one layer in this painting at a time and then come forward. Do one layer at a time, work forward. Always working forward. Maybe right in here. Yep. Yep, you're right. There's another happy little tree. Just a little bushy devil. There he is. Wasn't that little raccoon cute? I work with a lot of the rehab people all over the country. And these little creatures are so important. I just think you're, I think you're so much fun to work with and to enjoy. And maybe the greatest pleasure of all is after you've raised one up and he's doing well. If he was orphaned, he's, he's grown. If he was hurt, he's repaired. And the greatest pleasure is when you turn him loose and you see him go. Sometimes I'm a big old softy, so sometimes that's a little hard for me to do because I, I sort of get attached to these rascals. But you have to remember, I'm going to take a little cad yellow. Oh, that's bright. That's nice. 
you have to remember that's once again that's where God meant for them to be out there playing in the bushes and the trees and all that they don't do well if you make pets out of them because they don't make very good pets even raccoons as cute as they are when they're little usually when they grow up they get a little mean so we let them go before they get that mean because when they get mean then they're ready to take care of themselves they don't need our help anymore there okay but look at all the different layers of planes if you want to call them such in this painting that's what creates that illusion of depth and distance in it I'm gonna take a little phthalo blue I keep saying phthalo blue I meant Prussian blue. I don't have any thalo blue in this painting. Prussian blue. You could use thalo blue if you wanted. A little bit on brush. Let's go up here. I just wanted in this particular painting a little colder blue. I'll put a little blue right in here just to make some shadows with and then we'll come back with just white and go right back over it and then those shadows then will be underneath. Isn't that neat? But work back and forth between blues and some of your little pinks and whatever. You can just do all kinds of wonderful things. Painting is so much fun. It really is one of those things that it's a lot of fun. There. And I think only nice people paint. Annette and I have traveled for many years, and that's my partner. She travels with me all over the country, and we, we do a lot of shows for PBS stations around the country, and in, even in some foreign countries. And I have never met a person who paints that's not a very nice person. So I think it goes with, with what you're doing. And maybe I'm just very prejudiced. I don't know. I just, I just think nice people paint. I'm going to put an indication here and there of a little stick and a twig using just a clean brush with paint thinner on it. Don't want these to stand out too much, just here and there. And they'll continue to work for a little while after you go away. See, that one is getting bigger and bigger as you sit there and watch it. All you're doing is removing paint. It's just, you're removing paint. And we can take a little paint and then there with a little brown on it. And here and there we can bounce in some that are a little darker. I don't want them too dark. No, I want them too dark. Keep them light. There. And take a little of that brown we made, put a little paint thinner with it. And maybe back here, there's an old tree. What's left of an old tree? <laughs> Got to make those little noises to get the crooks and the hurts and the pain that's in this old tree. Because he's had a hard life. He's had a hard one. Times were tough when he was just a little guy. There. Poor thing. But he's okay now. There. Little old squirrel lives up here in his limbs. And they get along fine. There. See, got a little tree in there now. Get a little more white on the brush. Reach right up here and grab a little of that. Pull it out. So there's some snow right around his foots. Right around his foots. Maybe back in here, just here and there, you can make out a few more little things. I don't want these to be too dark. I want them to be just almost hidden back here. But they're there. They're there. All right, you know me. <laughs> it's time. If you painted with me very long, you know I like big trees. And this being the last show of this series, we should not end without having at least one big tree. Let's take some Van Dyke Brown, put on your bravery suit, and let's see where you're at today. Because we're going to put us a big tree right here. Using Van Dyke Brown, a little dark sand. I'm just sort of mixing them together. Using the old filbert brush today. I think we'll do really a rough tree. This one, this one has really had a tough life. When he was little, maybe, maybe a big deer came through here, big, big buck, and stepped right on him, hurt him, uh, really put some crooks in his back, whatever. There we go. Give him some big foot. He need a big old foot to stand out here. Take all this abuse he's getting. There we go. See? I had a letter from a psychiatrist one time, and he said I had really lost it. I had even given the trees arms and foots. And I wrote him back and told him, yeah, I had. I, but it was my world. 
and everything in my world was happy, and if I wanted my trees to have arms and foots, that was okay. There. But I got several letters from him, very nice gentleman. And he finally agreed with me. If I wanted arms and foots on my trees, he said, I guess that's okay. But in his world, he had a little more sanity than I did. He, he didn't have arms and foots on his. There we go. I'm just putting on some low, old limbs that live out here. Boy, these are tough looking old rascals. But I like a tree with character. I get tired of just trees that are straight and standing tall and telephone companies out looking for them. I like trees that really look like they've had some, some interesting things happen in their life. There. And animals all like these kind of trees because they have good places to hide. All right. We'll just take a little snow and bring it right down from the foot here. Maybe we'll take it right up like that. Something like so. Okay, a little bit of blue, just to make a little shadow. Goes right into there, like that. Let's take a knife, mix up a little brown. That's a little dark sienna, a little Van Dyke, a little white. Mix them together, doesn't matter. I'm gonna wipe off this brush. We'll just keep using that filbert for the time being. I'm just gonna let it barely touch and graze, and put the indication here and there of all kinds of things. Now when this dries, this paint is very thick, you can actually feel this bark on here. See it? There. So you just let the brush bounce and play, barely touch. Some of these limbs it will come right on out, some it won't. Depends on which side of the tree you put them on. It's up to you. You can put them anywhere, any way that you want them. Boy, that's a ragged looking old tree, isn't it? That's a rough, I don't even know if my squirrel could climb it. Yeah, he could. I still have squirrely girly brown. Squirrely girl, who's lived with me for several years, I'm gonna make a little fence, I think. All right, come right here. There's a little post. Squirrely girl, the veterinarians have told me, has epilepsy and can never be, never be released. They told me about two years ago that she would only live for six more months. And you know what? Squirrely didn't know that. She's still hanging in there, and she's doing fine. I'm gonna make this fence. There. Comes right around like that, and maybe be on that side, and maybe over here. Maybe this one comes right on off. This is one of them that goes around. Whoops, we didn't make that one go all the way through. It'd fall off. We can take a little white. I'm gonna put a little liquid white with it just to make it a little thinner. We can come along in here, put the indication of some nice snow things that are hanging around up in here. There. You could do this with a liner brush if you have trouble controlling a brush this big. It is a little easier. But I got using this today, so it, whatever, doesn't much matter. Boy, that's a rough looking old fence too. I like I like paintings though that have character style to them like this. A little bit of that blue and white. Put some snow under this old tree's foot. There. If you pick up a little of that color, that's just wonderful because you, it will create the illusion of shadows in there, and that's what we're looking for. We're looking for some shadows in our world. Take our little script liner brush, a little bit of that brown color, and maybe there's some weeds and grassy little things that grow all out in here. Because if this guy, he probably took care of his fence about like I do mine. He let the weeds just about eat it up. You can take a little fan brush. We'll use number three. It doesn't matter though. Pop in a few little bigger weeds wherever you think they should be. You can put all kinds of little details in here. It's up to you. You have to make these big decisions. 
You have to decide where all these little things live. There's more. See there? And you just drop them in. A few more little twigs and sticks. Big old bush lives right there. Shoot, I think we're not down to where we, we have a painting we can sign. We'll take a little red. We'll sign this one right down here. And with that, I'd like to bring this series to a close. And I'd like to thank you very, very much for being with us during this entire series. And I hope to see you again very soon. We've already started the next series, and I look forward to painting with you in the future. And from all of us here, I'd like to wish you happy painting, and God bless, my friend. <laughs>